Hey, mateys. My my thing looped around, but oh well. Uh, welcome aboard, everyone. This is the Dark Caribbean stream. We be drawing NPCs. I'm going to welcome my co-host here, my quartermaster, Tyler. Yar, you mateys. It's good to see you. Good to be I forgot, aboard. I, I forgot to turn off looping on my video. <laughs> well, hey, uh, welcome to the Dark Caribbean stream. I'm going to draw some monsters. Yeah, well, actually, an NPC. Do you, Tyler, do you have a guess who it is? You know, who's missing? Somebody epic. I don't it's know. Definitely epic. I I intentionally yeah. put this one last. Nice. I'm gonna say, I don't know if you've have you done like the the Henry Morgan equivalent. I have. I have yeah. done Henry Morgan. We're gonna. I'll yeah. show. I'm gonna show them all off on this stream because I've nice. done. Okay, so for those who don't know, um, the Dark Caribbean, my setting book, upcoming setting book for Pirate Borg in 5th edition, has 54 NPCs, uh, all of which are going to be printed onto playing cards. So to draw them, I took a deck of playing cards, and I wrote all the NPC names uh, on on the cards. And every morning, this every business day morning this year, I have uh, drawn a different card and drawn it. Drawn it and drawn it. Double, double, uh, double drawn. It was really confusing. It was like, I drew a blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, cool. What's it look like? He's like, I haven't done it yet. I just drew it. The yeah. And some of them are like, you know, like this one, just this one, King of Spades, of course, Blackbeard. Yes. Um, Classic. Which, but there are others that were just like, uh, and they still aren't named. Like this is Merfolk Ruler, uh, who I have drawn. Um, we'll get to him in a minute. Yeah. Uh, here, like here's Anne Bonnie. And I moved some of them around. Okay, but today, yeah, for number 54, 
here's the card. The Ace of Hearts. It is none other than Ponce de Leon. Ponce de Leon. Oh, yes. A personal okay, so, favorite of yours. So cool thing about Ponce de Leon. Obviously, in our timeline, he was long dead by 1715, which is when Dark Caribbean takes place. Uh, but in the Dark Caribbean, he discovered the Fountain of Youth, and it turned him into a horrible lich-like tree. Uh, and he is now forever growing in his mansion in San Juan uh, with just like, I, I think of him as like tree beard meets Nagash from, from Warhammer fans. Yes. Nagash. Yeah. yeah. Or, or what, you know, he's, it's like tree beard here. Let's, let's put these, we'll write these down and keep this in mind here. Um, here, I'm going to switch to my, my, my shared view here. Okay. So we got, Let's see here. <clears throat> okay, influences uh tree beard. Uh Nagash. Basically anybody, any lich kind of vibe, right? Yeah. Do, do we you want some music going? Let's get some music going here. Sure, yeah. Tell me tell me if it's too loud in the chat. We'll do. Slash um, chat will go on. Also, Tyler, you're moderator. Let me know if there's any any IR, interesting IR. questions. Right away, uh, Orange App says, "Do you draw with digital tools or pen and paper?" Oh yeah, no, I'm draw. I'm drawing. I always draw in Photoshop, and I have a Wacom stylus and uh, tablet, which looks like this. Sometimes you draw in a handy journal, though, and then. Oh, I, I mean, I can yeah. draw. I just like I have my um, my confidence as an artist is pretty low and you're going to see i do a lot of uh stretching and molding with photoshop to like oh i drew that arm too too small or too big yeah and i just don't have the i think it's mostly experience now that i've been doing it for a couple of years i just don't have the experience to get it right on paper <laughs> yeah. but then again that's why you sketch with pencil right yeah um you okay. can turn the music down just a tad bit more more okay. good okay Nagash Lich. Also, what's the uh, what's the tree old man tree dude in Game of Thrones? You know, or when oh. Bra when Bran goes up north, yeah. I'm gonna just say G O T tree dude. The three eyed raven. Oh yeah, but yeah, uh, three eyed raven. But the actual one, right? So, but here's the other thing. I've drawn all of these for playing card size, but my goal with this one is I think I want him to take up a full page, right? I just have Blackbeard on here for, for line art reference. So this is my little border. So what I think I want to do is I want to like, I want to draw a focus area that is exciting inside of the uh, square that will go on the playing cards. But then I want the rest of the the page to be filled up with like his limbs and stuff. Does that make sense? Oh yeah. So that's why I ha that's why I still have this here. But like, let's forget about it for now, or let's make it really dim, right? So it'll have a playing card size to it, but on the page in which you see it, it really ex is expanded out. Yeah, yeah. Like yeah. it'll be the whole it'll be this whole area, you know. So let's turn this off. Okay, yeah. So, I mean, I usually I do these by myself for for half of the day every day. So, this is going to be a very different process for me to like uh know everyone is watching all my stupid mistakes and also get feedback because that might actually make it more cool. And I I yeah. I, I know you've got a busy day, Tyler, but like I'm going to just do this all day. Um and then I'm going to take a break in about an hour to go watch part of the eclipse. We'll probably yeah. lose a bunch of you for that, but maybe we'll get a whole nother group of people. Um, yeah. Okay. So here's the question. The first question is how human-like do we think this thing is? That's number one. Mm. And number mm. two, what kind of tree do you think he's turned into? Is it related to the fountain of the youth, fountain of youth location in the uh, Florida, like a Bayan tree or a mangrove or an yeah. Oak? Yeah. Or is it just like he's just tree-ish? It's tree-ish. I, I, right away, the imagery I see is those 
they're not mango trees, but they're the, they're like mango trees, but they're huge. They're really, really big ones that have like thick roots. Um, that's really what comes to mind. Yeah, I think I think the Bayan. Let's see here. That's what I used in the in the pirate borg, the tree that the Bayan tree. name of the cur uh, nameless temple. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The Bayan tree. Yeah, yeah. I mean, these like here. So we'll we'll just pull some ref. Oh, look, this is great reference. Copy image. We'll just put this in for some reference. I think. Yeah, this kind of thing, right? Yes, mm -hmm. yeah, that's the same picture I'm looking at. I, I looked up the three-eyed raven, but I thought he kind of just—it's just like an actor in the tree. In the tree, yeah, it's that's not, not quite it, right. I mean, we'll put it in here just for people watching who can, can kind of get the idea. Uh, but like, that's not—that's not what I'm going for. No, you know. Yeah. Another one I was thinking of is what's the guy? What's the actor that plays? Um, the the sparrow who's also the governor in pirates of the caribbean you know who i'm talking about he just i think he just passed away not too long ago the sparrow but he plays but, the but, governor but, right he's the older guy he's, yeah what's but his name's the dad sparrow sparrow i have that no guy, idea what you're talking about you know, in Game of Thrones, the the great what's this guy? Come on, stream. What's this guy's name? The Great Sparrow, dude. He's like the head of the church in Game of Thrones. Everybody, he's you. You love to hate him. He's oh, not him. in Pirates of the Caribbean. Oh, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, I know who you're talking about now. Um, it oh, that is the same actor between the yeah yeah. Uh, yeah what's his, what's his, what's the guy's name? Uh, Jonathan Jonathan Price. Thank Price. You. Yeah. Yes. Jonathan Price, and I think he played Don Quixote in, man, I can't spell. He, I think he played Don Quixote in that, um, how do you spell Don Quixote, Tyler? Dude, even though it's my favorite character, I can't do it. Another influence, Quixote. though, you're missing is uh, is the Conquistadors in Jungle no, no. Cruise. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. But like, also, look at this guy. This is the dude. Copy image. Look at this guy. Come on. Oh, you know what we should do for the stream is I should put. I mean, like, come on. Pretty kind oh, yeah. Okay. And you, you know what we should do here? Let's make a new. A new layer. And we're going to say. Uh, yeah. The, the man who killed Don Quixote. That's right. I actually haven't seen that, surprisingly. I started watching it and then stopped so I could watch it with B because nice. she loves Adam Driver. B is Luke's spouse, everyone. A Leon. Here we go. Does this help help everybody watching know what's going on? What's up, Scott? Welcome. What's up, guys? All right. Anybody? We got any questions? We got a yes. lot of announcements. I don't really know when to do the announcements. I don't we know should, if, like... We do should do them in, like, five or ten minutes. Yeah, do you think we're going to get more people later? We, we'll, do another, we'll do another round of announcements at the end. Yeah, okay. Well, I mean, a lot of them are like, I could stop and talk for a while. Um Question from Treb is, uh, love the artwork. Any chance Francis, I cannot say this name, Lolonius Lul will be a pirate? Uh, in Olonis, yes. He's yeah. actually already, I've already, uh, I haven't released his NPC, but I have his art done, obviously. And he is called the Flail in the Dark Caribbean. And he is part of yeah. the Scourge. He is, here, I'll show you. We'll just skip ahead to some spoilers. Here he is, the Flail. He is the ghoul lord of Tortuga. And he haunts this fort. Uh, he's a, so he's actually died prior to this period and he has come back uh, and haunts um, well, I'll show you this this fort here locations Tortuga and here you go here, he haunts this this uh, abandoned fort so yeah the flail 100% in I've actually play tested him already it was really fun he uh Lolonese actually ate hearts in real life so in the dark caribbean he um 
he kind of has like a soul siphon ability where if he eats a heart, he regains hit points. So in my game, he definitely like killed one of the other, you know, and NPCs and ate his heart in front of the players and they freaked out and ran away. <laughs> this whole, the page that you're looking at right now too is available on the Patreon right now as a oh yeah yes that's preview. Yes. Okay, so I don't want this here. I'm going to put this over here. Ponce de Leon. Who else? Oh, you said the conquistadors from conquistadores from um, Jungle Cruise. Yeah, they look. Yeah, good. you know, I don't think that Ponce de Leon was actually conquistador. Actually, he was close to that era. I wouldn't be surprised if he had that armor. Ponce de Leon, a conquistador. First question. It's like it's like kind of the right era, right? Well, the first answer is in Spanish. That sounds about right. <laughs> See if we can get some. Ooh, yeah. Oh, I didn't even think about some of these guys with their. Yeah, dude, they're. Yeah. I forgot how much. Uh, I forgot that they had a pretty big. Um, like tree element to them. Yeah, they're like rotting and they're stuck in the tree. Yeah, like I don't want to just rip off uh, Jungle Cruise. Yeah. Uh, but that's definitely the kind of vibe we're going for. Uh, like here's like a 3D render. I mean, I'm, I'm sorry, I don't have this. Page. Juan Ponce de Leon was the first Spanish explorer to arrive in Florida. Early Spanish explorers were known as conquistadors. Okay, yeah. So he. Okay, so we're gonna put him in his plate, right? So here's the question. Let's think about. I haven't deep dive on him. I know that this is a thing, but what's it? What happens to him? Is he like he drinks the fountain and he's like immediately tree-ish? Or is there like, uh, you know, it over time? Does he bring some of it back? I think. Like, I mean, I don't. Maybe I'm probably saying all this from Jungle Cruise or something else. But I love the idea that it like, oh, your life is prolonged forever the same way that a tree is, or that stuff that can grow forever is vines, or like that's how it's extending your life in in sort of that cursed way that. It's not just, oh, you magically are immortal now. It's like, oh, you're immortal because we've filled your veins with, with wood and sap. And that's what mm. comes to mind for me. So, like, th but does he immediately turn tree ish or does he slowly? I, mean, I think it's more back, slow. He's got to get back to, um, to what's it called? To San Juan, which is where we're going to put him. Mm -hmm. So here's what I'm kind of thinking is that maybe he he is like uh, got his he's like maybe on his throne or something. You know, he's got some kind of. Oh, that's cool. Chair or something that he's sitting in and that maybe he is like, uh, oh, you know, what's actually another good, good influence this would kind of be the Lich from Shadow Dark. Any any Shadow Dark fans in here? Mm. Shadow Dark. Is that the Lich? Images. I'm sorry, I'm Google Shadow Dark cover. Let's do that. Uh, no, limited cover is the one I want. Orange App says, I want to imagine that it would have uh, been a long and painful process where at first uh, he thought it was a, a blessing, but th the cursed aspects became slowly apparent over time. That's invocative. Yeah, but I'm, I guess I'm more asking, I mean, that's obviously important, but in yeah. context of what he's wearing that's what i'm thinking is he actually wearing his plate does he turn mm. to tree-ish like this or is he wearing his more like courtly um you know i i like the idea that it's grown the curse grew over it and he's like I, you can't take it off anymore like also mm. you, you want to show it to the audience like when they flip through it they want to know right away i'm looking at a conquistador i'm yeah, looking okay, at the okay, conquistador okay. so basically too. we're taking the conquistador from jungle cruise and smashing him with a buy-in tree and uh the in what's the what's the kind jonathan of thing price the, jonathan price Although I don't, I don't know if I'm gonna make his. I don't even know if you're gonna be able to see his. his oh, uh, uh, I know, I know who the other. The face vibe I think is gonna be like um, the Green Knight. Uh, oh yeah, yeah. I gotta find a picture of that. Okay, hold on. I'm gonna find the Shadow Dark one. I just like to get my my art board ready to go. Might as well show the whole process here, right? We're here yeah. for the long haul. Steve Gibbs says the armor is embedded into the tree. Yeah, you know, I don't. Yes, that's. I think that's a good trope. It's a trope, but I like it. 
Um, I don't know where my shadow dark PDS branches are. puncturing their way through the plate says Orange Jasp. Shadow and, uh, dark. Here we go. We could use a, a refresh on the music as well. Maybe just something different. I mean, I only have two, so it's either no music or this or the other one. Go to the other one and turn it half down again. I mean, I can turn it off. I, you know, give me a second. I'm finding this this art of Dev the lich. Patel. We got any more questions while we're doing this boring part? Dev Patel was in the Green Knight, but he wasn't the Green Knight. No, I want right. the. I'm talking about the like the guys, the face, the the guy, the you know. Oh, you yeah, know, yeah. I can, it's like the more I think about this, the more oh, yeah. ideas. I get. His face is sweet. I can't share pictures on mine, but no, I know. I'll, I'll find it in a second. I'm, I'm trying to find this shadow dark lich first. There it is. <laughs> I mean, this this art alone is like, you know, if I didn't do the art in this book, like so darkest dungeon style, I would have done it more like this, like kind of graphic novel y. Yeah. No, oh, you're, you're you have to watch it come up on the screen here. You'll see it. Okay, so there's that, I see it. and then um, okay, Green Knight. What's the name? What's the name of the monster? I just, I just just the monster in the Green Knight movie. Oh yeah. What yeah, 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 yeah. Even just the first image is great. Yeah, he's copy sweet. image. I wanted to like that movie so this. much, but it is just too weird for me. Yeah, you don't like weird movies. Like I don't that. like weird movies. That um chat tell me other pirate what tell me your favorite pirate movie but there's not that many though i don't care i want to know <laughs> i want to okay. know what they say okay what what else we got here um you know we can't play oh my mic is quiet yeah you want me to turn I, mine it, down i don't under like it sucks because i hear it from my my uh what's it called and not from Okay, maybe if I do this, check, 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 check. Okay, is that is that better? Is my mic volume better? Uh, I didn't hear a change. Is it? Is it? Can you... No, it's. I can't hear you at all anymore. It's totally okay, gone. Yeah, so that does do it. Check, check, check. Is that better? One, two, three. That's a, that's a little better. Yeah. yeah I'll okay, turn mine down. Keep talking. I'm gonna turn you up in my ears. Check, 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 check. One, two. Yeah, Muppet Treasure Island, uh, uh, a favorite of Luke and I's for sure. Oh, yeah, Pirates yeah, of the Caribbean, yeah. of course. We've got Cabin Fever. Okay, then what's the last reference? We're going there's one, mad. There's one more reference. Ooh, Black Sails is really good. There's Black one Sails. more. Re what was the reference we just that I didn't get yet? Um, visual reference. You got the Green Knight one. Oh, I know what it was. It's the. It's basically the Green Knight, but from Darkest Dungeon Two. Yeah. Uh. Yeah. What's the name of that monster? Darkest Dungeon 2 Green Knight Monster. It's just kind of the same vibe. I mean, literally, they if you look at this, it's like they just took the dude from... Uh, oh, look at this. This is a little bit more like the knight was killed. Uh, here, let me do... Oh, yes. Let me do copy image address. And then I'm going to... This is a little trick for you guys if you're... Want to paste a PNG directly into Photoshop with with its transparency? You can take the link from the internet and place it. What? Boom! And then it won't do that black background yeah. thing. Yeah. Okay. That's this cool. is this is good. This is a good a good mood board, right? Yeah. I mean, we're kind of leaning into a trope here, but that's okay. So I guess what I was thinking here is that. Um, where's my, where's my sketch layer? Now I got to get organized. Is this it? Here. There we go. Okay. Uh, so what uh, I'm thinking, go, go ahead. ahead. No, you go. A good question in the chat that I think everyone will be interested in. Is the dark Caribbean just a setting book or will it have a campaign as well? Can you give us a little primer about what it is? Oh, I mean, I guess in your mind, what is the difference? Because I think uh, I think the question means as a campaign, is there a storyline that you follow? I mean, it's it so it's ends? a it's a sandbox campaign book. Uh, yeah. So it, in a lot of ways, it's a setting book, uh, but there are not adventures in the book. Um, we are actually doing a, another Kickstarter this fall that will have three 
uh, you know, adventures already in it. Um, we'll talk more about that later. Yeah, um, it'll be in the announcement section of the show. But the Dark Caribbean is like a, it's a campaign setting book, but the campaign parts are every NPC and every major location have a six part timeline. Um, mm-hmm. and those timelines, uh, kind of unfold however you need to them to them need them to unfold. They might unfold you know, when your players come and leave and come back or they might do something. Um, so, but the, the setting is definitely, there's not like one thing you need to go fix. And if you fix it, you complete the track. In my experience, having just complete, I complete my three month play test campaign in dark Caribbean. We, we, we finish a week from Thursday and we, if we had played the timeline as the players discovered it, we could have played for three years. I had to move the timeline forward and it is they're just like you know you can spend weeks in one town um so yeah so it's not going to be a campaign it's not a campaign book in like tyranny of dragons from D where you need to go stop x from happening and then everyone that you run into is related to that singular event it's much more like there are lots of events that are happening in different areas and here's a timeline of how uh how they unfold and then you can yes, pick and choose yeah. those so that you can go sail anywhere and do anything sort of at any time. Is um, yeah, is yeah. that does that get to their question? Yeah, I think so. He'll feel free to do follow up questions if you like. Yeah, like I mean, you know, in my mind, it's both, but I, it's gonna, it's not gonna be like it's like Neverland. Like, is Neverland a campaign yeah. setting, or is it a is it a setting book or a campaign book? You know? Yeah. Also, probably good beat, movies, Princess Bride. I probably beat that into the ground, honestly. Okay, so Cutthroat Island. Cutthroat Island, yeah. See, like right now, this is too big, so I'm gonna Photoshop it down. And you can't do that on paper. And, yeah, that's sweet. And either thing, I said this a lot in interviews. I I really look at myself as a trades trades person, tradesman, and less of a um, artist. Uh, like I'm not doing it to express myself or I don't, you know, I'm not trying to do an art gallery. Like I want the art done because I want, I need it <laughs> for my you want it to so, exist. Yeah. So people, so people can see what I'm thinking about when they're playing my games. I yes. Guess. Okay. So I like this idea. So now is he actually on a throne or is he, is he just like grown into the walls, you know? I think a throne, I mean, in your mind, he has a throne somewhere. He rules over something. Well, I mean, it doesn't have to be a throne. Like it could just be, it could actually, you know what we could do? It could be like one eye Willie where he is. Yeah. It's a pirate chair. He's in his his pirate chair. I was just going to ask, can you put him on a ship? Yeah. Oh, you think he should be on a ship and not on. Oh, in my mind, he was always in his mansion in San Juan because we went there. With you know, I went there with B and Dad for sure. Uh, for oh, my fortieth, right. physically for been there, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. But I was thinking, yeah, I was thinking dining table, dining table. Yeah, someone just said that in the chat. with a bunch of treasure, one-eyed Willie. And I, let's just let's not make the ship part ambiguous because I yeah I don't want to commit to that. And I don't think he's roving around. I mean, then you just set the ship on fire and he's done. You know, right, 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 right. fair. Like I think he's a. He's the kind of guy you go visit, and then like, you know, his his tier six is, ooh, undead undead horse. Undead horse. No, he's. He, I think he's immobile. I think that's yeah. the cool thing about him is that he's a, a or immobile. extremely. You know, he if he could move, it's slow and stuff. Yeah, I like the dining table idea, or or in his room. Or some okay, kind. let's 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 explore this dining table idea. So I'm gonna grab my vanishing point. Uh, brush. This is really easy in Procreate. You just turn on vanishing points. Oh, actually, you know what? No, I'm gonna use one of my one of my tools. This is kind of a cool tool. Um, was that Alan? Ogre Cave? That's Alan, right? No. I think oh, it is. Maybe. I mean, oh, maybe it is. I'll find out. Alan, is that you? <laughs> just tell us. Uh, yes. Yeah. 
Oh, good he, ideas, uh, chat. Keep them coming. We love it. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's Alan. What's up, Alan? Okay. Uh, so here's what we're gonna do. I got this tool called what's it called? La Lazy Nizumi. This thing is awesome. Uh, I'm gonna say ruler vanishing lines right and turn this guy on and now check this out check me out wow cool. okay so we want to move this line yep that's me way over here <laughs> mike shade says rooted into a broken windmill just like don quixote wanted <laughs> Oh my god, build him into a windmill. That'd be really funny. I spent most of my youth tilting against windmills. Oh, you're so poetic, Tyler. Okay, let's get this ta table right. See, like, you know, this is the part where I'm like, if I were an art artist, I wouldn't I probably wouldn't use this tool, right? Just because you're using a computer doesn't mean you wouldn't use it. I know, but look at this thing. I like don't have to I don't have to worry oh, about like the you know where the lines are. This is cool. I've never seen this stuff either. It's like so. Uh, now you just set it to auto start manual change. But see, now I can just. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I think the table needs to be bigger. There was another question. Uh, Orange Asp uh, asked, will there be a GM screen? Stay tuned for the announcements and we'll answer that later. <laughs> Uh, we can talk about that now. I no mean, I, I don't think everyone's going to stay on the whole time. So, yeah, sure. Okay, so the bad news is that we're not kickstarting Dark Caribbean this year. That's the bad news. Womp womp. And I, I, I'm no one is more disappointed about that than me. I just don't want to rush this book. I care about it way too much. Um, that being said, the content for it is going to keep coming, and it's going to be keep keep coming on the Patreon. See, here's the problem though: the table is going to hide all his legs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You just drew that. I was like, that's way too big. No, it needs. If it's going to do that, it needs to be like in the corner, like twenty percent that size. I think it should just be the chair. Yeah, I think it should just be the chair. All right, you can always add a table later. Uh, is this the right spot for the chair though okay so okay so that's the the bad news is the dark caribbean's not it coming to kickstarter this year but the good news is that a lot of the content in the book we have moved to another book called down among the dead uh, my patrons already know this but uh it's called down among the dead and it's basically three f pretty large adventures Mm -hmm. um and a bunch of generators and who knows what other goodies we're going to end up getting in there yeah luke uh, luke is just like every day he just like keeps like oh this can go in there and this can go in there it's going to be chocked full of good content yeah. no i don't think i need this perspective thing so so like we need some cool ass old old uh chair that he's kind of grown into right yeah Monkey this Moto is the hard part this is the part ahead. where you're like I suck at drawing. Everyone's going to look at my shitty drawing. But, wow. you know, like three hours from now, I'm going to be like, you know oh, what? Cool. I can't believe I got here. I, I paint Warhammer 40K miniatures. Luke knows this, obviously. But there's always a step. Every time you're painting a miniature, there's a step where you're like, this looks terrible. Like where you've got all the colors, the first layer of colors on, but maybe you put half a wash on, but you haven't finished it. Yeah. And then yeah. you like get to the end of the next step and you're like, all of a sudden it looks good. Like wh what just happened? Yeah. I mean, I've, I've had some though. I mean, the people who follow me on, I had, I don't know. I had one, this was it this one of the sirens. Yeah. You were not happy. I was like depressed all day about it. It was not good. No. Oh, okay. I need to put these in the same layer. Okay. So anyway, uh, yeah. So down among the dead is going to kickstart on talk like a pirate day this year, September 19th. And all a lot of the goodies that we were whole waiting to do with uh, the Dark Caribbean are going to be in that Kickstarter instead. Yeah. So the Pirate Borg GM screen is going to be in there. Um, we're going to do. Uh, do you remember what all we're going to do, Tyler? Um, are we doing? No, we're not doing the cards, right? Because that's the thing. So we're doing the the GM screen, the main core book. We're doing the we're talking about doing the punch out chips. Yeah. Oh yeah. So we're gonna do cardboard, like you know, like if you buy a fantasy flight card game, 
uh, cardboard punch outs of all the ships in Pyroborg. Board game or something. Yeah, 2D. They're they're printed on both sides of Limithron's ships. So like if you've seen any of the like naval combat packs or the Oceans and Islands packs, those ships will be double sided and punch out, and it will be relatively cheap. So it can be like, oh hey, I have a whole fleet of two dimensional ships that I can put down. Um, they're not punch out. They're not like constructed like Pirates of the Spanish Main. Um, but that makes it easy for people to just stick them in their bag and have a whole fleet of ships. Yeah, I think the thing I really think it's important is that I don't, I want it to be a low cost way to deal with naval combat because in some campaigns, people are going to use it like a few times. Yeah. And we really don't want like, oh, you have to buy these like 3D injection molded models and spend hours painting them. And and hundreds of dollars. Yeah. Yeah. Or like, hey, I want my players to fight like 10 different kinds of ships, you know? Yeah. Um, Oh, and then another big thing is we're, we're talking about doing some kind of dice, right? And coins. We are definitely going to... Oh, yes. So this card... Man, I wish I just had the list in front of me, but it's also I'm trying to focus on this drawing. So it's... Watching it's, you draw is really cool. So, yeah. It's the book. It Let's see here. We've got number one, book. Two, dice. Uh, those are going to be... I think we're going to do 2D, 2D20... 46 right so that mm-hmm. if people yeah people it's a who full play, D style set so you can play either version yeah either version and because you while you don't use 2d20 that often in pirate borg you definitely use it i mean use it for carousing yeah uh we're definitely we'll have it for uh or if you have two attacks sometimes yeah yeah but the 46 you use as a land lubber and you use it for those drop tables so it's not that you know i like the idea that his legs are totally just just tree I don't like this helmet at all. It's actually throwing me off. We'll come back to this. Oh, see, and I did I did this all the time where I put on the wrong layer. Okay, what else? Uh, the book. Uh, this dice, is like you're, lit- you're like literally living in my brain right now. Yeah, GM <laughs> okay, screens. So dice. Uh, okay, we got the dice. There's we one got, more thing I just can't no, remember. The, the oh, D2, D2 Devil's Luck coins. Yeah. Uh, luck. Uh, four is the GM screen. Yep. Um, five is the naval tokens. Six is we're going to actually kickstart naval hex maps. Oh, yeah. Um, I'm writing this down. And then seven is, I remember, I know what eight and nine are, but what's seven? Eight and nine are we're doing two map books, spiral oh, yeah. bound map books. Um, one is going to be they're both going to have ships in it. Uh, so basically, the naval tokens, these naval tokens. I know you can't read this handwriting because I'm writing with a stylus quickly. They'll, these are going to be double sided. One side will be in one book, and the other side will be in the other book, so that you can take like the ghost sloop and pair it against the navy ship of the line. And put them next to each other in the battle map books. So that should be cool. Spiral. But what's the ninth item? What am, what am I forgetting? Go, go, Gadget Tyler. Uh, I'm just writing this down as you go, too, so I can put it in the chat. Um, you did the coin. I don't, I don't okay, remember. So I'm, sw- I'm switching music. Yeah, switching the music. What's the size of the battle maps, Luke? I think I'm going to do whatever Tom Cartus's is are. I saw you saw yeah. his when I was at your place. It's I like uh, it's, uh, it's it's eleven by seventeen, but that's that's f- single. So twenty uh, twenty two by seventeen. Yeah, when you have when you have two of them together, they're meant to be put side by side so you can do shipboardings. Yeah, but what's the ninth? There's a ninth thing in here. I can't remember what it is. I'm actually gonna just delete this. <laughs> Spend a little bit of time writing it. There you go. Oh uh, man, I can't remember. It's all right. Here, I got. Uh, boom. Oh, too many words. We have this written down, but I don't want to stop to go look at it up. Look it up. Patreon. 
dice. We said the dice, the coins. Mm. Oh, oh, I think we're going to do a, um, I think number nine is, so the two, event, I'm going to show these off later after I get further along in this NPC. Uh, the t two of the adventures, one is called Indo the Maelstrom, um, which is a, oh, yes, is a maritime dungeon. Basically, it's Curse of Strahd on a pirate ship. <laughs> um, and the other is that, uh serp it's now it's called um venom in the veins it's a very like snake indiana jones style uh mayan temple venom um, in the veins cool both of those have large scale battle maps and we're gonna print those battle maps on the you know what's what's the pathfinder uh folding map thing yeah it, it's like they dry erase any... style laminate laminated yeah yeah that's that's going to be the vibe okay let's get some more of these yeah those will oh. be like we'll print enough for to make sure everyone's happy you know yeah that'll be that'll be a, a folding battle map wait i don't understand what do you mean of course we're going to print enough for to make everybody yeah, happy. yeah 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 yeah. just ignore that comment sorry i'm just <laughs> that was never mind you're multitasking uh, I'm, I'm yeah i'm writing it down i'm like hey yeah how many we got that cool yeah, yeah okay we'll, we'll make enough for everyone to be that's not going to be a retail item, but it will be an. Oh, you're, you're you're just saying behind the scenes that we're it's going to be Kickstarter exclusive. That's what you mean. Probably, yeah. I'm quartermastering yeah. it a little bit here. So. And less people, yeah, really, like a, really want that, but exactly like yeah, a so Pathfinder nine, flip map, exactly. Flip like that, map, Eric. flip map. Thank flip you. Map, yeah, yeah, that's what we're going to do. Is a okay. So let's talk about this guy's head. He needs to look badass, right? Mm -hmm. He needs to look really badass. I think this head looks really badass. Uh, yeah. How is he more undead or tree? Like it's in, it's not he's not just a tree. He's a tree lich. That's really important. I think he then he, he needs to be with both of that. Like you need to see the skull, and then also at the the extra veins, uh, tree veins coming off of that. Okay, so maybe we give him like see like already like i zoomed in too much and now he's going to be too small <laughs> uh so let's 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 back up a bit here chat feel free to keep uh adding questions in the in in the chat and let us know what you're uh enjoying or looking forward to or or anything you're confused about or want to ask you know, Luke's will just keep drawing and yeah, have GM fun. tips. I don't know, whatever. I don't even yeah. know. Him. Speaking of there, if you haven't seen it, we have a top 10 GM tips video by Luke that is out as well. Oh yeah. Plug, 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 plug. Just, I mean, just trying to be helpful. Like, no, no, that's helpful. Tips. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. This guy, he looks like shit right now, but that's okay. Okay. Does he have like a big weird jaw hanging? And Roots and veins jump. growing around and through the skull, says Monkey Moto. Steve says, oh, like, kind of like Green Knight, but more skeleton esque. Yeah, I got, yeah. The, yeah. I mean, oh, I yeah. like this. I like this here where he, the, this, uh, yeah, we'll do that where there's like kind of vein shit, you know, like, yeah. And maybe this is like, come, there's a root, you know, here, let's do like this. I'm Groot. Oh yeah, he's yeah, he's Treebeard, yeah. he's Groot, he's we need what are some good like uh liches from movies? I don't know, but I hear that liches get stitches. <laughs> Who gave you a microphone? I d I don't know. I just you know. <laughs> I'm kidding, I'm kidding. Um this thing that one's okay. clearly from Darkest Dungeon. What, the, oh, this one, this is, yeah, that, the, this dude was from Darkest Dungeon too. Where is he? I just Googled liches and that's what I'm looking at right now. Oh, oh, not, you're not, I thought you were saying, oh, I thought you were reading a comment. Okay. Yeah. So like the idea of this is like busting out of his armor, maybe. And, okay. And then does he, but he still talks, he's still sentient, right? Yeah. Yeah, of course. I mean, yeah, he wouldn't be much of an NPC if he could. Talk. If he couldn't talk. Okay, here's he's a, here, set dressing. He, this is important. What? What does Ponce de Leon want? Well, I think so. He would have spent his first amount of time trying to figure out how to reverse the curse or stop it, right? But he's oh, failed. Oh, you think it's a that. curse? 
Well, oh, okay. I mean, I, I think mean, it's think not it's, what he thought it was going to be. You think he doesn't want it? Um, yeah, I think that, you know, he takes this, he, he drinks from the fountain of youth and he's like, this is great. Oh, wait, what? No, I didn't sign up for this. And now he's stuck with it. You know, um, are there any movie scenes where someone like starts turning into a plant that we can yeah, think of? Uh, doesn't that happen in the fountain? That's about the fountain of the youth. How did we not put? <laughs> yeah. I'm looking that up right now. I was already looking it up actually. Oh my God. That's yeah. That's basically, I mean, we're not, we're not breaking new ground here, right? We're giving the people what they want, which is undead tree liches. Fountain. Fountain movie. I kind of like the idea too that this like he's like maybe a little bit more like tilty like ah man I'm a Yeah, Rare. he probably wants yeah he wants a cure he probably wants power does he want treasure I mean also here's my thing is I think that maybe he like acts like uh Marlon Brando and the Godfather he's like the Spanish version of the Godfather you know Mm, yeah, sure. Yeah, man, this scene of uh, Hugh Jackman, he he eats bark off the fountain, off the tree, but he just turns into a bush, basically. <laughs> Spoilers. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Not very tree-esque. I do like that movie a lot. It's yeah, I do weird. too. Yeah. Amazingly, our mom really likes that movie. Shout out to, to Mama Stratton, who's watching. Oh, is mom in the stream? What up, mom? Yeah, I think Thanks so. Thanks for making us. Yeah. Ra raising us right Raising us to steal and plunder. He can't be a total skeleton, I've decided. He's got to be... Yeah, you know, totally. Okay, oh, hi, chat. Uh... Ooh, I like the idea that he's got still got a beard, but now it's all like twigs and shit, maybe? I feel like, um, like this this trope has been exploded so many times, it's like, I'm not going to have any original ideas here. Yeah. You know? <laughs> Paul says Oh, that... Ponce de Leon, he turned into a tree. Good job, like, Luke. Yeah. Yeah, the key is just making it look sick. Have part of the top of his head cut so you can see slash count the rings. Voldemort is a lich. Oh, that's a uh, the tree. The, the tree rings is a good idea, but you got to remember, like this. The, let me show you the the final art. Uh, is like this blocky. So yeah, sure. And I I think he's actually too uh big right now. Oops. Lich better have my money, says chat. Uh, Orange, I'll get to your combat question in a second. Sauron's a lich. Yeah, I guess he is. Yeah, actually, you know, that was the one I was going to say is it's Treebeard yeah. meets Sauron. Yeah. You know, or maybe the Witch King, although he's not wraith-ish. He's definitely lich-ish and not wraith-ish. Uh, maybe yeah. he still got some tattered clothes. I mean, I think he probably had time to change clothes for a couple, for a century or so, right? Yeah. So, yeah, because Ponce de Leon was, what, 14, 1500s, right? So this I mean, is a couple hundred years he's one of the earliest later. ones. It's going to be, or I think it's early 1500s. And he was governor of uh, of um, Puerto Rico, and he was basically governor of all the Spanish islands. Steve says he could want treasure in order to get, like, if he got enough treasure, he could somehow use that to cure his condition or power or release, or maybe he's searching for, he, this is my idea, maybe he's searching for items that could help relieve his pain or give him more mobility or differences. Oh, he's looking for medicine. Maybe. Yeah. Okay. So he's, or you know, that's always a good quest giver to be like, go find me the MacGuffin that will ease my suffering. Yeah, yeah. He's hard, hard one to think about what he wants. He makes me think of uh, this is major spoilers for On Stranger Tides. Um, but it so makes don't me listen. Think of the, the the governor and that. Uh, yeah. I'll try not to spoil it too much because I think everybody here should. <laughs> Actually, the second question in chat was, "Have you read On Stranger Tides?" And I responded that it's your favorite book. <laughs> yeah, I feel like if you're gonna watch 
me draw monsters for this book live, you probably should listen to that book. And I say listen because Br- Bronson Pritchard's Pritchett's reading is like one of my favorite audiobooks. Yeah, it's it's so one good. of my thing, favorite things ever, period. Okay, and then I think I would say, does he have eyes or not? But you know what? It doesn't matter because this is a, a pirate board, you know, dark Caribbean monster. His eyes are going to be black. Um, nice. Orange Asp asked about, as a Call of Cthulhu player, he hasn't run that much heavy combat, and he's worried he can't do Pirate Port Justice. What could he do to get more customs and, and uh, to, uh, accustomated to and more frequent fun combats? Um, well, I don't think that Pirate Port has to be combat heavy. Uh, yeah. uh, in my Dark Caribbean playtest game, my players are second level, if you're counting how many times they've gained experience. We've been playing for three months. And they have not been in very many combats. Um, they've done some ship combat. But, you know, like when your characters want to survive, they often will run away. Um, I think what's more important is that you reward player decision and narrative. Um, and, well, what else? To, leave, me, leave me, Tyler, with the question. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, uh leaning into the rp and all that stuff is good but w- to answer the question directly like how to get better at running combats the the easiest way to do that is sit down at the table yourself and run your own combat against yourself just have five of the exact same player characters in front of you they have all the same rules and have five of your own monsters and just mentally prepare yourself to like oh and and have each character do something different and then you can check yourself on the rules to move it quickly Fun combat for me is about moving, but it's about pace. It's just keeping it moving and like whatever people want to do, just like, great, roll a dice. Okay. Yeah. You succeed. How much damage you deal? Cool. Next person, you know, or, and then describing it really good descriptions and, and funness. And if people die, they die, or you can bring them back as a skeleton or a ghost and just keep things moving. Or they, they come in as a new crew member from your pirate ship. I think Pyroborg excels at keeping things moving quickly, but it's still really fun. Um, so that's when I'm trying to learn a system, I sit down and just fight myself and make it complicated. So then when my players do it, it's less complicated. It's it's good advice, but I would literally never do that. I know you. Yeah, you're way less of a power I'm not gamer a tactical, than I am. I'm not a tactical, you know, rulesy power gamer GM. I am a narrative GM. So I think what happens for me is... I tell the players what's going on. I ask what they want to do. I interpret what they're going to do and then um, have roll dice only when it will really matter. When like their failure or hopefully their lives are on the line is when I try to make my dice rolls. Yeah. Which isn't very different than how Call of Cthulhu runs. No, you could. I mean, also like Pirate Borg is pretty heavily, pretty heavily influenced by the book Call of Cthulhu. Yeah. So you're going to find a lot of common threads there what's this green line on his face that's the of root coming out of his chest into his eye oh which I, nice cool. i think it's a cool idea but it's maybe a little too i don't know i like the roots over here where they they just like i don't know i feel like I'm, i feel like i'm gonna be inking these roots for like uh, uh, so many hours which is okay Honestly, I think I'm further along because everybody, because I'm, you know, frantically doing this and you guys are all watching than I normally would be. In an hour, I would often, I'm still like looking through the internet, trying to figure out what this, what this creature even is, you know? Yeah. The reason Luke has Blackbeard on the screen is to match the qualities of of how thick or thin the line art is. Yeah, when I reference. get to actually inking it, like I have found that some of the NPCs I get way too detailed, and some are are not detailed enough. Um, so I really want to make oh shit, what did I just do? I really want to make sure that I don't, you know, um, under or over detail it so that it makes sense. And although this one's a special one, it's the last one and it's yeah. going to be a full page, full page art instead of, um, uh, just playing card size, which I'll show you guys in a bit. Okay. Is he, does he have a gauntlet on or is this just his hand? 
I think it's be- the the hand is a good opportunity to show more about like his affliction slash oh, you know yeah it's also like the one thing that's maybe still kind of human yeah that could also I be might... more on the bony side the more the more oh, lichy yeah, side yeah okay rather I will than say that, I will yeah. say I'm by no means good at drawing hands yet but after drawing 54 NPCs I am way better than I was when I started they are not easy hands are very hard you know right away instinctively as a, a viewer yeah when the hand is wrong. is wrong I had I watched some YouTube videos uh I look at my own hand a lot but the, like these little scoops that you do, they really help. See Sometimes scoop. you just need a hand. <laughs> oh, man. I like the idea that maybe his nails are really long. Uh, Mama Stratton doesn't know how to post in the chat, but she texted. Okay. She says uh, that she's not sure how she raised raised such bloodthirsty kids, but very <laughs> art, very artistic. I think it was taking us to the theater too often. Yeah, and letting us play video games all the time yeah all that like miss saigon is uh that's a bloody one i don't i don't think i like this root is that the root of the problem (laughs) oh my (laughs) come for the drawing stay for the terrible jokes no leave for the yep it looks so it looks a lot sloppier than some of my previous npcs on this stage but that's okay because we're gonna we're gonna ink it and all this is gonna go away Favorite pirate video game, everybody. Let's hear it. Oh man, Bes- I mean, my besides d- Assassin's Creed Black Flag. Oh, okay. okay. I was gonna say that's my stock answer because it's the only one that's given me the experience that I always wanted as a kid. The, yeah. But really, the answer is Monkey Secret of Monkey Island. I mean, I don't think excellent, of course. And then third place would be if you're if you're not gonna give Monkey. Oh, I forgot about Sea of Thieves. I was gonna say if you're not gonna give Monkey Island different slots, because I probably would give one and two their own slots. Mm-hmm. Um, Sid Meier's Pirates is a masterpiece. Both of them for their times. They're both a little dated now, or all three yeah. of them, or whatever. However you, yeah. I, I, you want to consider, it's really two. It's like they made the first one and then they kept. Okay, wait. Does he have a nose? Not if he's undead. That's like no nose is like the key. That's to what show gives it away that he's uh, he's an undead. Yeah. So, so he's not, Green yeah. Knight has a nose. This guy, but the, that guy doesn't. Does yeah, no nose is a this key. This guy's got a lich. nose. Look at this guy. Yeah, but he's not a lich. Like he's clearly but, a. But a he's, tree he's not person. a lich. Okay. Okay. Wait. So let's talk about the lich. So I think that that actually implies that he is understanding of some magic. He is not just uh, a power hungry explorer that happened to discover the fountain of youth. He must have conducted some kind of magic while he was there right yeah i think i think maybe story-wise like the fountain of youth gave him abilities and or curses that he was was or wasn't into and then he like dove into the magic realms further to be like how can i manipulate this what can i do with it what you know there are other magics i can exploit and then that led like further down the dark side if you will the lichen path yeah yeah i like that okay the other thing too is that um we haven't really detailed this that much but uh the there's this necrotic energy that's like seeping out of the nether world and uh mostly it's coming via the abyss which is south of cuba oh, but yeah. the other main font of this not main one of the other fonts of this is uh volcanoes on the isle of devils in which is our our, our bermuda um mm. but the third major font you guessed it fountain of youth um so he's actually the water is like you Itself know, is Im- magical. imbued with necrotic energy. It's not, you know, it's not this uh, lovely like elven, you know, fey, you know. Yeah, sense. it's it's not a beautiful, lush, full of life thing. It's in itself necrotic. You're drinking the energy of the dead, and to replenish your own. Uh, yeah energy uh here we go this is this is we got the flesh still going here kind of around his face cool oh yeah 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 okay so pyroborg oh that's cool has, that's cool with the flesh pyroborg roll 20 has the the sheet has everything is done the sheet has been submitted to 
Roll20, we're just waiting for them to, to basically approve it and turn it on. Mm -hmm. And once it is on, uh, we will upload the modules, both for 5e and for Pirate Borg, and then we will send everyone who backed at that level um, their, a, fr a free version of it. I'm, I'm really sorry it's taken so long, but there has been a lot going on. Yeah. Um, and once that comes out too, you know, we'll m let that known and let that be known and tell everybody too, not just the backers, but once it's out, I'll start working on bringing our, all of our modules into roll 20 as well. Like we've just been waiting for the base module to get out and the, and the sheet. And once that is approved, we'll start turning out more content for roll 20 that we've already done for foundry and stuff. We'll bring that over as well. Yeah. I wonder who is asking that snake one, one, three, eight. Are you, are you a five E player or a pirate Borg player? Yeah. Let us know. Also, uh, when's the, when's the eclipse break for you, Luke needed, uh, 1230. So I'm going to, or do you need to take a break? Me? No. I mean, I might have to go to the bathroom at some point, but. Well, yeah, but maybe you could keep this thing going. So oh, sure. Lose, I could stay. People. Maybe, is Jason watching? No, he's at work. He actually asked people to update him in the chat. Give me a play-by-play. -play oh, I, I was going to say, maybe we should get him on here. We should get, I don't know. Well, he's going to be busy, but. Let me check the sun real quick. Okay, this, this whole thing is a little high. Don't stare maybe? directly at the sun. It hurts. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Ow. I'm in California though, so it's um, you know it's a little different here. Pyroborg, not five E says Snake one one three eight. Oh yeah, yeah. So what Tyler just said is going to matter to you because he is working on getting all those, all the yeah. They're, we're going to get all of all the existing modules up on the store. Uh, yeah, Dead Man's Cove and Sinking a Cathagon and Buried in the Bahamas. Evil Evilon, kind of cool name. Uh, it says can't wait for. The for the foundry stuff thank you so much for the for your work uh just if you don't know or uh you know we have all of our foundry modules are on our patreon as well at the at the admiral level tier um or you can download them individually from our store so that all that stuff is is hot and ready to go they usually come out a couple days after any release that luke makes do you want to talk about the um here's what we should do let's make a list of things for you to talk about when i'm when i go watch the clips with my wife okay Sure. Uh, talk about the f Dark Caribbean Beta Foundry module. Ooh, yeah, sure. Foundry talk module. about the Harbor Master program. Harbor Master program. He's yeah. he's shaping up. I mean, you could like he already looks a lot better than he did when I was just yeah. vomiting. You, yeah, you you you've the work on his cheeks are really cool. Um. Oh, great. Yeah. Harbor okay, Master I like program. the idea that this arm has been like his big puffy shirt was there, but they can't get it off, you know? Yeah, that's cool. And, and it's been like it's grown into a tree thing. So this is all arm. Yeah. Um, but then, and then like this is like the shirt is ripped to make room for the roots roots up here the other thing is like i don't really need to sketch the roots i think in my idea there's going to be like all the branches let's go look at this buy-in tree again so they get really big and they kind of split at the split early on with lots of roots and then they make big like look at this trees don't do this normally where they have multiple roots to the ground that's really cool yeah, it's really It's just kind of what I got going on over here. So I think this here, this will be one in the background that kind of splits in here. I mean, it, does, it doesn't really need to be anything but cool looking, right? And then maybe up top, we'll do like a bunch of little, oh, I got an idea. We'll do very, uh, we'll do very darkest dungeon here where we do this. We'll move this down just so people know what we're drawing, right? Up top will be this kind of thing. Uh, I'm just going to cheat for now. Leaves. Oh. We're cheating. I'm yeah. gonna, I'll actually draw this later. Uh, actually, let's do... What 
What? I am not telling awful dad jokes. I'm telling good dad jokes. I, I mean, I haven't heard a good one yet. Have you guys? They're dad jokes. And for the record, I've been telling dad jokes since I was like 13 years old. Long I mean, before yeah, I was In his dad. defense, I tell a lot of dad jokes, and I'm not a dad. So. Yeah. It's true. Yeah, so I think the idea here is going to be here. Now, now that I, you know. We'll oh, just... that was cool how you just manipulated the. It's cool. You both did a stamp and drew it. I mean, I'm just, I don't know. Just, I'm just improvising here. He has a Wacom tablet that he's drawing on. Yeah. So this will look like leaves when I actually get to it. Yeah. It's a Wacom Intuos Pro. They're kind of old now. I got it in COVID. Uh, I really, I, I remember just like bugging Che, Che and Peku, like, what kind of tablet do you have? To now realize that, like, it really does not matter. Mm, like, yeah, yeah. But when you don't way, know, you might as well pick what the people yeah, you admire. I mean, that's just like how learning is. You're always like, what? Yeah. Like, what? Should I also like, talk about I the? Just, oh god. Sorry. Okay. I mean, if I just had the right tools, then I could do the thing. Well, that's not that's not really true at all. I also have an iPad, which I drew a lot of pirate Borg on. Yeah. Um. Uh, Steve asks, um, is there a reason you draw in blue, that you start in blue? Yeah, I, 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 honestly, it comes mostly from uh, the comic book kind of school uh, because the old, the way you used to do comic books is that you can draw in blue and then ink in black, and the way that they scan it in on those yeah. old comic book things doesn't pick up the blue. That Steve literally just said, I know the old school reason was that blue wouldn't show up on the scanners and photocopiers. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah uh, nice. So, I and I like it. It just like helps remind me. Like if I switch it to if I do this, right? Like all of a sudden, I'm thinking of this as the 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 art. You know, I'm yeah. thinking of this as like, oh, yeah. now I'm going to start shading it, and I like I try to make it look better. And the blue just helps me know mentally that this is like literally sketch. Like I don't like I he's not going to be blue at all you know yeah uh, it was cool luke was telling me yesterday you were saying that a lot of times when you draw the when you draw the line art you don't even know what color the item is going to be underneath like if you look at blackbeard like what color is his jacket versus the sleeve versus the cuff versus the like sometimes you don't even oh, yeah. know until afterwards and you go to start coloring it that's kind of yeah. cool and like sometimes like i'm doing this like pencil thing here but like i'll often do let's use this this brush right so this is like a bit of a more of a blocky brush and then i'll set the transparency lower and then here i'll and here i'm literally like i'm just thinking about the kinds of outlines i'm going to do later um yeah this oh, cool tree where it's like now i'm going to outline that later instead of it being instead of going like these lines i'll go over that makes sense and sometimes i'll change the color here like i'm like oh i I'm th i want to think about just trees and then we can just come here and do all fill all this in as trees i don't know whatever <clears throat> okay what else what else can you talk about when i go upstairs should and i like talk about the west marshes campaign are we not sure oh uh, yeah. no 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 i mean that's we don't have a date for it but we could definitely talk about it i mean yeah i think we're on the same page right yeah yeah i think so Our, we had a nice business meeting we're going to talk about, about the uh, the jam uh, with. Oh, I have a lot to say about that, obviously. Want to get up to get jam? I'll just touch on that, keep people interested, uh, and then I'll talk. I'm going to talk about the conventions. What's happening this year? Definitely talk about the quartermaster stuff. Uh, yeah, that's uh, with the quarter harbormaster program. Um. Yeah. I mean, I mean, or we, or we could go to intermission. I just we're probably going to lose. We, we've lost like five people over the whole thing. That's nothing, but yeah. So I don't, I don't know if we're gonna, if that. I mean, for most people, the eclipse will be happening at the same time. So maybe if we just say what time you'll I, be I back. Is that true? I guess not. I mean, I guess I'm assuming we're all in the middle United States. That's, but we're, I'm sure a bunch of people are East Coast. Yeah. Hey, chat, where are you guys? Drop us in. Let what us time know. does the eclipse happen for you? Is, that's yeah. the question. 
Um, yeah. Boom, boom. I still don't like his something about his head. It's like the geometry is wrong. Steve, what does SC mean? Southeast. SC means Southeast? Oh, South Carolina. I thought you said SE. Oh. I wasn't looking at the chat. Utah. Europe. Ooh, Budapest. Ooh, cool. Nice. Thanks for joining us, Ben. Iowa. It, how's everybody? Montreal. Pirate, pirate board games going. No oh, eclipse you know in the yeah. EU, Poland, sad face. Colorado. Who's that? Uh, Harley Cross. You know Luke's in Colorado, Harley? You near Denver at all? They play regularly. We have a, meet, we have a meetup group on Saturday. Sh uh, Ship of the Dead meetup groups. Germany. Nice. It starts at 311. Is the high point about 80% for Steve in South Carolina? Yeah, yeah, it's at all different times. So if we're breaking, yeah. Okay, well, I'll just leave you yeah. on, and then if you want to sure. leave after that, you can, or whatever you want to do. Okay, Barely so getting any you... clips in Seattle. Pittsburgh is at 4 o'clock Eastern time. Oh, no, 3 o'clock Eastern time. Okay, so here, here's a trick. Nice. For Photoshop users, I'm going to set the brush to behind, and I'm going to change the hue and darkness a bit, and now it'll draw behind what I already have. That's sweet. Harley is going to play on Saturday. Oh, says. nice. Yeah. Or they say. So. I just didn't recognize the name. Uh, that's, yeah, that's sweet. That's very mm. cool. Yeah. And then I think, I think this, all this down here. Oh, this is, is starting just, to look sick, dude. <laughs> I think this is just all like, it would just be like all roots, you know? And then we'll do stuff where it's like these are going under, you know. Shit. Going back to normal. Oh. Nice couple people in Colorado. Yeah, pretty good pirate borg um following in Colorado. I wonder why. Hey yeah, guys, here's the Ship of the Dead meetup group link. If you're going to be in Colorado visiting, see if you can come say hi. Um, so Lon says, could be sick if the head was hella crooked. That's kind of what I I was going for. You think more than that? I, I tilted it a bit more crooked than... Yeah. yeah, are you going to put the text about him down in that Ponce de Leon section, or is it on a different page? Oh, I don't know. I didn't even get that far. Yeah, yeah, I guess because everybody else is only one column, I'll probably do a text block down block here. at the bottom. Yeah, that's Steve was saying there's room for text at the bottom of the page, which is cool. Yeah, so then he takes up the whole page, unlike all the other NPCs, just because it's, you know, yeah, he's definitely going to be obviously in the Kickstarter, you know, he'll be in the art. I'm going to make him really good. I'm just going to keep drawing. Okay, so we want more of a tilted head, maybe. I mean, like, I don't want him to be dead. But maybe his like maybe it's like tilted. Yeah. So chat, I'm dropping in in the mm -hmm. chat a link to this song called relics by mondo oh, gecko written Where, by luke is it on spotify it's on spotify yeah so definitely, um, definitely on brand for this this stream. yeah i can't i definitely can't stop thinking about it as you're drawing so yeah uh, i used to be in this band called mondo gecko which is a um ninja turtles character it's just jam band and i wrote this song in college or shortly after called relics which is about it's basically indiana jones it's almost a kid's song <laughs> uh, yeah 
here's the here's the first verse ponce de leon afraid of kingdom come took his men far to the west map in hand they searched the islands hoping to accomplish their quest they found a place that had the slightest trace of a treasure greater than gold and then ponce de leon influenced by the rum found a way to never grow old <laughs> yeah anybody who, ever, anybody who ever doubts that i've always been into pirates need only look up <laughs> yeah um, the band yeah. you were in almost 20 years ago no it was it can't be no it was 10 years ago 10 years oh 20 uh, 2018 that would okay. be depressing honestly okay yeah, it's gone ago, yeah, he's right. it's it's kind i mean it's definitely a sketch okay so what about his body here does it come like is all are all how about we do rags and then to the roots oh that's actually a good reference this guy says you um if he's still alive then yeah just a bit more crooked ha 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 otherwise you risk the emperor of man on his throne which is a warhammer 40k reference yeah i, I don't want him to be cool uh he he's he's alive for sure yeah, yeah. roots de Leon. yeah you know what like i think i could probably play that on stream but i isn't ironic that i'm afraid i'm gonna get a youtube <laughs> D, dmca yeah but it's your music but, yeah i just don't want to have to fight it like it's like, yo, bro, I, I wrote that music. You can't do that. Okay, so. Yeah, you should just play it. Uh, okay. <laughs> All right, I'll play it. So, uh, no, that's too much work. All right, I'm playing it in my, on my end. I assume the chat can't hear it, so that's good. No, I mean I can't. But I you can't. Can, you can't hear it. Good. Okay, so this is going to be the his throne, the Golden Emperor. I mean, how are we feeling? Like, does it look? Is the vibe right? I mean, I'm liking it. You could always have a little table sticking out from the side there, if you where where what's his name was. What do you mean? What's his name? Where you just moved Blackbeard away from? Like you can oh, stick well, a little the, table there if you wanted to. This is the other. Oh, here you mean? Yeah, right there. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I, I want to get a lot of these, like these roots down here. We'll get to see those kind of come up. Steve says it's working. What's working? This picture. Oh, okay, good. Yeah, I mean, I feel like I'm gonna be I'm gonna be inking these roots for a long time, but you know what? People can come and go, whatever. Like, is Luke still drawing Ponce de Leon? It's six o'clock. Probably will be. <laughs> hey, as long as you get one thing done a day, it's a good day, right? Well, but though I said though today, B was like, "What are you gonna What are you gonna do today besides Ponce de Leon, or besides the final NBC in the stream?" And it's like, you know what? I've done a bunch that I took all day on. I'm not going to rush it. If it takes all day and it takes all day, it takes all day. It's the last one of 54. It's one I use an important one to the setting. I think a lot of people are going to have fun with them. I want to show people this art and have them be like, oh, yeah, whoa. whoa. I'm like, dude, you can go and talk to Ponte Leon, but check him out. He's like a lich. And then I'll like open the book. And I'm like, this look is at 54 yeah, other. This NPCs. is definitely one that's like kind of inspired by uh, Andrew Kolb's approach for Neverland, where it's like, like hit in never if you don't have Neverland 5e, it's called 5e, but it's not really, it's more like an OSR book. But it's like Wendy is a witch and all the pirates are undead and oh, yeah. John is Dark. a lich and the uh i think you know like for kind of for cultural sensitivity reasons he replaced the like fairly racist depiction of natives with uh dryads and ants uh mm -hmm. and i was like dude i need to do some so obviously you know dark caribbean blackbeard is a necromancer and spoiler and uh uh <laughs> ponce de leon is After a back, tree lich i got i mean i got some there's some of these NPCs are I'm I'm not 
being uh, modest because some of them are I'm very proud of. Yeah, dude, you should. These are sick. You know what I should have done instead of the... Um, oh, you know what? Here, okay, yeah. here. I'm, I'm going to take a break. Yeah, I was drawing. just going to say, do you want to... Before you... Bef no. Before this, you is my, the this is the screen that I made for, the, for hold, but if we're not going to do it, I'm going to leave it up, and I'm going to do this. Dark Caribbean, Lynx. Um, what's her name? People want to see those NPCs too. So no, we're gonna do that. We're Lich Queen. This is the Lich Queen from. Nice. When Luke comes back from viewing the eclipse, we'll go through the um, uh, NPCs. Oh, nice. That's cool. Right. <laughs> yeah. Definitely. The cool thing is, it's like. Like these NPCs have been fun and they've been a lot of work, but now when I look back at them, I'm like, oh well, now we have 54 NPC art assets to use like this, right? Whenever we want, whenever we it's want, like, yeah. So much art, yeah. There she goes. Okay, so let's give her a little bit of let's do levels a bit. Richard's asking, okay. is Captain Kidd returning from Dead Man's Cove? Uh, no, but I think that we, I think I want to eventually port Dead Man's Cove or uh, Deathlight Cove to Pirate Borg because he's such a great NPC, but I've already done him. I don't think I need him to be reinserted into the Dark Caribbean. He's already got a, he's got a whole full adventure. Blackbeard's not gonna have a full adventure. Is Captain, I should know this, but is Captain Kidd this in, he's in Dead Man's Cove and in Deathlight Cove? Oh, I think he meant Deathlight Cove. You said Dead Man's Cove. Deathlight he did write Cove, Dead Man's Cove. But he's not in that. That's, that's yeah. uh, the, the red yeah, okay. wolf yeah. or whatever. Yeah, I thought I thought not. I was like, wait, <clears throat> what? I should know. I helped write that adventure. <laughs> um, where I go? Okay, artistic. Um, so good question. Cut out, Did cut he out, reach cut the cut throne out. on his own? Someone mentioned him having his crew skulls between the roots on the floor. Might be tacky, but it sounds cool. Oh, I like no, I like skulls, uh, well, dude. The more skulls in Dark Caribbean, the better. Yeah. I also like anything that anything that could go in his roots that show that there's like a history there i think is cool armor equipment extra bones you know okay i'm gonna leave this up i'm gonna go i'm gonna turn myself off and go see this eclipse and i'll be back okay cool i'll right, talk Tyler, about some stuff it's all you i'm just gonna sit are here you, and watch you silently yeah are you going for like 30 minutes yeah i i don't i don't think only a few we'll see though okay cool yeah then i'll just right. keep it going all right, I'll You're be thinking back. of Deathlight. All right, cool. All right. <laughs> Luke's gone now, suckers. What do you really want to know? Let's talk. Um, no, hey, thanks for being here, guys. Uh, so Luke will be back in a couple minutes. Yeah, you're thinking of Deathlight. Um, if anybody who's just joining us, I'm Tyler, the quartermaster. I'm Luke's brother and the other logistic end of uh of Limithron. Um so let's talk about a couple of fun things that are that are coming up. The Dark Caribbean beta. Um, so all the content that Luke is making, he's releasing in chunks as he completes it on the Patreon, limithron.com slash Patreon. Um, and so anybody who subscribes gets access to that content early. And we love to hear feedback too. And, and you can be like, oh, you love this, or this was confusing or that. But that material will ultimately get printed in the final book of um the dark caribbean when that that comes out but at the the ten dollar tier at the foundry level tier we're taking all the content and i am building the foundry module as we go and keep trying to update it and make it better and stuff so um every time we, re we release new dark caribbean content i'm just going to keep updating the singular foundry module um to make it have just like building just like the premium pirate board module but this is for just the dark caribbean um so it has a ridiculous amount of content um in it as it goes and have all the npcs and all their stats and when we get to that point so that gets updated and then like every couple uh every once a quarter we'll update the links and you'll have to re-download it again and stuff and, but that's fine um because we're you know we'll be changing things uh but take a look for that um well, I'm gonna get a Patreon. I'm gonna get a link here. If you're interested in checking that out, that's this is here. Um, 
All right, what else we got to talk about? The Harbor Master program. Um, we haven't plugged this in a while, but if you didn't know, we have a full Harbor Master program rewards program where uh, we have a page where you can go and sign up um, and say, hey, I want to be a Harbor Master and I'm going to run games. And then we have a, a calendar uh, that you can submit your games to and say, um, I'm going to, anytime you run a public game, that can't be a game that's like in your house for your friends, it has to be a place where that people of the public can come to. They can see the calendar and be like, oh, hey, I live near Colorado Springs or near, like I live in, in the Valley in Los Angeles. Like I live near there. I go to Geeky Tees and I can go and participate in that game. And you get credit for those games and you can order this free swag from us that we are still developing, but we're actively Luke's making the graphics for it this month and we'll be ordering those parts, but it's like um, stickers and pencils and notepads that are all have the, our swag on it. Special uh, bookmarks. Um, there's going to be um, access to Harbor master t-shirts like this. And what's the other really cool ones? A um, bunch of buttons and pins. And then the highest level one is uh, going to be a Harbor master coin D2 coin. That's big and thick and got some hefty to it. And they're, they're all going to be free. Um, and, uh, uh, pending shipping, but you can get that all through our web store and we'll have access from your emails from the Harbor master and we'll, we'll credit you the games as you play them. Um, and running games at conventions totally counts. So anybody who comes to origins, Gen Con, game hole con packs, uh, unplugged, um, Necronomicon when we go there or any other con, even that, that we're not at, but any of those I organize and we run those games count towards your credit, uh, towards, um, the Harbor Master program for you to get cool stuff. And that stuff is only available through that way. You can't like go to the booth and buy it. Um, so yeah, so that's our Harbor Master program. Um, and let me see. Harbor Master Limithron. No, I'll drop a... Here's a link for that if you're interested. Um, and if you're running a weekly public game anyways, like sign up. Might as well get some cool stuff. Welcome Pack comes with like some posters and... Um, some collectibles. So we'll, we'll be having more info about that real soon. Um, like the physical products. Uh, I've just talked about the conventions, uh, for this year, but we're going to, uh, origins in Columbus is our next one in early June. Uh, we got about 20 events of pirate Borg being run there, um, which will be great. I'll of course be there. And uh, a bunch of our crew will be there. Luke will not be there. Unfortunately though, Oh, uh, Steve, the welcome pack is like, it comes with a couple of posters. Um, let me look at the exact thing so I don't, so that you can like put a poster up in your local game store that says like Pirate Borg is played here. Like here's the contact information, um, stuff like that. So um, let me find the other, I don't have it up. There's two posters. And then I think that it comes with um, pencils and... I think the bookmarks is in the next one. Um, some stickers, but it's just like the the posters is part of that's the welcome pack is if you run one game and you have that registered, then you can get all that stuff. Um, some giveaways for your players and things. Um, yeah, so we we're at Origins and then uh, Gen Con, of course, is our biggest one uh, in Indianapolis in early August. Uh, we've got a booth there, but we're running 70 games of Pirate Borg, 7-0. Um, we've got about 15 Pirate Borg GMs, um, Harbor Masters that are all running there. And we got some cool news from uh, Gen Con events. They're like looking to stick us in a special event space because we are running so many games uh, full time. So we're very excited for that. We're, I'm Last year we ran 32 games of Pirate Borg and they were 98% sold out. Like I think they were actually 100% sold out, but that was like our fill rate um, was very high. So we were like, well, let's let's just go as high as we possibly can. Um, so if you're going to be at Gen Con, definitely look to sign up for those games. We also intentionally left room for people to be able to do walk-ups to add. We only put seven people at each table so that we could add an eighth person at table. So if you want a special hookup, just come talk to me at the booth. But if you want to run Pyro War games, we will add more games gladly too. Um, and we can get free badges to people who run four or more games. 
um, like you run one game a day or something like that. So um, even if you already have a badge and then you want to come run games, then we can give you a badge and you can get reimbursed and stuff. So, um, so yeah, so that there's Gen Con and we'll be at game hole con in um, Madison, Wisconsin. And I think it's in October. Um, Free league runs a bunch of games there and we'll run it through their system. Um, but we'll have a booth just like last time. Very cool con, very RPG focused, um, which is great. And then we'll be back at PAX Unplugged for the third time uh, again and running as many games as I can get GMs for. I think last this last year we ran 40 games, I think, give or take. We had four tables running full time. Um and they were all sold out. You know, I mean that that convention, they were, the events are free, but the, every table was full the whole time, um, which is cool. Uh, I'm a, a assistant director in film and television. Is my was my previous career or like day job? I don't know. They're still on strike, so whatever. Uh, so I enjoy organizing these and, and coordinating them. So we try and make them as best for the GMs and for the players and smooth as as possible. Um, so if you're interested, hit me up. We'd love to have you. Um, all right, more news. Then we keep going through it. I'm going to blow through all this news in five minutes. Keep you entertained. Uh, we're talking about doing a West Marches campaign. Um, and when I say talking about, it, I mean, it's going to happen. Um, for those of you who, are, who aren't familiar with the West Marches campaign, the idea of that is that the players get together and they say, we want to run a game. We want to play in a game Tuesday at 5 p.m. They pick the time and we want to go to this location and check it out and then they find a gm who does that for them like the players organize themselves of when they want to play and the world is a shared world like so the gm then goes okay where do you guys want to go okay great but if they go to that temple and they only get halfway through and then they leave the next group of players could be an entirely different group of players could be some of the same players you know they find and they get together like we want to play on friday night you know, or Friday afternoon and they play with the same GM or a different GM, but they can go then and, and continue that exploration that the other group started. So we're, what we're talking about doing is doing a shared dark Caribbean world that runs like probably three months and every week more events of the dark Caribbean calendar take place and players can sign up and sign when they want to play. And we're going to get, you know, five to 10 GMs who want to run in this world. But at the end of the sessions, the GMs will report the major things that happened. Like, oh, we sacked Port Royal and set it on fire. And now half the town burnt down. Well, then that will be a shared event that all other GMs make true for their players. Or we killed Blackbeard. Um, you know, so then it would be like in the news, like, oh, you heard in the tavern that Blackbeard has been slain. Um, by a group of rogue pirates and you can split up to your other groups or play multiple times or uh, players can come and grow go it's no set group it's no set number of like i'm playing with the same five people every week at tuesday um like that could happen but it's probably going to be an online um campaign so the idea is that you can play as often as you want and whenever you whenever you want and the gms will sort of fill the time slots but the shared narrative makes it more like um, a modern tabletop version of a MMO, like a massive online player role playing game. Um, so that you can share the events that take place that if somebody goes and and does a major event, takes over or, or defeats the Spanish altogether, like that's now a thing that everybody else has to deal with as well. Um, so we're working out the details of that and we were interested in GMs who would like to run um, for that. Um, we'll we'll have some cool prizes and stuff for people. So it's probably going to be a three month thing that we'll do after our content jam, which I'll talk about here in a second. Um, and you can play in that as much as you want, um, and or you can play as little as you want. But the GMs will be on that running it. Um, Steve asks, how does the narrative get shared? Okay, so. In a West Marches campaign, the narrative is entirely created by what the players choose to do, um, where they choose to go and where the, what they choose to interact with. Um, so there isn't a narrative in terms of like 
Blackbeard is going to start here and he's going to go there and, and blow this up and then kill these people and then steal the treasure and, and go there and the players can interact with it. It'll be more like the players decide to go hunt down some people and they accidentally run into Blackbeard and this happens and that happens. So, but what narrative they do do will be shared using um, a program called Legend Keeper, which I would show you if I have access to it, but I don't. Um, uh, Legend Keeper is like a map based note taking system. So we'll have a public facing one where players can like sort of see what's known about the world and like, oh, what's this island over here? And they open it up and it has a description from the Dark Caribbean book that's being written. But also we'll have a private section that only the GMs can see that says like these these are the things that have transpired here. Or here are the things of, of note that have happened in the world. Um, and I won't run any games, but I'll be overseeing all of those things. And I'll post like a weekly newsletter, um, like a message in a bottle sort of thing that so that like these things are known to all people in the world. Like if you go to the tavern, you've heard that the Spanish treasure galleon has been sunk off the you know, coast of Cuba and uh, and people are flocking to go try and recover that treasure. Maybe that's an event that somebody did last week, and maybe it's in a world event that's just like is being triggered by the timeline. Um, yeah, so um, we'll have the details more fleshed out, and I'll have good meetings with the GMs that are going to be running in it. But really, it's sort of a less is more situation that's like you play, and we'll have a, it's just all going to be like bullet points, and then I'll share that out to the world. Um, both player facing and GM facing, and then sort of work it there. So you have this dynamic shared world experience that when you hear the news, you'll be like, oh, I did that last week. That's me. They're talking about me, you know, but now this week you're playing with somebody totally different, uh, both either GM wise or player wise um, from there. So that's our West Marshes campaign. It'll be a whole published thing, you know, like a publicized thing. Um, and that'll be coming up in the coming months that'll be probably that'll be late summer mid to late summer start um so we have this content jam we're going to do that first excuse me and luke has uh the the fine details of this i know he's excited to talk about it but the broad strokes are for those of you who have never heard of uh a an uh itch.io jam there's this website called itch.io um that's good for people making and sharing content um, on it. And we're going to do what's called a jam where we say, Hey, we want to, we want people to make, we're going to sponsor a contest to make pirate board content. And it can be adventures. It can be character classes. It can be NPCs. Um, anything else that you want to make, um, Morkborg did the same thing and was very good at, uh, like sort of sponsoring that content to, to start. And they made, you know, for those of you who have heard of it, Feratory and Heretic were these content. Sorry, my my green screen thing doesn't like this. But these content-based things that these are all user-based content that they ended up taking and and illustrating. What we're talking about doing is we won't illustrate it. Um, that'll all be up to, to you guys. But we are talking about making a four-cost printable book at the end with, with all the contest winners um, in that. That will be available. Like, the whole thing will be available for free and free download, but then people can also buy it from uh, an on-demand printer just for cost. No one's making a profit off of it um, of all the best winners. And we have a panel of judges, which will be announced uh, that will judge for each category. Um, Luke tried to pick the people who knew pirate board content the best. And Luke has and is working on a, a pirate board design. Um, oh, there's a, booklet I, I can't remember what the uh what the technical term for it is called um let me look it up here uh primer i think it's called a primer that's like oh this is the type of font roughly or design face and this is how you write it in 5e but this is how you'd write the same thing in pirate borg to help people get an idea of how it's written because like early on we had people submit some stuff like hey what do you think about this as adventure and we're like, oh, this isn't written in the Pyroborg way at all. Like, it's so dramatically different. Um, not that it wasn't cool or it wasn't written well, because uh, it, it was, but it wasn't the way that Pyroborg was was written. Um, 
So we are going to be announcing all this really soon, other than what I just did. But you guys get the first sort of sneak peek um, about that. <laughs> that's a lot of cons. What about the pros, says Brett. Um, I mean, that's not in this chat, but I think assume he's over here. Um, so, yeah, so that's that. That's our content jam um, that's happening soon uh I, basically we're talking about it now and we'll be announcing it officially just as soon as luke can get all the pieces together you know in the next week or two and i think it's going to start on the first of next month and it will run for a month so people have we want to give people as much time as they can to write a single page spread and get artwork for it or if they want um or they can you know take two months and write a full adventure Luke will have a list of content guides of like the adventures need to be a minimum of this many pages, maximum of this many pages, um, so on and so forth, so that we can have like guidelines to to rough it in. And we really just want people to make cool stuff, you know, and and get the community going and share these great ideas. We'll have a Discord channel um, specifically dedicated to this, people sharing ideas and talking about it. And there's a significant cash prize on the line. I, I don't want to say too much. I'll let luke um get into that limit the round himself but you know there's there's four figures being offered you know uh out there so we're we we really want to inspire people to to put some some good effort and, and time into it um and there'll be multiple runners up for each category and stuff and we'll take all that uh you know and, and take the winners of that and um mm -hmm publish it for the public no not not for us directly but um but allow anyone who wants to order it um from there um yeah content jam yeah um oh that's i see this is the, i'm reading sorry i'm reading the discord on my right screen and they're asking about it um lim okay so steve you, you asked from the discord limitrons compatibility with pyre yeah pyreborg design primer yeah yeah, that's exactly right. That's a couple page document that shows like how to make compatible products with Pirate Board. Now, you can make whatever you want. That's like our golden rule, right? But if you want it to fit into, like if you wanted it to fit in the pages of a Pirate Board book or a Pirate Board adventure, um, you, this is how, this is how we would recommend to do it. Um, and Luke never really does anything like, halfway so it's not just like a google doc with just like a little like rules like he's it's his own piece of art that he's laying out so everybody understands what it is all right uh treb asks um is this tyler oh well anyways is there a limit for submissions for the content jam like can we submit one pay one per category or just one submission or just one submission period. Oh, good question. I, I don't think there's any limit at all. Um, don't quote me on this, but I believe you can submit to every category as many times as you want. Um, just know you'll eventually be competing against yourself in that regard. Uh, you know, if it's all great, but that's fantastic. We, we just, we want great PowerPoint content. And we want to share that with other people. Um, I will tell you there's going to be a physical participation prize per participant. Um, we're gonna we're gonna mail everybody who who participates in it um, something. So that's not per submission, but that'll be like if you submit five things, you'll get this this prize. If you submit one thing, you'll get this prize. If you worked on multiple things, the only limitation is that like if you had five people work on a project, we're only gonna send out three. Um, to it just to have some sort of limit, but you could work on multiple projects, you know, and make sure it goes from there. So, um, we really want it to be a, a community builder and like sharing of ideas and yes, there's cash prizes on the line. Um, but we, we you know, in our perfect world, we're in, we end up with like 200 pieces of amazing content that everybody wants and, and put together, but we'll, we'll focus on the content winners for the book. Um, to the on-demand printing book that everybody has access to. And, and I, we'll probably end up ordering, you know, a bunch for ourselves so we can sell those books at conventions. Again, all just for at cost, um, not for profit, anything, but just to allow people to like, who aren't on the stream or aren't on the discord, who don't even know that it exists. They're like, oh, we have this fan made thing. It's really incredible. Um, 
I think the other like limitation is we probably won't, and this isn't a hard, hard rule, but I, there'll probably be only one winner per map. Like if everybody chooses, like I want to make a map off of the, um, I can't think of a single one right now. The, the galleon, you know, map. I, I really love that map and I want to make an adventure for that. We, and even if there was like five amazing adventures for that map and the unlikely thing, we would only pick like one of those adventures, but honestly, that'll be up to the judges too. Like, we, we want to make a book that is like great for everybody um, and not like, oh, if you're not into this galleon map or if you've already used it, like you're out of luck. Here's five adventures for it. Uh, that's kind of obvious. Um, but that's the only only real deal. But yeah, cash prizes. Uh, grant, there'll be a grand prize winner. There'll be um, several um, runner up, probably two runners up per category um, as well. Um, so it will be a you know, there's be several categories. You submit in mo multiple places. You're going to be able to to pay for your time, you know, or, or you know, get get a little cash prizes in there. Um, yeah. Okay, that's my list. Um, hit me with some questions. Um, Luke's Luke, if you're just joining us, uh, Luke, aka Limithron, is out viewing the eclipse. I can see that the sunlight streaming through my room right here, but I'm in California, so it comes a little later. Um, so, uh, yeah, I um, want to know if you guys – I want to hear what your guys' favorite adventures are too, that like when you get a new group or you run for a group, which adventure did you enjoy running um, the most or have some favorite parts from it? Um for the Discord people chatting, I'm pretty sure we'll save this chat and upload it to YouTube later so you can watch this later. Um, thanks for keeping them posted over there in the Discord. Aaron, set away from the clips. Uh, oh, where do we get more info on the contest? Uh, great question, Aaron. We're going to post official rules with like mock-ups and the design primer probably next week um, with the exact details of all that. Uh, Luke wrote it over the weekend and him and I had a nice meeting about it this morning and it looks really great. He just wants to make the design primer finished and, and get that all done. Um, so in, I would say look out for it next week, but no, it's going to start submission opens, uh, May 1st and goes to the end of the month. So you'll have the whole month to go from there and then we'll, you know, spend the next week or so, um, or if we haven't already like judging it from there, um, but again, it's adventures, character classes. Um, it, there's a category for anything you want. Like, you know, I want to make a spread on this. Uh, I think best monster is one of them too, <clears throat> slash enemy. Um, I The current b design ethos is though that we aren't going to do any artwork for it. Like this is entirely fan made. So if you're only a writer and you need an artist, you know, hook up with other people in the community or vice versa. You're like, I really want to draw something, you know, hook up with another member of the community. You can always go to, you know, easy places like Fiverr and and give them the design primer, show them darkest dungeon art. Be like, hey, I need this style artwork, but of a, you know, 16 legged mollusk, you know, and all that jazz. Um, yes, the live stream should be available later. We'll upload it to Discord. Um, I'm sorry to to YouTube, uh, so this live stream will, will will be up there one way or another. The that'll happen, yeah. Um, also, if you haven't already, please take a moment now to like this video and subscribe to our channel. Uh, it really helps a, a small channel like this uh, grow. And the we don't like plugging ourselves, but really people enjoy seeing the content, which is very awesome. So the more you like it and subscribe to it, the more the algorithm shows it to more people who like the things that, that you like and that you watch and stuff. So, um, so yeah, do that, please. We'll, we'll help us out. Um, all right. Other questions. Eldritch history says Cathagon was great. My players summoned a Kraken to deal with the elder evil. Yeah. Uh, I'm not surprised that with a person who's Elders history is your name that Cathagon is your favorite. That's awesome. I love that adventure. Double-sided poster map. Uh, is really, really great. Um, oh, great. You're uh, sweet. Uh, cool. Steve, 
I got you in both places now. Love it. Um, I but it's cool meeting people in person. Uh, you know, when you do events and stuff, I'm like, oh, I talk to you almost every day in the Discord. Like, uh, nice to meet you. Yeah, that's that's awesome. Um, yeah. No, don't do Steve. You're great. Your questions are great. Um, anybody seen the eclipse so far? I'd love to hear in chat if uh, if you've seen it with sunglasses or you did one of those those boxes where you can look at it. Let me let me glance out my window. It just looks like a burning ball of fire to me, and now I can't see anything because I'm stupid. Um, but yeah. Again, welcome to the chat. We're taking a, a quick, well, uh, a medium-sized intermission here for the eclipse that Luke has gone out to take a look. Um, oh, it's getting darker there in South Carolina. Cool. Maybe it's, it probably just hasn't hit me yet. Well, let me look. What time is the eclipse in California? 10.30 a.m.? Oh, so, yeah, it should be going right now. It's only a partial here, though. It's only like 48%. Pardon me, Alan, you got the eclipse glasses? That's great. I remember first doing that as a child, you know, going out to the playground. Yeah. What else, chat? Who who else has run some, any 5E? Anybody running Pyroborg in 5E, like the pirate setting, uh, using the Pyroborg book, but in Dungeons and Dragons? I'd love to hear about anything that you're doing there. Or I know that a lot of people do like they have a full D and D campaign, but then they get on a ship and they go somewhere and they need a book that has content for that. I know a lot of people use the pirate board book for that. Love to hear about it. Um, yeah. What else can I tell you about? Let me check the last release on Patreon. We just released the coral reef, uh, kit. I'd show you pictures if I had control, but I do not. Um, but it's over on patreon.com slash limitron. Um, we just released the the Coral Reef asset kit and maps. There's like 19 different maps. They're basically like four different key variations, but then a bunch of like some that are glowing, some at night, some dark, some that are haunted. Um, but the kit comes with a ridiculous amount of, of coral, rocks, uh, leaves, and all that jazz. So you can build your own stuff. What up? What, what up? How's the eclipse? I have multiple black eclipse dots in my eyes now. <laughs> nice. Did you put on glasses? You have special glasses? I put on two pairs of my own sunglasses. <laughs> there you go. And then I looked through a hole in my hat. Did that work? Uh, yeah. I mean, it was cool. It was cool. Yeah. It was yeah. not as cool as I had hoped, but. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Sorry. Okay. I didn't mean to interrupt. No, you're good. Uh, Harley says you, they that they made their own setting and I'm running a campaign. Um, she, they'd share details, but Eldritch history, one of the other people in chat is one of their players. So can't do oh, that. Oh yeah. You don't want nice. to spoil. Yeah. 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 Nice. Uh, yeah. Luke, we talked about the dark Caribbean beta foundry module, the Harbor master program, what convention was running this year, the West marches campaign. And I talked about the content jam. Uh, I didn't reveal any, um, any prize oh, money cool. amounts, but I did uh, tell them. Okay, all about yeah, we'll the get jam. into that here. Or I think we're gonna save that for, uh, for a little later. Cool. Hi, B. Oh, hey, it's B. Thanks, babe. Uh, Luke, we, we did promise people that when you came back, we would share some more NPCs. Oh, okay. Let's Will you get that. into drawing? Let me. I, I I realize with the skull thing that there's a piece from Gabriel Hernandez in. The Dark of Hot Springs Island that I really want to look at. And I'm going to see if I can find it real quick. By the way, if you haven't seen this book, you should get this book. Very cool book. He does cool, like, oh, maybe like this kind of stuff. Skulls. Hmm. I don't, I don't actually know what piece I'm thinking of. Yeah, whatever. Okay, so yeah, let's go talk about some NPCs. Are oh, yeah, there... I'm excited for this. 
Thanks for sticking with us too and hanging out with me. I hope I wasn't too boring. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure you weren't boring. You're at 29 people. The drop off was not very, not that bad. Yeah, some people have come and gone. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So <clears throat> let's start at the beginning. Um. <laughs> uh, okay. So this is this the this is released on the Patreon. This is the faction t- chart. I I think I might re I've, I've already redone it once. I might redo it again to get c- the Mazoans on here mm. and the and the Atlanteans, but I kind of feel like they're like late. They're more like kind of late campaign. And the reality is that in my mind, they don't have a relationship with these factions, so they don't need to be on this chart because it would all say no relation like yeah they don't know him yet then and that is for you to discover whereas clearly pirate scum i like this parlay plunder pilfer pillage pester pardon us because later in the campaign uh woods rogers shows up in nassau and offers a full pardon to all the pirates which is from history okay so i haven't done any of the spreads yet this is all this is all temp um but these are the just faction kind of, pages, right? Yeah, the, each each faction has a spread like this, and it'll have a, a, a six thing timeline and jobs to do. And we're working on a system called Renown, where it's basically, basically like the parties level, and it'll go from one to ten. Um, and I think the idea is going to be this thing that I I found in uh, Pound of Flesh from Mothership, where you there are is a d10 job list but you add your renown and the table actually has 20 entries um so you can't get to the top jobs until you are higher renown um i need to take my puppy out i'll be back in a few minutes okay um so that's kind of the gist of of what i'm going for here we're gonna have you know obviously the important things what they want uh, all the things so that you can run the faction in a very, what's the word, control panel style layout. This is not, this is just placeholders for myself, for my writing. Okay, so here are the first of the 12 um, pirates, Brethren of the Coast. Um, kind of zoom in here. We've got Blackbeard. Uh, I think all 12 of, all six of these are real pirates from history. This is Blackbeard. Uh, spoiler, like I said before, he... Uh, is a pirate necromancer. Um, this is Caesar, his real life first mate, who the rumors in history are that he wasn't actually an African king. Um, so especially with the absence of slavery in this setting, we've really doubled down on that he was in fact a powerful African king. And his timeline will start as Blackbeard's first mate, but then he'll become the captain of his own ship uh, and that kind of thing. <clears throat> Um, then we have Steed Bonnet, who in my uh, Dark Caribbean playtest campaign, oops, sorry, uh, got murdered in like the second session and they took the revenge, his ship. Uh, okay, they have these taglines, aristocrat turned pirate. Um, I, In my mind, he's a lot like the Steed Bonnet from Our Flight Means Death, maybe a little bit more smart. I think I'm actually going to have his timeline evolve into him learning Arcana from uh all his reading and readings and maybe that's kind of maybe he helps inform blackbeard's magic i'm not quite sure yet um here we have uh the princess of the queen of thieves and bonnie who in the dark caribbean is going to be a young irish red-haired i think a egret from game of thrones um and she is a badass in my campaign she uh well and and written in in the her to her npc she kind of runs the red lantern district of tortuga but is also a pretty formidable foe uh and of course they're they have this real life love triangle her calico jack and i'm calling mary reed red mary um i i like to think of red mary as kind of um xena warrior princess uh what do i say i think i, I think i took some notes down here Proud, strong, stubborn, loosely lawless, and Xena Warrior Princess Starbuck. You know, maybe a little sassy, and she carries the blunderbuss, and she will blow you up. Oh, thieves. <laughs> Classic Alan. Killing it. I haven't even written this yet, and we're already spell-checking it. And then Calico Jack is, uh, you know, he actually wasn't a very good pirate um, historically. 
but he was considered a very fancy kind of dandy, if you will, character. And so he's going to have very vibrant clothing and, you know, care about his appearance. And, um, yeah, but I also, I also like the idea that he's maybe played by, what did I say here? Vain, clever, proper King's English, Guy Pierce and Count of Monte Cristo, 100%. And Basil Rathbone and Sherlock Holmes. I like him to be like a little sly, you know? Okay, moving on to spread number two of the pirates. And I haven't done, I don't know what I'm going to do for the backgrounds if I'm going to make them all these, like, a lot of these are just temporary backgrounds. Well, I haven't figured that out yet. I don't know if I want them to be all the same color palette or not. Horn of Gold, cool another real, they are. Yeah. Uh, Horn of Gold, another real life pirate. Um, he was actually, Blackbeard was on his ship before he became, uh, you know, he kind of ends up leaving the brethren and going a little bit more privateer for the English and hunting down pirates. So he's going to be like the betrayer of the brethren, but also like the old wise guy. I don't know if I have notes for him yet. No, I don't have notes. A lot of this is just placeholder. Uh, Bloody Vein, I use him a lot in my campaign. Um, He is a blood cultist, actual crazy maniacal pirate in real life. And they're, you know, Going right along with that in the Dark Caribbean, he is a crazy dude, uh, murderous, and all his dude, all his followers are, you know, blood cultists. <clears throat> yeah, Calico Jack is Jack Rackham, yes. Uh, Mad Jeffries is a new NPC um, inspired by a friend of mine who I'm not going to say who because I don't want her to find out about this yet because I haven't told her. I, my my goal is to have her find it in print, but I think she's actually going to help with some stuff, so I think she's going to find it, whatever. She'll see it she's ahead a, of time. Yeah, kind of a uh, like voodoo, uh, or not voodoo, a sorcery-inspired. Um, she's a sorcerer class. I can see she has a bone knife instead of a metal knife and some magic stuff. Um, Black Bart is the actual real-life inspiration for... Bartholomew, or for uh, the Dread Pirate Roberts in Princess Bride. But his real name was Bartholomew Roberts, and he's actually the most successful pirate on record. He took over 400 prizes in his career. Uh, so in my campaign, I had I played him like Wesley from Princess Bride, but very, you know, very well-dressed, but also very respected. His men really look up to him. He's a good, a good guy. Uh, he's probably like neutral good or lawful good, but lawful good to the pirate code, you know. Um, then these two also real. So I guess all but one of the brethren are from rea from real history. Sam Bellamy, who is actually the first NPC I drew, uh, also a very successful pirate. Uh, Black Sam was his nickname. And there's a rumor that he had this relationship with this lady up in New England who was uh, rumored to be a witch. Of course, in the Dark Caribbean, she is a full-blown witch. She's the witch of Wellfleet. The two of them usually tag along together and cause problems. Any questions yet, Tyler? No. In fact, chat was just raving about how cool this is, and you're doing a great job. Um, are you making that up? Yes, they didn't actually say anything. Yeah. <laughs> They're like, uh, we're going on with our day. We don't care about this anymore. I mean, okay. I imagine the 25 people are doing other things and just like listening and like, glancing and watching, which is cool. Well, also, and also this, will get, this will get uploaded. So, okay, so this page is empty. It's not done at all. Um, the British are divided in... Uh, all of the European factions are divided into two factions, the main faction and then a sub-faction. So the British, we have um, the kind of uh, naval genius, Admiral Fairfax. Um, I, for, I don't really know if I have a backstory for her yet, but her name is Charlotte Fairfax, and she is a badass. Uh, then Lord Hamilton is another, uh, another real-life person uh, figure he was the governor of uh port royal and in dark caribbean he is the same except he's very you know twisted maniacal evil uh kind of guy <clears throat> um then woods rogers also another real life npc he had a real life scar in his face he basically traveled the world a bunch before he got assigned to nasa to like deal with the pirate rebellion and his solution was to pardon them all which uh actually worked it was the end of the age of piracy in reality so that's going to be part of his arc in the Dark Caribbean. Uh, whether that actually happens in your campaign or not is up to you. Um, then moving on, instead of the East India Company, we have the West India Company. And I really like this faction because it's it's led by this leader, currently unnamed, kind of the smart 
you know, I, he is like the East and in, East India Company leader in uh, Charles Beckett in the in the Pirates of the Caribbean movies. S maybe smarmy, overly smart. Um, I think in my, uh, my inspiration for him was, um, oh, what's that actor's name? Sidney Portier, yeah, as Mister yeah. Tibbs or or Guy Fring in Breaking Bad. Perfect. Uh, you know, he can very smart, but very calm and collected. Right. Oh, you mean Gus Fring? What did I say? Guy Fring. Yeah, Gus Fring. Yeah. Gus Fring. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Then the big hook for the West India Company is that they uh, have taken ash and they have found ways to mass or to market it and repurpose it and they use these chemists to kind of bake it down and make all kinds of cosmetics and like you know uh, uh, tonics that they can give to soldiers that make them fight longer than they would normally um, of course it has long-term reper repercussions but yeah um, and then one of my favorites is Oshtish. This is another real life character that we have moved back in time. Um, Osh, there's actually photos of Oshtish. She was, I think she lived till like the, you know, maybe the early 1900s, but late 1800s. Um, but she is a Bade, I believe that's how you say it, um, which is a two spirited uh, person from the Crow tribe, um, which means that she was assigned male at birth. Um, but the tribe recognized her as uh, as a woman, which I think is a very cool thing to work in a historic figure for a, a thing yeah. that actually kind of got pushed out of crow culture. Um, but we're putting it in this book because hell yeah. Also, her name literally means finds them and kills them all. She <laughs> she she is basically. I mean, this is a real real person. So she's basically the like, uh, you know go-getter headhunter for the West India Company. I like to think of her as a mix. If you've seen Prey, she's a mix of a predator and of the, the Native American character in that movie. She's so, name. she's really badass in that. Naru, yeah. So it's like, if you if you need a pirate killed or you need some un, a particular undead taken out, call Ashtish and she'll get the job done. I also love like that, I mean, you said it, but that person's historical. So like if anyone... It, there's always this sensitivity about natives. It's like these are real people. Like we're they're like they're so badass. Yeah, yeah. I just oh, I've just kind of decided that I'm gonna just follow my own. All I can do is follow my own compass, my own moral compass when it comes to, you know, including natives and um, yeah, topics like slavery. I, you know, I know some people don't are ne you're never gonna make everybody happy, and I'm just doing what I feel right with. So that's why there's no slavery in the setting, but there are natives. So huzzah. Okay, so on to the French faction. Um, I actually made a tweak here because this the father here wasn't originally part of this faction, but you'll see why in a second. Um, Count LeBlanc, a real governor of the French Caribbean. Uh, he's exactly like he looks. I, he's like the Grand Moff Tarkin French, very pompous, uh, smug um, aristocrat. And, you know, the vibe of the French in the dark Caribbean is very much... Um, you know, the Palace of Versailles, like de, like you know, royal debauchery, and the, like all the things that led to real French Revolution, where they're spending all this crazy money in the palaces and then not in on the people who need food. Um, yeah. I like this character, the Madam. I like the idea that she's like a little older. Did I give RP influences for her yet? We talked about her on the thing. I don't have them written down. I'm, I'm thinking like, oh man, I think who was saying these maybe well you know kind of classic uh larger smarmy entitled but very manipulative uh aristocrat but she always wears this mask and you don't know why she always wears this mask and i you know i think there's some ash undead eye kind of things going on underneath Ooh, it Ooh, i like yeah. that uh and then this father i think he's a little bit more um a little bit more. I mean, I actually I just watched Man in the Iron Mask, and I, I think he's kind of like the the character played by Jeremy Irons, the one who's like, he's the priest that works for the king, but he's secretly the leader of the Jesuits. That kind of thing. It's it's that mixed with like he's, you know, he's the religious um, stronghold that the players can interact with. Maybe a connection to the next faction, which is the Endgame Society, which I think I started working on the 
page here. So the End Game Society is a sub faction of the French. They are the covert um, guild of assassins and thieves that are for hire for that kind of work. But they are also plotting for a long term or short term maybe rebellion to overthrow the the French monarchy. Um, so you've got this the exterminator. I like to think of him. Oh, it's it's actually a real another real life character who I've kind of pushed into this. A real famous privateer called uh, Daniel Montbars, whose nickname was the Exterminator. I've pushed him a little bit further to being an assassin um, than than just a pi privateer. Uh, but we've taken in this thing from Victor Hughes. He's going to have a guillotine on his ship. So That's so cool. Around. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's going to be really. Cool. I love that. Like you uh, really did that. Like yeah, from France. Yeah, Mont brought it all Montbars the way over didn't. France. Montbars didn't do it, but the, he does in this setting. Yeah, yeah. Um, then mean, we have the. Did, yeah. uh, I don't know the queens yet. But she's called the queen because these in the end game society, all the ranks are based off chess pieces, and there could be multiple rooks and and queens and whatnot. But she's kind of like a high level operative um, who operates out of um, Porta Pa. No, what's it called? Can't remember the name of it. I'm drawing a blank. The the main city that we have in in uh, like modern day Haiti in Hispaniola, hmm. um, and then one of my favorites is Count D'Artagnan. D'Artagnan, he is the son of the musketeer, uh, both of which were real life people. But I've brought him over from France Ooh. to the Caribbean because the Caribbean is a much more vibrant and rich place in the dark Caribbean than it was in history. Uh, and he is the the end game king, meaning that he plays his role in French society as an aristocrat, but is very much, uh, f you know, the fueling the the uh, operations of the end game society behind the scenes. Makes nice. sense. Okay, now we're moving on to the vice royalty of New Spain. Uh, here, are the core leaders. We've got the currently unnamed, uh, you know. Gun toting conquistador and full conquistador plate. He is going to hunt down anybody who's messing with the Spanish. Um, and then Governor Torres, Governor of Havana, and overall governor of the um, uh, Spanish Caribbean, and also another real life character. Then I also, uh, kind of inspired by Monkey Island, we've got uh, the deadliest blade on earth, Maria Zara, who. Uh, also, not a real person, but uh, inspired by the, we we have decided that she's the daughter of a real life Spanish woman who was uh, burned for witchcraft, and her her arc is infiltrating the Spanish hierarchy, but then avenging her her um, grandmother, and also probably learning some uh, sorcerously sorceress witchy powers along the way. <clears throat> nice. Yeah. How many of these have you not seen, Tyler? Uh, only a couple. Oh, because I, I sent you the ones that I didn't post yet. Yeah. But okay, I mean, so I'm, this is you know, this yeah. is the sub... This one's not really... It's more like, and rather than a sub-faction, it's almost like a super-faction. It's the Inquisition. <laughs> the They're like the whole um, inspiration, or like the whole moving force uh, for the Spanish in the Caribbean. These guys specifically, their home base would be down in Maracaibo, which is a giant dungeon city. Um, yeah, Catherine Zeta Jones and Zorro. That's kind of, that's definitely kind of her vibe, but you know, with witch powers later on in the campaign, right? Um, so the Inquisition, I, I, I like to think that this guy would be played by Javi, Javier Bardem from, uh, old country, no country for old men, or he's, he's, um, Stilgar and Dune. Um, but he's the very like powerful cult leader, and oh, also Jeremy Irons in uh, the bourgeois. The, was it the the Borgias? Yeah, Borgias. Yeah, which is anybody who's seen that show, <clears throat> it like paints such a vivid picture. Yeah, powerful, oh, been, strong yeah. cult leader. This is the assassin, unnamed, uh, very much inspired by the the guy who always is flailing himself in Da Vinci Code, uh, but also came from my original mm. Tales from the Caribbean campaign, and that you know a red cloaked assassin shows up hunting for one of the PCs. Well, he's He's from the Inquisition, and he goes out and do. He's like uh, Ashtish, but for the Spanish, or Montbar's the Exterminator, but for the Spanish. And this guy, unnamed librarian, this guy is like uh, does the deep lore research and probably secretly does experiments 
on people who are being held captive in the in Maracaibo, but also the, using ash. Very fester type, right? Yeah. Here's where here's where our Ponce de Leon spread will go, which I don't know if I'm going to bump it down to one page. I don't know. We we could get there. There's a lot to do still. Yeah. The wretched. Uh, these guys, uh, I'm working on this thing where all all members of the uh, wretched that have been indoctrinated, indoctrinated, what's what's the word? Indoctrinated. Indoctrined. Yeah. They are um, they are basically all divided into uh, sects uh, based on constellations, and the uh, key members of those sects get assigned. Um, names based on the stars in the constellation so the leaders of those constellation those those groups are called tempest so tempest hydra and tempest Eridanus, those are constellations and then you know tempest pisces that's another constellation this is a constellation uh that mostly involves deep ones um this faction is like the very culty but also sea magic faction and they have have a working relationship with deep ones so uh, maybe his whole sect is all deep ones nice. and then novice vela and cetus men menkar i still gotta work on it because those are two stars which doesn't really make sense so maybe it should just be one but basically they are like members of different those are stars they're members you know they're just cool names just a cool way to like not give them normal names you know yeah uh steve says that the the red cloak might be a good name for the previous yeah 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 i don't know he probably has a real name i I don't think that he's like you know i think it's kind of like a um the wolf in in uh is it the wolf is that his name in pulp fiction he's like yeah don't you worry i'm calling in the wolf and he's like shows up and you know like they know who he is but they only call him when they got a big job you know yeah he gets paid in like full gold full gold bars or something well, you know? yeah yeah i only accept gold bricks yeah he's kind of you know yeah so mm-hmm. that's the um the wretched a very lovecraftian cult this guy uh cetus menkar is inspired by the fisherman from the, that book by john langan i think incredible book very dark caribbean the fisherman john yeah langan uh, it's a, basically a story inside a story, but man, does it get dark Caribbean esque. Mm-hmm. Um, <clears throat> okay. Uh, and then Ponce de Leon. This is, I don't know how I'm going to do the layout. I, this is actually kind of a problem because I've been sticking to this three per page and I'm moving this one out, uh, but we'll figure it out. Um, Charon, one of my favorites for the that I've drawn. This is just a placeholder, by the way. Uh, yeah, it's coming out. The, yeah. He is, you know, kind of like the bad guy in Buried in Bahamas. He's got 13 skulls and they all speak in unison. And we were joking on the Discord the other day that uh, the um, I like the idea that one of them speaks in a, they all speak the same except for one is always like lagged behind or like he, he's got oh. a little tick. <laughs> yeah. Oh, so what's this? Paul's got a question about the timelines. Okay, so the timelines basically every NPC and major location are going to have a timeline. They're just a timeline of how that character could unfold over time in your campaign. They do not sync. They do not line up with the Dark Caribbean timeline. They're just a guideline for you. Um, And one of the things we're going to have as part of the Kickstarter is there's going to be a um, a player, uh, like a campaign journal that has slots for, for a pay, you know, a five pages for NPCs and the timelines will be in there but they'll be empty so you can write them in as they happen or check off the boxes as they happen or like adapt them for how they you know happen in your campaign for example black coral bay um and in the curse of skeleton point which is in the pirate book pirate borg core book it has this timeline it says if the players do nothing this happens and one of them is that captain davies gets killed and they have awakened his honor well in my campaign i had the players arrive at Black Coral Bay when the second time they were there, they came back and Davies was under attack by that Navy and they decided to intervene and save Davies life. So clearly that timeline that won't match the book. That's the idea though. Um, I really like the idea that these timelines are like you show up. If you show up late in the campaign, maybe an NPC's timeline is already on the third or fourth entry. You know, maybe they've already lost a limb or they've already unlocked a portal to some dimension or who knows, you know, um, 
Yeah, it's designed to be as dynamic as possible and so that you don't have to read almost anything. The idea with this book is like, you, you know, the more you read, the better. But if you don't read all the NPCs and you get to one, you know, you draw it out of a random deck of cards or something. And you're like, oh, man, this is like late game. I can't like I can't start with this beginning hook. Oh, well, let's just go to the fifth entry, you know. Um, and a lot of them have like the sixth entry will be like how they die. And if uh, your players intervene, hopefully that'll be different. You know, uh, of course, Davy Jones, he was in Pirate Borg, but we're going to include him here, too. He is a dragon turtle. <laughs> yeah, one of my favorite yeah. decisions. OK, so here are the uh, I don't know if this is going to be a faction or what, but this is originally going to be three sirens. Uh, this one was supposed to look on my wife, but I do not have the artistic skill to do her justice. So it ends up looking like whoever this looks like. This is the one on the back of the Pirate Borg cover. Um, this is a more jellyfish inspired. I, I like to think of her as like more of like a, maybe an Arwen or Galadriel type, uh, but maybe more mischievous when she shows up to watch out, you know? And then this one is called the one who sees all she has, uh, dozens of eyeballs hanging from her and they all don't have pupils. Uh, and I like to think of her as the, like those witches in like 300 or like, she's the seer that you can go, you know, the, the, um what's the prophet at delphi what's the the oracle at delphi that kind of greek mythology oh yeah thing. yeah sure yeah yeah uh okay cool and we're getting close here okay so here's one i haven't shown yet this is uh the mazoan faction but this is the boy king and his ghost kotal uh quetzalcoatl um oh I, I didn't see that finished nice yeah, he is the ruler of Mazo. Uh, he's probably like an ad adolescent, early teenager. Um, but he's got this, uh, you know, ghost of a Quetzalcoatl that he can cause problems with. <laughs> uh, and then this That's is sweet. the queen of Mazo, but I don't know if it's going to be the queen or the princess or maybe his sister, but she's going to be the older, or, you know, maybe, maybe it's, um, um, his mom, I don't know. I can't quite decide what I what I want their relationship to. But she's the you know the wise one that's you know maybe acting in charge while he's off playing mm -hmm. that Aztec ball game. Um, one thing that's cool about this faction is that it's it, it's kind of a like it's kind of like Wakanda meets the European Union of Mesoamerica because the Dark Caribbean has magic and because its history is different than ours, the Olmecs, the Aztecs, and the Mazoans have all survived into this era. Um, but because of the presence of the Scourge earlier in history, they con like conglomerated and built these city-states behind walls in the, in the Dark Caribbean and in Mexico. And they live behind these walls, and it's very much like... Actually, it's kind of like Silo, Tyler. Like, they, they can't... Oh, yeah? Leave. They don't leave. Like, if you leave... It's not, you're not right. allowed to leave. Maybe they send hunting groups out. Or maybe it's like The Last of Us, you know, where they're like not allowed to leave the cities, you know. Yeah, there's curfew and it's enforced. Even though the, the presence of the undead is mostly abated before the beginning of the game, that that's what's going on there. Now, they do send out fishing parties and whatnot, so I guess some people are allowed to leave, just like in Last of Us. Um, but I like the idea that like if your players get here, there's this whole culture going on. But it isn't a culture of... Like we're not erasing the real cultures and replacing them. They're all like they'll be like a like there would in New York. You've got like, you know, Chinatown, like Little Italy. There'll be a mm. part that's the Aztec part, and then there's a part that's the Mayan. And like I like the idea that the queen is Mayan inspired, but that the king has Aztec heritage. Uh, yeah, yeah. So that's kind of the vibe. Well, that's I mean, cool. of course so they have. It's like a melting pot of all. Yeah, it's a melting pot, and it's they have some obviously some visual motifs that go. But clearly the shaman and the queen are are very, well, clearly to me, are very Mayan. And and then the Quetzalcoatl thing is much more Aztec. Um, and, the, and the cultures do seem visually similar to someone from the outside, but when you have studied them, uh, you can tell that there's, uh, you know, I don't want to just like, oh, it's like mixing China and Japan and not just differentiating between the two. Like they, those are yeah. very, very different cultures that have some overlap to people from the other side of the planet you want to do them yeah. surf uh you want to do them service justice. justice yeah yeah yeah. <clears throat> yeah um 
Okay, cool. And then this is the Atlanteans. Uh, also, like this is another one of those factions that I think you could probably do a whole book on. Um, but this and this book is going to have Atlantis in it, but it's not going to go into like crazy detail. It's going to be a cursory overview of like how to go there for a few sessions with a, you know, a big, large map of Atlantis as a city. But like, I think if your players have a way to water breathe, you could probably spend, uh, you know, half a dozen sessions in Atlantis. Or it could be an ongoing character in your campaign, especially if you're going for more of a fantasy vibe. Um, yeah. Of course, I like that the the oh one of the things about Atlantis and the Atlanteans is that there are these veins of cerulean crystal, which, to be honest, I don't know what they do yet, but they're going to be a big part of their motivations as a faction. Mm -hmm. And so she has a scepter made of cerulean crystal. Uh, and then, of course, the the mystic you know wizard character is played by a crab <laughs> uh, with a giant pearlescent eye. Shiny, um, shiny. Yeah, he's definitely going to be a yeah. lot of people singing that at their table from Moana. Right? I, I'm into it. I'm into it. And, and then, of course, uh, I had these guys at the beginning, but I actually thought it made better to move them to the end to kind of build up to them. The Scourge is kind of like the whole uh, catalyst for the setting. Uh, this is less of a faction and more of a uh, just a force, if you will. Uh, but I've I've detailed six major NPC ish. They're not just monsters. Like you can interact with them a bit more than monsters. Uh, and so here they are. So we've got um, one of my favorites. Who probably won't be first when I actually finish laying this out. But this is the ghost, the reincarnated uh, body and ghostly head of. Um, the Lady of the Lake from Arthurian legend. I uh, like the idea that because like the nether world and hell have been cracked back open because of the abyss, she's been spit back out. And what does she want? She wants her head back, of course. I like the idea that she sails around in like very Arthurian boats with uh, you know, whites the whites of the round table, right? I mean, someone has to have done that, but I'm gonna do whites of the round table. Right? Yes. Actually, I don't even know. I don't even know. Or whites of the round table, we tell lots of fables. Wait. Yeah. Whites of the round. I mean, dude, that could be, that's got to be a thing. Let's Google it. Come on, that's so cool. I mean, as a giant night fan. A couple people on Instagram was like, whoa, I didn't see that coming, but that's cool. And I was like, yeah, but you know, like, like in my mind, if you're playing a long Dark Caribbean campaign, there are definitely, uh, Dude, not. Oh wait, I, I wrote whites of the night. <laughs> so that happens when I talk. Whites of the round table. Yeah, the, there's there are a few hits. 2018 whites of the round table. Yeah. Oh, but only two hits on Google. Yeah. So we're gonna nobody steal that, please, because it's going and that's gonna be a thing. It's definitely a thing. Okay. So then here's Admiral Morgan. Um, cool thing. Real real guy. Uh, famous privateer. Uh, basically a pirate, but sailed under the British flag. He was buried in Port Royal, and then his body washed into the sea when the earthquake destroyed Port Royal. I have written a one, two, three shot where your undead pirates working for him, so I'm working that into the game. Basically, he has come back as a ghost after his body's washed into the sea. He's got treasure he wants people to go find. Good stuff, you know. We talked about the flail earlier in the stream. This is the real-life pirate uh, Lolonese. He actually ate hearts in real life, so now he is like the ghoul king, and he tries to eat more hearts to keep, become more corporeal. The more hearts he eats, the more corporeal he is. Nice. This guy's working name right now is the Cambion. He's the pirate on the cover of the of Pirate Borg. He's your classic badass skeleton pirate. What else do you need to know? You know what's the what's Cambion mean? Cambion is a it's like a folklore term. The Cambion. Cambion means uh, it's basically like the devil. Cambion is the offspring between a demon parent, whether incubus, succubus, or other type of demon, and a human parent. But it's also just like I imagine he's like El Cambion, you know, like the, mm. the Spanish just call him that, you know. I'm yeah. not I'm not in love with the name, but that's what the working title is. Uh, then here's one of my favorites from the whole book, which is why I had her on the R stream today because she's got like eclipse. Uh, you know, moon stuff all over her. Uh, this is the Mazoan Lich, who is clearly a huge problem to the Mazoans. That's probably like their main arc, is if you show oh, yeah. up, they sure. don't leave because of this thing. 
who's out. She's got, um, oh, I guess one thing I can talk about is Skeleton City. So there is a, the skeletons in Dark Caribbean, they are sentient and they like are motivated to regather the bones of the living and return them back to the abyss or return them back to this place called Skeleton City, which the humans call Necropolis. Uh, and this place is, it's in modern day Tulum, but they've covered it with bones. So it's like Mayan temples covered with bones. Ooh. And, and she is like the leader of this. She is the, the, un, the lich, the Mazoan lich. Um, yeah, so. That sounds sick. Yeah, I'm pretty. I'm pretty excited for that part of this book. And then, of course, this guy is a, a nod to my good friends at Archon Games. Uh, hi, Petrus and Adam and Charlie. Love Archon. I love Eschaton. I love their lore. And um, I wanted to work in this kind of avatar of the Dark One, who is like kind of a like Netherworld, you know, champion demon who's been spewed out, and he has some kind of boat that goes around and causes chaos. Yeah yeah um yeah so that's that's uh all 54 npcs that's all of them wow we did it boom that was a far more comprehensive review than i was expecting i oh, well awesome. yeah when i started talking i was like oh man now i'm gonna have to talk about all this much detail but it's cool maybe hopefully people get excited you know yeah people seem excited in chat yeah yeah let me know if there's any questions i'm gonna, I'm gonna try to draw more now there we go I mean, it's like I, I could probably go to ink. I don't like there's something about the geometry down here that I don't really like. Like this should be his chest. Like maybe his maybe this is too wide. Let's try this. This is this is what I was talking about where I don't I don't like working on paper because I can't do this kind of thing. Yeah. Like I can just take the I don't know. What are you working on, Tyler? Uh, I'm just getting all my stuff together. Uh, audio edits for upcoming Ship of the Dead episodes. Oh yeah, we got. I, I had a uh, Yo Yohai Gal from Karen on the other day. We talked a long time. It was a great episode. Yeah, the game Karen. Karen, Karen, one syllable. Karen, Karen, Karen. Harley says, "Put a chest on it, a crest on his chest." I was just thinking. I was literally thinking that. Like, what should it be? Is it too, too? I don't want to say reductive, but like, he could have a tree. But I don't know if that makes yeah. sense. Let's go. I'm gonna go look at some conquistador plate. Con -ki Ey says, "What's the best way to get started?" DMing a group for Pirate Borg if I've only ever played as an RPG player. Um, the, the best way to find Pirate Borg players and or a group that you want to run for any of that is to just join our Discord and, you know, drop. A, there's a looking for game Pirate Borg chat room and well, post. I think that's if you're going to play online. Do they want Does yeah. you want to play online or in person? Yeah, we'll, we'll find out in the 18 second delay. Yeah, I feel like my advice would be to just get a group of friends to get it's a really easy game to play my advice would be just get some friends together go through character and creation together and if you have buried in bahamas run that because that's designed for your use case scenario it's designed for yeah new groups um it'll play itself though if everybody has like good hooks about their history and what they want you just need to like roll up some characters and and just follow your players around uh i hope that was helpful yeah keep keep typing and we'll tell you more take me down to the skeleton city All right, is it, what do you guys think is this is this, is this a good use of your time is this exciting should we do more of these? I guess people aren't going to say no, but if you're enjoying yeah. this kind of thing, 
I think we're probably in the future, since I'm done drawing, it'll probably be a little oh well, I'm done with the NPCs, I guess. It'll probably be a little bit more uh hey, we've prepared an hour thing to talk about what's going on, you know, rather than live drawing. Although there is a lot of drawing left to do, so we'll see. Yeah, buried in Bahamas. People are saying buried in Bahamas in the chat. That I mean, I literally wrote that to be like, here, you've never run this kind of game before. Here's what you should be worrying about. Here is the options you should be presenting your players. Start them off. Here's start them off with this opening scene, you know, and then see where they go. And don't don't uh, steamroll them. Let them make their own decisions. Yeah. Okay, well, take me down to Skeleton City where the white bones are white and the girls are what's what's a skinny undead? <laughs> oh my god yeah with the, the bones are white and the lich is skinny oh won't you please take me crop to the bones where the oh where the ribs are nice and the skulls are pretty that was good i should have kept reading uh we yeah in person yeah Oh yeah, don't I here look. Okay, so I mean I I have a lot to say about DMing. I have a new YouTube video up called 10 tips running a pirate campaign, but they're really just 10 10 GM tips. Like you just need to I guess my my uh what was it? My gameplay loop suggestion. And that's like a kind of like a video game design thing like what's the loop? The loop is you tell the players what's going on and the setting and what's happening around them and you can use the book for that or your imagination just give them enough to have an idea of what's happening in front of them and kind of keep talking until there is a decision that they need to make and when they don't know what to make keep talking until they know more enough to make a decision and when they make a decision go with it and adapt and you you are going to have to improvise but that's the fun part um kind of just adapt and figure out what would be fun for them and put new challenges in front of them and see how they deal with them that's like yeah. that's it man i think people get really freaked out about dming i i i think that dming fifth edition is a lot harder than D dming pirate borg if you players know that they're on an emergent gameplay experience where they're you and them are discovering it together and they embrace that process you're going to have a lot more fun at your table uh, and you're going to have a lot more fun as a GM. I, it, we hear all the time that GMs will be like, this is the most fun I've had running a game in years because it's a totally different style of play and people yeah, are like way more so relaxed. Much laughs. A lot yeah. of laughter, but the, it, you can still get serious. You know, you can still tell real stories if, if your players are into pirates. If they're not into pirates, they'll just drink grog and go carousing and kill skeletons and then you play another game. There you go. That's that's my shtick on that. Okay, what else we got? Yeah, mm. random tables. Definitely. I mean, you can just. Uh, I've done that so many times. Just run up random table game. Yeah. Granted, I've been I, running D and D for a while, so it's a little. Ran a whole adventure for Luke and my cousins, where I was just like, okay, and let's our wives, roll on, yeah, and their wives, yeah. And I was like, we just rolled on a, on I just rolled on random charts, and it was like, okay, I got an island, I got a person who's on it, and you know, you guys are on a ship, let's go, you know, and. It was super fun. Yeah, it was. Okay, I like the idea here that maybe he's got two buckles, but that this one has been broken. Um, okay, I'm looking at these. A lot of these conquistador plates don't have anything on them. That's stupid, though. Yeah. What do you think? What would Ponce de Leon have on his conquistador plate? I mean, you could just do uh, like this, like a compass rose or navigation. He's an explorer, right? Yeah, I mean, influenced by the rum. What did I? What, I should just make it a mondo guy. Should I just make it a gecko? <laughs> <laughs> I think I should probably start inking. It's too. It's almost two. It's like I feel like I could. This, this is so large. I could just keep sketching. Maybe he still has some some breast some uh, shoulder plate over here. These shoulder plates get pretty big on these conquistador dudes. Uh, 
Okay, well, maybe we need some inter an interactive topic, Tyler. Like, uh, all right, Apocalypse B says, for my first game, I had an encounter with a player. Uh, players got a treasure map. Then they then otherwise unprompted took over a ship to go find the treasure, and the adventure has continued onwards. Yeah, that makes perfect sense. Yeah, that's ex that's exactly what I would do. I mean, you got to do do the trope. I mean, that's one of the things I said in that video. Go big now, you know. Yeah. Do yeah, the I'll things that they want to do and and like do the things that you'd like for example my players in my campaign are like they have a, they all want to go to the uh, the Yucatan and they have hooks to go to the Yucatan like guess where we're going we're going to the Yucatan you know it's guess like, we're going next yeah Don't don't save it man just go go for the big huge thing because there's so many big huge things in the in this setting Yeah I mean think if you if you took if you go to the Yucatan and stop one major place on the way and then you give them a hook to the fountain of youth and stop one major place on the way and then you give them a hook to atlantis and stop one major place on the way and then you give them a hook to el dorado and stop one major place on the way and you do some carousing in havana and tortuga and nassau and port royal i mean dude the, the, that's like 12 sessions right there you know yeah yeah just to do like one thing just, yeah i mean you've got it's like you can well, quest forever yeah, just just go for it. Just go big, man. Okay, okay. I think I'm gonna start inking. I think I think I know enough where things go. Right. Yeah, that sounds sweet. I like the branches over here on the right. The gaps. I think I think my other thing here is that what we do is this: we go back to this, and we're, I, I'm gonna redraw this. Of course, I'll go to my my skull fungus brush. What a model after a artist I really like great map map maker and this is going to be buy-in roots Ooh, nice you know kind of just border the whole, whole page in so like they really kind of come down like tree roots frame the whole page in so we'll come back to that okay cool we're gonna start inking <clears throat> yeah if you're trying to get your group to play pirate borg i mean it's like i i know that group the one that that doesn't want to play a game that's not dnd i'm assuming that's what your problem is that they want to play dnd but it's so e it's so easy for dnd players it's just less rules there's like almost no new rules you have to dodge instead of monsters rolling to attack and the armor is a damage soak but you're rolling a d20 you add your modifier they're going to be terrified that they have like two hit points okay here we go so this is where i really need blackbeard because i want to make sure that i don't get too detailed i just try to kind of keep them always in my eye shot so that i don't go too far you know um yeah <clears throat> okay so i always like to start with the face because the face is like you know what the windows of the window to the soul i guess <laughs> that's the eyes see that's the thing does he have he's probably he probably has like really really lich eyes right yeah like Usually, most of the characters in this book just have black for their eyes, but like the other lich, the the uh, I wonder what what do you think? What RPG setting has the most liches? And do you think I could make it pirate dark Caribbean? <laughs> like, set the record, you know? I mean, it's got to be one of the OSR, like, where the only thing you did was dungeon delve into lich country. You think so? You don't think someone has like made a a D and D supplement that was like all liches? Yeah, that's exactly what I'm saying. Yeah, well, a D and D is definitely not OSR. Oh, all right. Well, <laughs> sorry to like. Well, actually, you, but well, actually, the thing through here is like some of these, especially like some of the more feminine characters, I've done really like smooth lines. This guy needs to feel like unsettled and rotting. Smooth lines. That's my singing. I'm sticking to it. It's true. 
this is the fun part this is like now we're here we'll we'll try to trick the stream but i think i'm just drawing from nothing you know <laughs> like wow this guy he wow he's so out, good he can just draw out of thin air it's like i already like him more now that he's got actual yeah. ink on him yeah instantly so put, some, put some bolts here Like a little decorative rim. Here's some probably some decoration. All right. <clears throat> uh, how do you keep from making a hero complex hero based campaign? Ooh, I, I Harley, can you clarify really what you mean? Because like in my mind, I think you're just talking about how deadly it is. Just kill them more. If they're getting heroic, send the Kraken at them and don't pull your punches. Have it deal with, you know. Uh, okay, dodge or take, you know. Oh, you're out of Devil's Luck. Oh, guess what? The, the Kraken shows up. Dodge or take 2d12 damage, you know. Yeah. Like, it, you just kill them off a few times. Um, the other thing is that I mean, a lot of this stuff is going to be helped in when this book comes out because i have a lot of like new systems and guidelines but we're gonna have like a going on the account uh subsystem so your players can kind of send their guys out to um go sack ships without having to actually play through you know 20 naval combats and then they'll end up when they end up you know rolling the wrong encounter they're fighting pirate hunters or something um that'll be very piratey like when the quickest way to get money is to go sack ships like that's what that's what it was really like you know so we're trying to find a ways to like make that a a thing that you can do in the set yeah make it know? fast make it fun but but not make it too gamey but at the same time also make like kind of you the mean choices the, they you matter. mean the subsystem yeah the subsystem yeah, yeah 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 and then as far as your campaign i think you just gotta give them piratey options um I mean, like are your players doing that now is that's my that would be my question like what are they doing now that it's making it not like that not piratey or are you just anticipating yeah. that you know your players and they're going to want to be heroic because it's hard to be heroic when you have two hit points you know yeah but also like i was really worried about that there's a whole our first ship of the dead podcast episode is called from 5e to osr so and it's, it's a, the second but yeah yeah or second yeah and it's about it's me talking about this issue that i'm like i like leveling up my character and stuff and then i didn't i ended up having a bunch of hit points i never died um although i like you know i came close and then tried to and stuff uh but i had so much fun like i didn't have to worry about like oh a, a count, combat didn't take three hours it took 10 minutes and we got to do like fun things yeah, I think the thing is that the story moves a lot quicker because when you're playing a game where everybody has really crunchy characters, yeah. like really crunchy things happen during combat. But when everyone has like, I have a belaying pin and no abilities, like the kinds of things that occur in gameplay are a lot different. Yeah, I played Pathfinder for six hours yesterday and we had no combats because it was all like crunchy talking about our abilities that we could do. We we're like we don't have time to get into a combat it'll take four hours <laughs> Did, so like how, how do you feel about pathfinder now tyler well on one hand i genuinely really oh my god uh sorry my stream just turned back on i genuinely really enjoy the the crunch of like leveling up my character you know my character sheet's like six pages long um and that's fun thinking about that ahead of time but when i get to the table i'm like everything takes forever everything takes a really long time and that part part of that's our our table style and our gm style you know of course and I, i've been playing with those guys for six years so you know i love them um but when i play pirate borg both as a player and as a as a gm just everything just moves quicker like the decision making process and the difficulties it's just like you don't worry about the small things um, yeah, you don't the, you, you know. never have to stop to look up rules unless you're maybe doing yeah. like naval combat or you have to like look up a table to roll something you know yeah yeah um so on that phrase like 
I will never GM the same way again. I even like before Pyroborg was created, I was running a build your own castle and defend it campaign, um, which was really fun. And those players have come to me afterwards and be like, I'm sad we didn't finish it. That was really fun. But if I went back to it, I would run it so different than how I ran it before. Like before we had like, you're getting this much tax and it costs this much to build a new section and all that jazz. And now I'd just be like, you get a requisition point. What do you want to upgrade the castle? Great. You do it. A week later, you've done it. It's now a week later. What do you want to do? Like, it would be so much more based on what the characters do on an, on an emotional level, story level, than a nitty gritty levels. That's like the big difference, I would say, for me. Yeah, I think that's the weird, the ironic thing about the OSR in general is that I think people are like, oh, it's so deadly. Oh, I can't tell my character's story. And I have actually found you often tell more stories. Sometimes it's for more characters than like your one you know, three year character. Yeah. But a lot more, like I have a lot more memories now in role playing games, though. There are, they are less like, like for when I was running uh, tales of the Caribbean five E like I have very vivid memories of like battle map, long combats where they had to like fight very specific, but monsters. And because Pyroborg is often more theater of the mind, I, I have a different kind of memory, but I have way more memories of like the, the story as a whole, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Look, did you eat lunch and your quick break? Yeah. Yeah, I did. I got, I okay. got a date. Yeah. I need you to go. Need I need to put substance in my body. Rum. Okay. So, you know, here's a good chance. Do I, I need to go look at this guy without changing my zoom level and go see? Yeah, it's okay. We're not, it's not too, too detailed. Um, okay, so let me, let me see if I can read some questions and then keep talking for a while. They were pretty eager and just haven't run a game before, so I had to get... Yeah, dude, I, really? I think... I mean, so many YouTube channels say this. Just book it. Tell them, you be there on this day, and all you need to do, really, is just plan that first encounter and be prepared to improvise. I know that sounds really scary, but, you know, it, just pick a couple monsters and go with it. Uh, my group, one of the PCs is a buccaneer with plate armor and conquistador helmet that's afraid of open water. They should be very afraid of open water. I've definitely killed a few PCs by that. I usually make them let them make it like an agility test to try to get it off, but the agility, the DR is really high. Um, all about board games, they're so streamlined even more so than, yes, I agree. They're much more streamlined. And it's the same, the thing I like about it compared to Savage Worlds, it's, <clears throat> it's the, um, it's easier for D&D players because they they can think in the same terms. They just don't have to worry about things they're used to worrying about, like uh, attacks of opportunity. Whereas Savage Worlds is like, okay, here's like a whole kind of different dice system, and you're not the target numbers aren't the same. You know, it kind of just comes. It's just different, you know. Okay, this guy's gonna get some. What do you guys want me to talk about? Give me like a. The topic you're talking about like how to draw or how to make your own pirate board hack or how to uh run your campaign would you say we're i'm coming to the end of bahamas i'm assuming you mean buried in bahamas um <clears throat> if you if you're a patron i would say go to either tortuga or nassau because both of those have already been released on the patreon and there's so many hooks there i would send them to one of those two and then i would introduce them to three or four brethren NPCs and give them two or three hooks that involve other locations and other major NPCs. Oh, I need you to go to Maracaibo and, you know, <clears throat> excuse me, meet up with this uh, wretched cultist who's infiltrated the Inquisition or, you know, that's what, if you're, that's what I would do if I were on the Patreon. If you're not on the Patreon, um, I would probably try to find another adventure. If you're not into doing your own thing, I'm, which I'm assuming. I would try to find another adventure to run. Skeleton Point is great. There's you could spend multiple sessions there. And if you're really enjoying being in the Bahamas, you could spread the Temple of the Nameless One into three different islands and not have them all be uh not have it be three layers, you know, have it like when they crack open that the big uh door that it's leads it's a map to another island or something. Who's my favorite pirate? Oh man, I mean, I I asked, was asked this on a podcast not too long ago, and my answer was Blackbeard. Um, just because he's kind of like the guy who his mythology had has inspired the whole genre. 
Um, yeah, I, re- I, I just really like his mythology, setting his beard on fire. He actually wasn't that good of a pirate in terms of numbers, um, but I've always really enjoyed his lore. And yeah, um, who else? Mm, yeah. What are some of the <clears throat> your favorite game? Sorry, I get some water. <clears throat> My favorite gaming experience has been playing or GMing. I'll tell my story. If you've, you've heard a lot of my podcasts, you probably know this story, but my first role-playing game experience, Tyler and I were in Florida, um, Newport, Ritchie, Tampa area for spring break, I think. I think this must have been like 95, maybe, 97, somewhere in there. And we were we were kind of, we were at the end of our Magic the Gathering days, um, but my cousin, who is probably 10 years older than me, five, 10 years older than me, um, he was in college at the time and he invited me to come to his college campus on a Saturday because he was running Alien RPG. Not, not, not Alien RPG, an Alien RPG. Uh, it was the old leading edge games, terrible system. But he was a great GM and he had hacked it for his own purposes and he invited me. So, like, I'm like this. 12 13 year old kid in a college classroom he had like rented a college classroom with a whiteboard to run this alien scenario that he had written himself um and it i mean I, you know was life changing more or less um i didn't really get into rpgs seriously until much much later but that experience of him you know we got to we went into this like alien lab that was being run by the whaling Utani Corporation and we had you know had to like fight through this hive and then there was this there's these things in the, from this book called Alien Tribes they're called moxes mox suits they're like big mech suits that um drugged up you know marines or science um uh science experiment type people have been thrown into and they send them into hot alien hives to like you know shoot up the hive and kill the queen and stuff and there's one down come down the hallway and i you know it's just me i'm playing the sergeant character you know like um like the sarge from aliens and, you know like i know i'm gonna die but like i run down the hallway with this grenade and i explode and my you know cousin gives this like amazing explanation like yeah and you as you explode the mox takes a step backwards and we're like oh my god yeah and it was just like i'll never forget that it's like my my formative rpg memory um that being said i think my favorite session of pyroborg that i've ever played run or played in i haven't played that many times uh, at gary con two weeks ago three weeks ago now um I was there. I ran a game for Todd Stashwick and, and his friends. Todd's the, he's an actor who's in the 12 Monkeys TV show, and he's uh, a captain in the new uh, Picard show, um, who seems to be like a pretty big fan favorite. He's really fun to run for, but I also ran a game for the Legends of Avantress crew, um, who just, they just did that Crooked Moon Kickstarter. Uh, it's a 5e Kickstarter. It's the highest funded 5e Kickstarter, fi- highest funded D and D Kickstarter of all time, uh, like four and a half million or something. Um, and those guys, first off, they're buddies, good buddies of mine now. Um, we bonded over the years over mo- the love of our love of Monkey Island, um, and they would always come by the booth and talk about LeChuck. I, I had no idea who they were. I didn't realize they were streamers until much later. Uh, and I, I drew a picture of LeChuck in one of their books. You know. Well, so uh, I had them on the podcast, and we were talking about like hanging out at, at GaryCon, so we made it happen, and I ran this game for the the four of them, and Andy's girlfriend, and Haas from Dungeon Scribe, and, and one of Haas's friends, and then Luke from, I think it's DM's Lair, um, and so there were nine players, and we did this... Um, a made up on the spot a one shot that was basically you are ghost pirates on LeChuck's crew and you are on Monkey Island and basically like fighting against Guybrush and his pirates and the natives and it was so much fun I used an actual map for Monkey Island for Monkey Island and I had them 
uh, well, you know, I came up with this whole kind of loose plot, but then like, you know, an hour in, they had passed around the sheet without me knowing, like that just said mutiny, yes or no. And the players all had to vote whether they wanted to mutiny or not. And they did mutiny. And so they mutinied against LeChuck. And I, I threw in this random hook for them to find a, with a treasure map. Like, totally random. Like, oh, there's, yeah, there's this treasure map, and you know. And they found the treasure map, and the, they found the treasure, and then I rolled randomly for the treasure, and one of the guys rolled 66 for the random treasure. And if you look at the table, 66 is a treasure that when you find it, everybody dies. And it says optionally they can be ghosts until they rebury the treasure. Well, these guys are already ghosts, so I had them come back to life. So they're in, now they're alive instead of dead and mutinying against LeChuck. And they ended up going to the natives. If you've played Monkey Island, you know this. They, they they find the natives and they get this recipe for root beer. And they they one of the characters, Mikey, is playing this monkey who was a ghost monkey. Now he's a real monkey. And he puts the root beer in a barrel on his back. And they basically we basically cut from like Monkey Island ghost pirates to like go, monkey ghostbusters. And I did all this really wacky rule stuff where like LeChuck, I gave LeChuck a hundred hit points. And I let him attack every, it was him, then the monkey, and then him, and then anybody else. And the monkey with the brute bear would do D20 damage. So it was really exciting. And because they were undead, I would have them do things that, like, when they did things on accident, or when they opened things, or bad things happened, they, they would experience, like, huge gaps of time. So, like, the monkey, when the monkey died, he came back with 20 lives or something, but he had been gone in his mind for 3000 years. So just like the role playing that went into that, they would, they would come back and, you know, like uh, Andy's character was this like kind of slow, dumb brute and uh, who had been brain damaged in death. So his, his zombie was very dumb and slow. And he's like, rrr, rrr. and I had him go off on a 4,000 year journey when he died at one point, when he came back, I'm like, you are now, you now have a plus five presence. You are like the most intelligent human on the planet. And he, he switched his role playing on a dime and it just really led to some of like the mo best, like best uh, pirate board <laughs> experiences I've ever had. Just, just like the good role. I mean, those guys are like basically professional. I mean, they are professional, uh, D and D players and the stuff they came up with and like just the energy of like nine people at a table at Gary Con like people are walking by you know like Ed Greenwood's like over in the corner and it was just a very 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 memorable session. Um, yeah, a lot of fun. I wish I had it in some way recorded, but I, I don't imagine I'll be forgetting it anytime soon. Okay, so I, I, I got some problems here with this. You can see how like this gap is too big there's like a problem here with this this spine this is what happens when i don't well what i have to talk to but also when i don't focus really well so there's that and then i think this whole thing has to get redrawn a bit man i wish i had more music to play i don't, I don't have good public you know youtube friendly music All right, let's check chat what's going on here. I know the live stream play has been on VTT. What differences and preferences are there between that and running with a traditional tabletop? Oh, man, they're, they're very different beasts. Um, I think in my career, if you'll call it that, in running games, uh, especially when Foundry came out, I was very into I mean, that's obviously a big part of my Patreon. Uh, making foundry content i i spent a lot of time prepping the assets and like make you know getting rule systems to work automatically and um really just trying to streamline as much as i can and have assets and tokens for everything you know like if if i was going to have a monster in my game i would have a token for it um and I've actually found that I have a lot more fun now not doing that work. And, and like, first off, the mental stress on the GM is a lot lower. And um, I can have more fun at the table and I can let the table go wherever I want. I don't have, like, 
it's just that sunken cost theory. I don't have um, expectations built in for the party. Um, and now I would, if when I play online now, I, I, I run that way because I've been used to doing it in person. But uh, my favorite way to run is what I call art directed theater of the mind. And I'm actually going to make a whole YouTube video about this at some point. Um, where you're using visual art assets, especially the ones that really get you going, the ones that have really inspired you, those, you know, concept art pieces or paintings or, or certain battle maps. And you have those ready to go to show players, but you don't necessarily use them uh, as a grid battle map thing where everyone has to have a mini and you learn obeying the grid combat. Instead, you'll show the map to everybody or show the concept art, or if you're playing VTT, you p display it. Um, but you don't have to drop tokens. Or if you do drop tokens, you just not, you don't have to enforce people, you know, being particular about where they are. Um, and I, for me, that it just works really, really well. It lets me get in this headspace we can have like that shared you know they say pictures worth a, th a thousand words and as someone who's a visual learner and an artist like i can't i can't agree more if i show someone a battle map of a temple they'll know we'll know the same thing even if i don't even ever show it to them again we can imagine the same shared space um that being said i i much prefer playing in person i don't have an online game right now i do streams but i prefer to play in person because i like to interact with people people don't get on their phones as much they they don't you know go in other tabs they can feed off people's facial reactions it's just much more kind of visceral experience for me yeah so that's cool um yeah cool what else i feel like I spend a lot of time, like I've been going to the gym a lot, and I listen to Mike Shea's, Sly Flourish's show. He just does a talk show, and I'm always like, oh, I could talk about this topic forever. But now that we're doing it, <laughs> I can't think of any of the, the things I always want to talk you gotta about. You got to write that list down, man. I, I know. Well, I'm at the gym when it happens. Oh, fair. I also did not expect you to come back out of nowhere. I was like, oh. Boom. Someone's Where... replying to my. What is your absolute favorite moment in Monkey Island? Oh, man. So the thing is, like, I played Monkey Island early enough in my life that it's a very important game in who I am outside of Limithron. Uh, I just remember sitting upstairs in my room. when the Remember when the computer was up there? And we had... Monkey Island had this thing where you... It had a... Back in the day, you had to, like, activate your game using some kind of code that would... With usually, the little code turner. That yeah, usually it would be bases. like turn to turn to page fifty four in the manual. It was like a way so that you you couldn't just install it on your computer and not you had had the physical thing. And Monkey Island's thing was like find this code, and it came with a little dial, and it had the dial had all the NPC, all the characters in Monkey Island's faces, their portraits, but the dial would change which top head, the top head versus the bottom. So you'd have to like go to Guybrush's head with LeChuck's face or the monkey's head with elaine's face and then it would tell you a different code based on the face combination <laughs> so i really like that i think the when i think back to monkey island and i'm like man that game i really enjoyed monkey island 2 it was uh the art was like it was like the same pixelated art but it was more rich and it just felt like you know like when you're in the library i don't know I want, that's my first answer, but I also really think all the stuff on the ghost ship in the first one, it, everything on Monkey Island, once you get to Monkey Island in the first one, proper, yeah, so much fun. I mean, in order to get there, you have you have to get a crew together on Mayland Island, and, which is like the, you know, Nassau kind of uh, Tortuga vibes. You have to get a crew together, but then you get, and you buy this really crappy ship, and then when you get on the ship, you have to find this spell, uh, which is just a recipe and then when you make the recipe it makes everybody pass out and you wake up at monkey island and i like that i don't know it's just like tropical and it's like happy but there's like undead pirates dude it's like everything i want in Pi dark caribbean that's that's monkey island you know what was the hardest part about making pirate borg oh my god that's a really good question hardest part about making you're pirate welcome borg. was that your question no yes yes it is <laughs> What was the hardest part about making Pirate Borg? Man, I don't even know. I mean, it was a lot of work. Um, 
You just had to keep going, I guess. Oh, you know what? I haven't even saved since we started this stream. <laughs> Wouldn't that suck? Dark Caribbean, Ponce de Leon. Man, the hardest part about making Pirate Borg. I guess. Well, I mean, one really hard part was knowing when to stop, knowing when it was done. Mm -hmm. That yeah. was pr that was actually pretty hard. There's a lot of art in that book, and there's just a lot of times <clears throat> where you have to be like, "All right, I got to draw this thing. I don't want to draw, or I gotta, I gotta write, I gotta write this table. I want there to be a D100 table here, and I gotta write it." You know. I get yeah, doing the things that you just don't want to do. I actually, I, I actually have a really hard time finishing adventures. Like I have, I have th two adventures right now that I need to finish. And the, like once you get the fun part done, yeah, it, that there's it's like really, a slog part. Yeah, the slog, like the part where you're like, okay, well I know what's here, but telling the writing it and telling the GM what's here is always hard. Yeah, like, I hate that part. You have to, and you have to format it. You know, you have to make sure that the bolds are all right, and then like, you know edits and it's just it's a lot of work man it's a lot of work yep that was that was definitely one of the harder parts is finishing the adventures you know like because you know what you want it to look like and you, i can't short change myself like i sometimes no. i'll read other people's adventures and i'll be like i could never write one this way i could I, this would never have been a, a stopping oh like a great example is isle of x i have it right here excuse me this is actually cool because that brush I was using was by Skull Fungus. Here, I'm going to switch to the camera. <laughs> so this is a book by Skull Fungus, Isle of Ix. Yeah. I love his art. Um, you, you might recognize his maps, especially if you're in the OSR. Let me I'll show you some. This is like a, a island uh, that's covered with dinosaurs and some weird shit. So this kind of stuff. Uh, it's a great book. It's a great, it's a, it's a short book for this whole island thing. Where, where are all his dungeon maps? Are they all at the very back? Yeah, here you go. This this is very skull fungus. He's like one of my favorites. Nice. But the writing in this book is very much like um like the, he'll describe a whole a whole hex or like a whole random encounter or a whole hex with just a few sentences. And a lot of people write that way. And like that's not enough for me to run it at the table. I had to, yeah, like, you need I a ran, little bit more to. More I, yeah, I ran yeah. Isle of Ix at the Ship of the Dead once with Pirate Borg, mm -hmm. and I I just found I had to do a lot a lot of work, you know. Yeah. Um, and so for me, like as much as I really appreciate that, and I really like I write that style of writing, it did, it doesn't work for me, so I don't write that way. So that means that all my stuff have to be like fairly well spelled out. Um, yeah. And you have to think about like, well, what does this room need to work? Like, do I need to tell them this? Do I need, there's a, there's a puzzle. Do I need to explain how to solve the puzzle or do I just need to give the GM enough information so that they can wait for the right answer? Do I need to say they need to wait for the right answer? Mm -hmm. Are my, are my readers advanced enough that they know to move on or do I need to spell it out? And that kind of depends on who the reader is, you know? So that's, that's always yeah. hard too. So I guess that kind of goes into knowing when to stop. All right, next question. Why are you making The Dark Caribbean? Why this style of book? Oh, that's another good one. Who asked that? Me. Oh. <laughs> uh, why am I making I'm interviewing you now and giving you stuff no, to talk about. I like this, yeah. Uh, the, this is the book I've always wanted to make. I mean, not always because I haven't always wanted to make an RPG, RPG book. But I remember, I think the if I had to put it to one memory, it would be either when I was in Barnes & Noble or after buying Neverland 5e from Andrew Kolb. Yeah, while I was running my Dark Caribbean campaign, or my uh, Tales from the Caribbean 5e campaign, th thinking to myself, I, like, I wish this book existed, but instead of Peter Pan, it was Grimdark Pirates. Mm. Um and I remember, I remember saying, having that moment with myself and saying that, and uh, and I think it's at the point now where even if somebody made that book, it wouldn't be the flavor that I wanted. 
You know, like I want that to exist, but I don't want it to be a BF five ebook with like, you know, three hundred pages of text and like high, high paid Magic the Gathering artists. You know, like I want it to be like kind of gritty and have a very strong identical yeah. visual visual style, and I want the writing to be terse, and I want it to be tables over text and diagrams over tables. You know, all these kind of tenets that are part of the OSR and the new SR. See, yeah. like, like, how did I do on the hand? See, it's a little too big. Um, so like, I mean, like I said, this a bunch, man. You just got to be the change. <laughs> you just be gotta the change you want to see in the world. Make the things, the things that don't exist, make them. So that's what I'm doing. Yeah. And also, like in hindsight, like I don't. There's not a lot of people, in my opinion, uh, on the planet that could make the Dark Caribbean like you. The way I want it with like yeah. attention to history, but the right influences, you know, like if somebody else made it, they might go a little bit more whimsical with the pirates, you know, it wouldn't make it the way you would want it to be. made. Yeah, they, I would get it and be like, oh, this is cool. This is cool. But like, you know, when you make your own RPG book, you're calling all the shots. So it's like, yeah, there's going to be Mayans. There's going to be Mazoans. There's going to be a lot of undead. Um, the default, the preferred way to run it will not be 5e because then you can't turn undead. Your cleric won't ruin the whole setting. Now, yeah. we are working on a bunch of 5e options where that will remove those kind of game-breaking things. Mm -hmm. um, so that'll be cool. I guess we could probably talk about that, huh? He, he actually it looks like it looks like it's on its way to being a thing. It is on it. Yeah. All right, where are we at? What do you got, Tyler? What else? What's next? All right. Um, what are you most excited about once the Dark Caribbean is out, other than that people are playing with it, you know, and using it? What are you most excited about <laughs> if, when it's out? Oh, man. I guess, I mean, today, I, almost, I kind of feel like I'm excited for a break. Yeah. Because I like I basically went straight from Pirate of Oregon to Dark Caribbean, and now we have another book before it. I feel like by yeah. the time I get, by, by the time that thing ships, I'm going to be like, just exhausted um but i think the real answer is oh, sorry my voice is running out i can't believe that we're still at 30 people we must be must be entertaining i guess um yeah i think the real answer for me is that the plan for the company assuming that the dark caribbean does decently well that is kind of a precursor to this mm. um the the plan for that is to kind of grow from a single creator company to start bringing on other people uh, even if that's just freelance but i really want to start working with like some of the people i really look up to and get them at the very least writing pirate borg adventures and kind yeah. of and, and go from being um you know stockholm cartel inspired to being more goodman games inspired where you know like joe doesn't write everything and he certainly doesn't do the illustrations like i think it'd be cool to find a way to grow us so that people can look for ongoing uh um dark caribbean and pirate board content yeah just a steady stream of stuff coming out from but high quality i mean like i'm not high quality yeah I, well i'm not willing to let that part slip but there are people who are better at me at all the things that i do so why not you know get them involved that's uh, that's something i'm excited for yeah yeah sure <clears throat> um what is pirate ship oh is this from you yes <laughs> okay all yeah, of these so... questions are for me and i'll read the name if it's from someone else okay cool um you don't have to talk about it if you're not ready to no no no. i'm ready to talk about pirate ship uh, there are days where i feel like we're not going to do it like some days i'm like you know what we should just stick to pirate borg yeah so this is a tbd everybody but i think we're gonna do it i think i really if i'm smart i'll hire somebody else to help me yeah. pirate ship with a y instead of an i p y r a you know um mm -hmm. because a that's the old spelling of pi pirate and b that makes it google friendly um pirate ship is a fifth edition book that is a full conversion classes and naval combat uh of pirate borg for 5e did i how did i explain that well i think so so basically like if you're familiar with the one ring versus lord of the rings uh role-playing game 
That's what pirate ship is. It is basically going to be a way to use the fifth edition rules system, especially the like kind of longer, not longer form, the like leveling up uh, hierarchy uh, and challenge rating system for the monsters uh, for the dark, for it's its own role playing game for playing in the dark Caribbean. Yeah. Um, yeah. The thing is, we've already done all the monsters. We ha we we did the mon sure. the, the monster bestiary. We already did naval combat. That's Limithron's guide to naval combat. All we have to do is the classes, and then relay out the book because it's going to be an a uh, letter sized book like a normal D and D book, and not um, not a five like Pyroborg digests. You know, European. Yeah, digests it's a normal D and D book. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah, and that's going to be part of the Dark Caribbean Kickstarter. And that's really exciting because that will, I think it's going to bring a lot of people into our ecosystem. Um, and I've said this a lot, like I don't have a problem with 5e. It's not my preferred system because of the, not the system because of the people who play it. The rules lawyers uh, mm -hmm. have really, really worn me down both in my own games. And Tyler knows we, we did this. Uh, we ran Pirate Borg. I don't know. We ran like, 30 pirate board games at Gen Con a couple years ago and then yeah. one mega 5e game and we were both just like no offense to anybody who runs 5e a lot we just were rolling our eyes at like the kind of things that the 5e players were arguing over you know yeah, like we couldn't get the narrative to, to work because they would say oh that wouldn't happen because this this and this now obviously not every group was like that but the rule system does inform play and if you have rules for things people who care about rules are going to enforce them you know uh, totally but that being said i like the rule system i think it's i've had a lot of fun playing fifth edition and i really what's really important to me is this setting um and i really want people to be able to enjoy the dark caribbean and, and not you know um i guess gatekeep them out for lack of a better word because because they don't want to try out pirate Borg, you know yeah. Um, yeah and i think it will also in a lot of ways it'll be it'll really help feel uh, fuel long-term play um because it's you know that system is just designed to level you up i think we're going to level cap at level 10 um uh, because most co most campaigns don't make it to even seven um and like you don't need level 20 spells in the dark caribbean that just won't no. it won't make sense question from michael i'd yeah, be curious up, to michael? hear about your approach to adventures in sandboxes from concepts to mapping to npcs and everything else mm, like where do you, you start when you're building a an adventure like where does where do you start oh man this is a good idea or a good question i mean for me adventures always start with an idea like an overall concept or theme mm -hmm. um and then and then it just comes to like getting that filled in like let's take let's take uh um here i'll show it to you take a break here down among the dead so this is an adventure uh, called venom in the veins let me let me get let me make it, make it look pretty for everybody get out of this indesign vibe uh, this was released in, an, in a previous form on my, my patreon here's the cover venom in the veins um oh is this new i mean it was in that patreon release i've literally never seen it <laughs> <laughs> um so this started as a map i drew the battle map version of this this is the not i redrew it for the the book but there's a full you know 140 dpi per inch um battle map of this and i drew that first and i actually this is actually a funny story i'm actually glad you asked about this this map, uh, I actually was inspired by my all-time favorite video game, which is Marathon, which is a Bungie Marathon. Game. Da, yeah. da, da. Yeah. It's, Bung it's the game that Bungie made before they made Halo, um, and that game, I like that game, is more a part of my identity probably than anything Pirates. Uh, but just just the 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 first those first three games. Uh, as much as I played a lot of Halo, it was not part of my identity. But growing up, Tyler and I used to play like network marathon and 
kill each other. System and, link, baby. Sis, yeah, what was it? I mean, it was just network over like Apple Talk or whatever the. Yeah, yeah, just our dad's LAN. Yeah. yeah. Um, and the there's a that battle map is actually inspired by Arrival, the first map in Marathon. The actually Arrival and bigger guns nearby. There are like ele- rooms in that that I like got inspired by actually playing through the original Marathon. Um, but I wanted to make a very like kind of old school style drawn hand drawn Snake Temple, Indiana Jones Snake Temple. Um, and then after I did, I was like, you know what? This needs an adventure. Like dungeon maps aren't like normal battle maps. We're like, oh, here's a throne room. Like if I draw a really detailed battle map and you don't know what the weird thing is, it's not that helpful. Like I, I remember Che and Peku had some early maps that had some really unique things on them. And when they didn't tell you what they were, you'd be like, what is like, what? Oh, how do I use that? Yeah. 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 So I'm, so I wrote an adventure for it and then it's like pretty straightforward. You just key out every room and then I, uh, old school. What does that mean? Big, what does that mean? Key out every room. That means I like, okay, when you get to here, I'll show you. Uh, I know what it is. I just, I think it means like you, okay. Entrance, ancient, eerie, cool, dripping water, greenstone snake statue, 50 feet tall, two end game ponds, which are, bad guys you know what happens if they scrape gold off the top teeth what requires this blah 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 this is keying the room you know uh and then i then you go back through and and you think about well you can do that first or you can think about like what's going on here what like i really like my dungeons to make sense so this one has like a ghost of a snake necromancer and it's got these end game society operatives which are that faction of of end game of uh french dudes they're trying to harvest this venom fang from the walls to using their assassin jobs but then there's also snakes and there's these little snake venom eating monkey things called kodamundi so you just put a bunch of factions in there made them make them want different things write some encounters yeah you just fill it out so a dungeon crawl is like a very specific kind of adventure writing uh yeah but then i got another one that's part of that kickstarter called uh into the locker lost in the locker excuse me um, which does not have art yet. Uh, I'm still play testing it with my group. Basically, it's like a post TPK or post tsunami, post maelstrom, whirlpool adventure where you end up in purgatory. Uh, and it's you're dead. It's, you're dead. Yeah, it's very much inspired by the cove in Darkest Dungeon, and there's a Monkey Island uh, mission, and I think I think Tales from Monkey Island. That's very like you're you're dead. Um, but yeah, you have to like kind of figure out how to get out. There's a bunch of factions there that want different things, and there's weird, crazy, dead creatures that you may not see in reality. Yeah, uh, so that that is much different. There's not a map. There is a but there's ten random ten locations, and they appear randomly with random connections, and your players have to map them. And if they don't, uh, they don't say anymore. I won't say anymore. <laughs> it's not out yet. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. It's definitely not out yet, but yeah, cool stuff cool. happens. Yeah, stuff happens. Yeah. Victor says, speaking of serpents, any possible hint of new monsters like a sea serpent? There, Tyler and I were talking about this today. I'm debating doing 54 new monsters so that we can do another pl- deck of playing cards. Uh, there are going to be a lot of new monsters. The problem, I'll be honest, is I kind of did too many for Pirate Borg. Um. I did like everything I thought that it really needed and then more. Uh, And I'm obviously like you could make monsters forever. I'm not saying that I've made every monster ever, but I I don't really know the angle yet. So I do know that one of the the angles is going to be what? Like the theme and and ideas. Yeah. Yeah. One of the, I know for sure. One thing I'm definitely going to do is that there is going to be uh, a lot of like kind of NBC NPC adversaries. Like I'm going to have a page that's just officers, British, like are just military. And it's going to have like maybe 10 or 20 stat yeah. blocks. Um, because one of the well, things I decided to do in writing the NPCs is I realized really quickly, like a lot of those guys, like, do you need to take up room for Steed Bonet's stat block? Like he's probably not that tough and he probably doesn't really usually carry weapons. Like he's an NPC, he doesn't really need combat stats. Yeah, it's not like in D and D where like, oh, Steve 
Bonnet is a 12th level druid caster who specializes in these abilities and the difference of spell choices that he makes makes a big difference in the mechanical outcome. Like it's yeah, just, you need to know even, who he is and what is he doing. And that's yeah. kind of it. And even in pirate Borg, I mean, even for the advanced ones, it's like, well, like what are their attacks? You know, I mean like the bigger ones are going to be an issue, but so my thought is instead, instead of like writing a stat block for Blackbeard, I'm just going to write a really good, like high level ne necromancer stat block. And then you can use that when you need a high level necromancer and it'll say use it for Blackbeard, you know, and this will further push to like you do your own thing, you know. Now, I think some of those are probably going to be like pretty unique, like Ponce de Leon's probably going to have a unique stat block. Maybe I can put it on his page, but um, so that's going to be a big part of the best Jerry for sure. And then I think it'd be kind of nice to do like I'm really inspired by Skirple's, um the monster overhaul, which has like. It has stat blocks, like OSR stat blocks for all the classic monsters, but then it has like how to use them. What do they want? Like 10 cult things that the cultists are trying to accomplish or like, you know, the the wizard's means of completing his spell, that kind of stuff. So I think it'd be kind of cool as if, if I do a monster, a bestiary, or it, when I do the bestiary to make it very like... uh Maybe there are less of them, but they're full detailed with like, you know how to run them based off their spread, you know? Nice. Uh, yeah, but I don't, that part is actually the part I know the least about this book. I think other thing is that unlike some GMs, like I don't really care about monsters like a lot of GMs. Some GMs are like very into monsters and like, they're just not the thing that motivates me. Like I have the monsters manual, but like I hardly read it. I'm way more into the DMG, you know, I'm way more into like settings and like lore and exploration than I am like, what's the cre what is that? How does that crazy monster try to kill you? I think, yeah. um, now that that's not to say that the book won't have those things, but like that, that's not what the setting is about. I didn't start with those things, you know? Yeah. I always find that when you really break it down, it's just what's the mechanical difference of dealing with this creature versus another creature. That's the only thing I, I usually really care about. That's like, how is he going to interact with you differently? Oh, he has an ensnare attack. Okay, that to and he wants to use it. That totally changes the way this fight is going to be versus... Yeah, but I guess for me, especially since I'm so deep in the OSR now, it's like I don't really care as much about what how it attacks mechanically. I care no, more I, about I, like what does it look like, you know? What does it what yeah. does it want, you know? Yeah, I know you don't. Yeah, yeah, but I, yeah, some people really care about that stuff. So okay, this is gonna wrap around like a vine. Um, yeah, I'm so sick of this music. Turn it off. I, don't I was just like thinking so that like two minutes ago. Yeah, it's definitely like a little. But not just like repetitive yeah turn off the music and then everybody else put on your own pirate music if you like but let's try this lo-fi we are three hours in so oh yeah lo-fi all right i gotta step away again from the computer but the question for you to talk about is talk about your favorite ability player ability in any <sighs> tabletop game See, this is another like I'm just not that kind of I'm not that kind of RPG -er. like I don't care I I don't care about player abilities. <laughs> uh, That's why I, mean, I asked. I mean, like I'm always like playing as a wizard. I love casting fucking sweet spells. Tell you you can go. I'll talk about this. I love casting spells. I love being a wizard, but like I don't really care about the actual spells as long as they do damage. You know, like I would describe them looking cool, but like the mechanic ability. I, I, you know, Tyler knows this, like, I've never gotten into video game role-playing games, despite loving the genre and loving role-playing games. Like, the min-maxing of my team of dudes just doesn't really appeal to me. Um, so, I don't know. Yeah, I don't have a good answer for that. I think maybe if I had to think, like, what's my favorite Pirate Borg character ability, I really like uh, the Lucky Devil. Uh, from the Buccaneer or from the Rapscallion just because it can totally like save the day. You just luck, 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 luck. And then when the luck goes bad, the devil comes and takes your soul. I just think that's such a fun, fun ability. Um, I really like in Darkest Dungeon, 
or sorry, not Darkest Dungeon, Dungeon Crawl Classics. You can spell burn your wizards down and burn their um, physical ass ability scores to get bonuses to your spell casting rolls. And in that game, you roll to cast everything. And the higher you roll on your ability check, the more dramatic the results of the spell are. Um, so yeah, uh, I like that as well. Uh, when is the new book expected? Okay, uh, yeah, we were saying this earlier. So this Kickstarter has been pushed back till next year because I don't want to rush it. It's funny because as soon as we pushed it back, I got, I got the feeling that I was like, oh, you know, it's actually going pretty well. I'm actually further along than I thought I was going to be. But I don't. I have a lot of other work going on this summer, and my we're going to Europe for two weeks with my for my wife's fortieth. Uh, so I'm going to be basically not not working full time like I am right now all for half the summer, and then we have Gen Con, so we're doing a different book. Uh, that's part of the content from this book, but in a bunch of other cool like add-ons that require manufacturing, like ship punch-out tokens and battle map book and dice and devil devil's luck coins and stuff like that. Um, so yeah, that being said, this book is being released in chunks as I get them done on my Patreon. So you do not have to wait for it to come out, though. I would say if you're going to try to run, you know, if you're playing a lot of different settings and you want to run one really good Dark Caribbean game, you're probably probably better off waiting or running it now and then coming back later because it's definitely, you know, even I even as I'm running, it, I was like, okay, well, that was Nassau was really cool, but now they want to go to Havana and all I have for Havana is a map. Like crap, now what do I do? So that's that part is a little bit tricky. Uh, I've kind of messed this up and then I've drawn a some armor here so maybe i'll put i'll put armor here and then have it be kind of broken like this broke off maybe uh yeah so i i don't have a real answer the fact that we're doing a kickstarter in september and then that that will that my plan is for all the creative for that kickstarter to be done um before the kickstarter starts so as soon as the kickstarter ends everybody gets pdfs and we just press submit on the print order based on after we know how many copies of things we need so it should fulfill pretty quickly unlike some of the other kickstarters you see nowadays where they're like oh cool well now that we finished the kickstarter we're actually going to write the book this will not be like that because i'm that project is the dark caribbean so i don't know if i if i'm optimistic i think uh the kickstarter will probably be in a year from now in the spring but like I said, if I'm not ready, I'm not going to I'm not going to push it. Like this is like my Dolmenwood or my I don't know. It's like I I want this book to when it comes out, I want people to be like they've never that they've never seen anything like it, you know. Both in the the breadth of not in the, like the the length. It's not going to be so long like some of these like Kingmaker, you know, it's not going to be like that. But it is going to be like fully illustrated maps for every island, that kind of stuff, you know. Um, what's one thing you wish you could have done differently about Pyroborg Dark Caribbean? Well, I don't know if you knew about the reprint. That wasn't very fun. Uh, we had a cultural, I would have hired a cultural sensitivity, cultural sensitivity reader, uh, earlier on for sure. That's definitely the one thing I would have changed. Um, oh man, I don't know. That's hard for me to say that I would do much different. It's been, uh, reported as one of the top 10 selling games last year so like what could i what, what what could i have done different i don't i don't know i'm pretty proud of it and i'm pretty amazed how well it's done i, I thought i was just going to make a fun like pirate board you know zine game and then move on to the dark caribbean um that's not what's happened i'm back what up dude we're still at 28 people that's so cool Someday maybe it'll be like, you know, three thousand people. Did you just answer some questions in the chat? Yeah, I did. Yeah. Cool. You know, one thing I wanted to have been thinking about, and I know we've talked about this a lot, but like more publicly, I'll say like, I feel very like even though I don't have like you know eight thousand YouTube followers, and you know, um, what am I trying to get at? 
Like I feel very thankful for the size of the community that there are people who actually really care about this. You know. Yes. Yeah. Even if there aren't like as many as some other projects, I feel like the people who care about Pirateborg are a different type than the people who care about Morkborg. Um, I would agree. Like I've noticed the people when I go in the Morkborg server, the people who are to talk the most, like most of them aren't even in the Pirateborg servers. Uh, so yeah. I think from the outside, people are often like they think it's very much the same game, but I think it's very much not. I think they're yeah. I mean, yeah, like obviously, okay. the mechanics are very similar, but uh, Steve Gibbs asked, "Do you draw maps the same way you do characters?" And he also had a question earlier that says, "What do you use to draw maps? Are they all hand done, or do you use software?" Uh, I draw everything in Photoshop or my iPad. I don't really draw maps. I'm, I've drawn a, I've drawn a few maps, like the skeleton point maps I did on my iPad, <clears throat> because I would be like, "Oh, I'm traveling. I want to work on those. You know, do this like really hand drawn style." I hand draw them all in Photoshop. Uh, I should actually do some maps on Draw Them Live. It's a lot different than this, uh, because rather than this like kind of triangular pressure sensitive brush, I'll do I'll do a sketch and then I do everything with this brush. So it'll be like, here's a hallway, you know, and then here's a thing, and uh, you know, it's, just, it's a very di and then you color it in. Uh, it's yeah, it's a pretty different process. Uh, our good old buddy Scott says I gotta go to work. So uh, Scott, who the it's not Scott in Colorado, but Scott who comments on all of our Instagram stuff, and we love. Um, I oh yeah, Scott Beast. Scott. Uh, yeah, this is his name's Apocalypse Beast in here. Scott, you the man. He says I love Morkborg, but I love Pirateborg even more, and and so do my players. I mean, I love Morkborg too. I just feel like they are they seem like they attract a different audience. You know. Yeah. Um. So so Steve said Steve's second part of his question was, do you draw maps? The difference between the way you draw maps and characters. I guess you sort of answered that. Yeah, they're. I mean, they're 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 a different art style, uh, for sure. This is like very inky blacks. I mean, like I'm kind of doing the outline now. I'm gonna come back through and like fill in a lot of this with just inky black. It's like look at Blackbeard, you know, like this kind of stuff. Yeah, you don't really do that for. Uh, I don't do for that. Maps. And I mean, you don't. You first off, it doesn't really work. And second off, you don't really want that. You kind of want to see the shadows. Like the point of a battle map is often tactical, not vibe. You know. Yeah. So there's that this lo-fi thing I'm not I like sick it. of it yet oh yeah man i wonder how long i'm gonna this stream's gonna go for i have i am taking a lot longer on this than i normally do well you're also talking am, and yeah. thinking and looking at stuff you know, and also like, look at all these look at all these trees i gotta draw is anybody else being like, wow, this is like so much different than when he started or like people probably, probably most people aren't watching, I guess. I've never watched you draw a character before, so I wouldn't know. It's, yeah. How's it going? Even though I'm your brother. Well, I've never shared this before. I mean, I always put the like sketch up that I do, but yeah. Probably need to eat more food. I'm not going to. Oh, there it is. Yeah, I'm, I'm like remembering. Oh, yeah, there's other things you need to get done today, too, Tyler. So let's go. Yeah. Although I, I, it's been way better having you here than if. Oh, yeah, myself. sure. It's 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 great. I don't know if I like that or not. Yeah, that's a little better. What horror films have inspired you or that you just like? Uh, the one that I usually mention when it comes to Dark Caribbean, it, well, I mean, if you're not talking real horror, then I would say like Army of Darkness, Evil of Dead, Evil Dead. I really love those movies. <laughs> Especially Army of Darkness, man. It's like, people. I always say, if, if people, I say, do you know Sea of Thieves is like, I uh, say Pirateborg is like Sea of Thieves meets uh, Darkest, Dungeon. Darkest Dungeon. But yeah. if they're not into video games, then I say it's Pirates of the Caribbean meets 
uh, Evil Dead or Army of Darkness. Um, um, that being said, though, the one I always mention as like kind of the vibe that Pyroborg is like uh, tonally is um, Midsummer. Mid, I, I'm over pronouncing it so people know what I'm talking about. Have you seen that? Midsummer? I haven't. You haven't seen that? Mm -mm. Oh my god, you gotta watch Midsummer, dude. Isn't it weird? <laughs> uh, but not. It's like I think it's weird. It is kind of weird, yeah. But I think you might like it. I don't know. I've been warned about that movie, so that's why I was... It's fucked up, but like in a horror movie. It's just like, it's a horror movie that takes place in a bright, colorful setting. It's like never nighttime, you know? In fact, that's the point. Oh, is Midsummer is is during the point when in um, uh, Scandinavia where the sun doesn't really set. So it's like kind of always daytime. Mm. And I, so I always just, I, I use that to describe the Dark Caribbean. It's like this place is, at least at the beginning of the campaign, pretty beautiful. Uh, you know, tropical beaches and, you know, uh, rolling waves and all that stuff. Mm. Um, and that, just like that movie, you know. Okay, what else? Oh, I mean, I, I'm wearing an alien hat. Like, that's my, you know, yeah. all the time. Definitely. I'm so into Alien that I w I knew I was going to be into it, but my parents wouldn't let me see it when I was younger. And but my dad let me read the book, the novelization of Aliens. So I had actually read the novelization of Aliens before seeing the movie. Uh, yeah, I, that, but no, looking back now, Aliens isn't a horror movie, but Alien is maybe one of the best horror movies. It's still scary, except for the jazz hands, like we talked about at, at, at Andrew. Uh, the jazz hands aliens not very scary what's the jazz hands alien that's you know when he goes like <sighs> but he like they leave the shot too long oh too but, long yeah they should if yeah. they had cut that scene you know a split second earlier when the hands are still moving it would have been fine yeah yeah you're right hmm. i'm kind of getting fry to talking but we haven't lost enough people for me to be like it's, it's we should stop and i gotta keep drawing so i guess i'm just gonna keep yeah. drawing just keep drawing talk a little less yeah i mean you know new aliens movie is coming out it okay does so cool here's a trick i'm gonna use the magic wand tool to grab this white space and i'm gonna expand it by one pixel then i'm gonna click Control h to hide so i don't see it and now I can draw and it won't go here. See that? So I can draw this branch and not worry about hitting his hitting you know, the other parts of it. Yeah, yeah which you know, separated. like on paper, I would have to worry about that. Uh now I gotta do it again here because I need more area. I like how cause it was the first question. You're like paper versus digital the whole time. <laughs> yeah, well, I can't help it, yeah. Yeah, this guy's gonna be cool. I'm, he uh, he looks different than I expected already, but mm -hmm. but not so much that I'm like disappointed. You know, I, I yeah. think it's gonna I think it's gonna turn out well. I need to get. I'm realizing I need to get this uh, chair uh, explained, so to speak, before it's too late. It's like kind of already too late in some ways maybe i can make this go around it what are you working on are oh, you already said just getting your shit together yeah i i can't really stream and do the stuff i need to do at the same time so but well, I'm, I'm doing some stuff as your as your employer and brother it's okay today yeah we're doing good stuff yeah, I think, like I said, uh, this one's kind of a special one because I'm. This is a really big personal benchmark for me. Hell finish, yeah, dude! To Fifty-four NPCs. I liked Fifty your countdown when you started counting down. I don't know how many yeah. other people like really followed that closely, but I was like sick. Only a few more to go. Yeah, I mean, it's been it's been 
it's been actually pretty fun. Some of them were really hard. Like I said, man, I don't think, I think it's kind of impossible to be uh, an artist that hasn't been working for too long and not have a lot of creative self doubt. So there was a lot of that in this, a lot of like, should I be doing a more unique style? Should I be doing a more detailed one? Should I be doing them less detailed? Like, am I revealing a, a step that is going to steer people away from this project? Yeah. It's just, you know, but my sure. buddy Diogo, uh, Diogo Old Skulls is like internet handle. He's really big into that book, Show Your Work. Yeah. And uh, I've just kind of, kind of been trying to embrace embrace the the, the people who who care want to see behind the behind the for fold, me you know? it, i mean it's like if you're really into it you want anything you can get your hands on and if you're into it but you don't like the bts stuff like you just don't you just don't watch it you just ignore that part yeah yeah so harley says do what makes you happy yeah well i yeah but you it's more complicated than that because like the sharing isn't what makes me happy but lots of people playing the game makes me very happy so i really want yeah. to do the thing to you know it's like you have to pick just like in life you know you have to like you know i like to sit around and play video games but i also like to have money you know i like to like hang out with people i'm not gonna just do one yeah so yeah so that it just makes it just gets a little complicated uh if i just did what i wanted like in the moment like that doesn't mean that's what i want in long term you know yeah sure so yeah okay i think i think this this chair is here enough i like that it's kind of like a different angle you know yeah that's cool <clears throat> what's going on what's gonna go on with his legs uh they're gonna be all roots oh, okay. these are all all root, yeah i think Unless you, what do you think something else should uh i mean i think i think some the uh, the suggested idea of legs oh, yeah. is 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 cool so that yeah, somebody like, i feel like two big le like this will be a big leg that turns into a vine yeah you yeah know? something that suggests to a gm if they wanted him to stand up and walk away they could play it that way yeah should I should he, should he have like a boot that's like busted open? That's cool. I don't know if I can make that read right. I'll try. Did you already go away? You did, right? me yeah yeah i already left i came back i just have to take care of the dog and do some house stuff every once in a while it's also like i could i could blow him up but i mean i, I like his size is good now because he will fit on a card yeah but i could also do this you know yeah not draw so meant so many well, but I don't, you know, I don't want to take the quicker, easier path. No. Also, it's cool having space at the bottom to put his, who he is and stat block or whatever. Yeah, I really think, I, I mean, I don't know how I'm going to deal with the layout, but I really think that he should maybe be just on one page. That could be cool. Yeah. I'm excited to see what, when you get into the layout fullness of it i mean i guess you have the book pretty well like you're like you're already doing page numbers and stuff oh yeah i mean i have i have all the pages uh in indesign if you add a page do, do you have to yeah, go back and like look. mess with like change all the references so like this is uh it says 47 here but if i go to like you can make these master pages if you go to a master page you'll see uh well, this doesn't have any what the heck how did none of these have them here you go it, that it's just like a special tag you know you yeah. just come object 
Oh yeah, so you don't even have to type special in special character. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah and fine. when you do a when you do a reference, you can actually literally say like, like if I'm on. Oh, I'm I'm not in Dark Caribbean. That's why I did the, I'm like that's why it's all weird. Like if I wanted to put a reference to Blackbeard here, I could say insert, and then I could say Blackbeard. Mm. Uh, I think it may be this one, and then I can pick the the kind of um thing, and I can, I'll just do this dark caribbean page and you see it does dc 40 that means dark caribbean 40. yeah nice and if i move blackbeard's text block it'll update that that's cool yeah. so if you later are like i need a whole spread here that's just a picture of a ship and three words and you stick that in between two sections your pages don't oh, yeah. get all yeah it'll update everything yeah, of course that's cool Yeah, in, in the end, it's pretty cool. It's pretty sophisticated. You, it definitely has got a learning curve, though, that's for sure. Yeah, I, I, my brief stint with it was like, whoa. Yeah, you just have to like learn a lot about, you know, like, for example, in a word processor, basically any font, especially like Google, Google Docs, you can take any font and you can make it bold. And Google just does it for you. Yeah. But uh, most fonts don't come with a bold typeface. And if it doesn't come with a bold typeface in InDesign, you can't just say make it bold. It, like it, it's a printing program. It needs the actual typeface. Yeah. So instead you have to make a fake bold, which is a, a black stroke around it. Well, if you want to change the color of the text, then you also have to change the stroke or else you have like blue text with a black stroke. And yeah. then if you're like, oh, if you want to change the font and now you're using a font that has bold, you have to undo the stroke and you have to add, you know, it's like a nightmare, you know, and, and the strokes kind of slow it down and they're not really the right, right way to print them. But like, I'm not going to not use some of my crazy fonts just because they only gave me one typeface, like, you know, yeah. but I needed to be thicker, you know? So that's why I use Alleg Allegara or Allegra. I think it's Allegra. That's why I use that a lot because it has like, look how many typefaces this has. I'll agree. It's got thin, thin italic, thin, thin, regular, medium, bold, extra bold, black, you know. <laughs> so you can get like really The, the mind of a designer, you guys. You're seeing it right here. This is what it takes to, to write a book, to be yeah. into fonts. Oh yeah, you gotta be into fonts. I mean, I've always been into fonts. So it's, this is, yeah. that's why Markborg was so like, you know, Johan's like a hundred typefaces. And I was like, which ones? Like, you can just say, yeah. tell me, 100. give me the list. Yeah, you can't just say a hundred. You gotta tell me, you know. I've got allergies, so forgive me. I keep touching my face. I'm very aware of that when I teach. I teach uh, on set safety as, at Cal State Long Beach in California and to the to everybody else. Uh, and I, I often, the room we're in, I often have allergies from. And I'm always rubbing my nose and I'm like, I wonder how many of the students in this class think I do Coke I mean, when they're not in the room. <laughs> I think you have to remember that like you have a class full of high school students. They're probably not thinking about you personally at all. Yeah, probably. Or, or, yeah, or probably students. Yeah. Well, they're still freshmen, though. So like they're yeah, just they're, barely. Dude, they're, they're thinking about like, man, I want to bang that girl that I got drunk with last night. Or, <laughs> or like, when how long or, until I can sleep again? Like, I just yeah, want to be long, asleep yeah, right yeah. now. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, or like, man, I'm going to smoke so much weed as soon as I get out of this class. Yeah. Or... yeah. I this one student. I really like him. But wait, wait. But... I want to be clear. Bang that girl was their vernacular, not mine. I'm just paraphrasing. Oh, okay. Yeah, sure. Because you know college students so well. Yeah. Well, I'm just saying, I'm not saying that. You know? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I this one student who always is coming in and he's always like adamantly talking about a sports team and how they've done something super wrong. And I, it always makes me laugh. He's very opinionated about it. Yeah. I like him. All right, I need a new um, lo-fi jam here. Okay, how about, do you want, here are your options. Acoustic cinematic, dance pop, daydreaming, feeding the ducks, into space, night driving, or rock? I think I want to go with night driving. Okay, night driving, here we go. Chat, why don't you tell us which one we should play after this? No, Let us know. I don't care. They're like turn it off <laughs> yeah scott had to take off and uh and, and oh we're Steve. at 25 now we're i think if we yeah. get to 20 it's time to end uh you better stay y'all <laughs> just well just because it's like i mean i 
I think it's so long already that the the replay people probably won't listen to the whole thing. Sure. Although you know maybe people just put it on. I mean, the thing about streams is people usually watch streams while they do something else, right? Like I had yeah. several people in here said that they've in, they enjoyed the stream while they were working, they were doing stuff and yeah, listening sure. to us. So what we really need to do, Luke, is is change our 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 modes here. So <clears throat> wait, like what's Hello. the mode now? Hello. Oh, hi. Oh, we're going. Okay, hold on. Oh, this is. Hold on. Let's turn the music up a little bit. <clears throat> Welcome. Welcome to the Dark Caribbean stream. I'm your host, Limithron. With me occasionally is mm. my quartermaster, Tyler. Tyler, uh, how are you? Today? I'm, I'm Peachy Keen there. Welcome to Smooth Sailing with luke and tyler smooth sailing in the dark ribbon today we'll be opening a fine vintage of uh, 1624 port we'll be sailing off to um, i think maybe what do you think guadeloupe maybe um, oh yes uh, guadeloupe seems quite good hard to port you heard the captain hard to drink port, a port yes, hard to port, port. And, yes, yes. hard to port our our, yes, well, here I am our fine exquisite uh mixology podcast hard for pirate Themed hard, people. hard to, hard port, to a, port. A podcast about drinking port. For yes. all you sailors out there working hard from home, we say happy sailing. This one goes out to uh, Ed Thatch. Yeah. Thatch, thanks a for all your, thanks for all your work. Oh, we should do, let's do it in World One. A S M R. Do you think if we just stream like this all the time that we would get YouTube famous? Uh, famous quote unquote you would get like a we following. should probably be on twitch if we're gonna just be always right. on you just, know just happening yeah yeah if this one goes out so in let's go in world for a bit right this like, message like in a, a bottle goes out to and thatch it's an in world uh radio station yeah oh yeah. we've just got a message from steed he says thatch buddy missing you <laughs> keep it real out there when you're fighting those british yeah well, yes. This one just came in from Ann Bonnie. She says, "To my sweet love, I would walk the plank for anyone." Well, but she must be talking for about you. Calico Jack Rackham, the finest looking dog in the Seven Seas. Am I right? Oh man, I saw him at the at the Governor's Gala last month. His frills were incredible. Frills. That that man is all frills and all chills and wow. This update has been brought to you by NPR. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, welcome aboard, matey, to NPR. Welcome to, war to MT NPR. Thank the you, finest, Paul. The finest in pirate radio. We're going to come right back after a message from our sponsor. Do you need a ship built today? Come on down to it's, Barney's Beanery. No, we will take those barnacles Stan. off. Your it's Stan from Monkey Island, you know. <laughs> yeah. Come on down to Stan's ship. You sound like you really need a deal. I've got just the deal for you. Check out this fine three-masted three frigate. It's seen a little bit of combat, but man, is it in your price range. Wacky whaling inflatable arm <laughs> zombie man. Wacky, wacky whaling inflatable whaling, arm wacky zombie man. Whaling, wacky whaling arm flailing tube man. Arm flailing zombie man. Ghost man. Ghost Ooh, man. Ooh, these prices will scare your pants off. <laughs> you won't believe our prices. We really cut to the point. Wow. Wow. 23, it's working. <laughs> <laughs> people you know, are like, people if, are like, this is the shit I have to listen to. <laughs> I'm like, out of here. These guys have lost I'm going to go walk the plank. When does our flag that mean death supplement for fire work? Uh, I mean, well, considering they canceled the show, I cannot imagine. What? Jacob. They did? Yeah, they're not doing another season. Oh, I didn't hear that. We actually have a friend who worked on that show, and we did discuss trying work. to get him to get Taika a copy of Pirate Borg. By the time we had physical copies, the show, the first season was over. So our friend, like, he's like, I can't get him a copy now. It would be weird if I just showed up at his house and was like, here. Yeah. But if it that was during said, the show, though, he would have just put one in his dressing room. <laughs> there are a few. There are more than a handful of celebrity owners of Pirate Borg now. It's true. Uh, you want to tell us who who got it at the last at, Ga at Gary Khan, I gave Vince Vaughn a copy. Oh, I wow. gave Joe Manganiello a copy. Big boss. And Joe big, responded big well. Boss. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Vince was Joe. in the kind of in the middle of a conversation when my buddy 
more or less interrupted the conversation to introduce me. He did not know Vince, but it was still that's uh, just his way. Yeah, it was Haas. It was it was awesome. He's a barrel um, of fun. Man, this is this is turning into quite the art project. Oh yeah, look at you, Ponce de Leon. Mm -hmm. I wonder if anybody listened to that song that I posted. Your song. Who knows? Let's see how the store is doing today. <laughs> We've negative people have returned their books. <laughs> I listened to your stream and you guys are terrible. We're not so much into this. We have one order today. We have a it was a good week though. Good. More players. More pirate pork. <laughs> More players. Come on, come on down boards. to the Dark Caribbean. 25. Uh-oh. We're gaining viewers, dude. NPR. We got to make our content worse. We're gaining viewers. This is... Uh-oh. All right. <clears throat> I got an okay. idea. No, no, no. Don't actually make it worse. <laughs> People are going to listen to this. This is on the internet now. It lives in infamy. Okay, but what happens if you take the P out of Pirate? He becomes irate. I can't believe I've never heard that one before. I've never heard it either. Yeah. Wow. Always be yourself. Unless you, you can be a pirate, then always be a pirate. You know what? You learn something new every day, you know? Today yep. I learned a new pirate joke. Man, I got a lot. I, I might not finish this today. The thing, though... I, one thing about it being long stream, Tyler, is that we will get our our uh, YouTube uh, listen rate up, or you there know, you the listen hours. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. The next benchmark we have to reach for the to in order to get quote monetization, which like not that we really care about that, just no. that, that we can call ourselves real YouTubers, is based on how many hours people have listened to our channel. Yeah. Oh, be quiet. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. All right. What else can we talk about? Uh, um, there's probably a bunch, but I can't think of it right now. All right. All right. I got some questions for you. Did you, What's did it? you, go did you Google questions? <laughs> I asked chatbot GPT. <laughs> Wow. Yeah. Oh, mm -hmm. you know what we should do is we should talk about we got 24 people. I feel like what we should do we should probably set an end time. Yeah. What, and then around the end time do our like announcements. There you go. Okay, it's it's 3:10 your time, right? So Yeah. How about at 3:30 Mountain time, which is in 21 minutes, we yeah, okay. do announcements and then and close the stream. That sounds like that sounds like a good idea. I mean, yeah. but the thing is, I'm not going to finish. It'd be kind of cool if it was all in well, one thing, right? I mean, yeah. The thing is, after I get the line art done, it's going to go a lot quicker. Can you record the the rest of it um, via that thing that Procreate or whatever, where it draws real fast for you? After you I don't have it? one for I don't have one that does that for Photoshop. They definitely exist because people do that all the time. Yeah. But then I would, that would still be a separate video. It'd be kind of cool to like log into this one and watch this whole thing go. Though I don't know how much people I don't know how much people actually care about the drawing. Like I think some artists might, but I think most of the pirate board community doesn't actually care about the watching every step of the drawing. Although let us know wrong. in the chat. If you're actually here and you're not just a bot that's following our channel. People are probably like, I'm working, dude. I'm not going to stop. Dude, this I'm busy. I'm not going to answer your questions. I'm not going to do your job for you. All right, Luke, at least, what's, what's your favorite piece of pirate history? At least we're self-aware, you know? Mm -hmm. At least we're self-aware. We're introspective pirates. Um, My favorite piece of pirate history, I think uh, Henry Morgan's story in general is fascinating. Yeah. I just I don't really want to tell it again because I've told it a couple times. No, it's and... all good. All right. What about pirate mythology and folklore that you've discovered? Like, what's gonna, your favorite part of that? Probably I'm the like ghost say, ships and stuff. Right? Yeah, ghost ships. I'm, and I'm going to say like all of Stranger Tides. 
Yeah. Yeah. That, as far as I'm concerned, there's not actual a ton of real. I mean, you know, there's Davy Jones's Locker and Mermaids and uh, St. Elmo's Fire and stuff like that. But I think the uh, my hmm. favorite pirate stories are from On Stranger Tides. Cassidy asks, I missed it. What's the brush you are using? The, it's actually the Darkest Dungeon brush from Chris Perez's package. It's just a it's just a triangle. And yeah, why is it. it a triangle? Is that so, so that just, it when you, you can, go up? That way, it's you, that way you can do like you can do this like this kind of thing. You see it all the time in his stuff. I don't do it as much oh, as yeah. he does, but I just wanted to get that darkest dungeon vibe, and then I got used to this brush. I have another one that I used a lot at the beginning of this project that's square like this, and it kind of follows my angle. You can see that in, I used it on Blackbeard. Uh, he's gone. He's on a beer run. RWWM beer beer rum. Here he is. But it leaves these like kind of jagged lines a bit more. But it's also who doesn't like this thing is like it's gonna print it like that size. Black people yeah. will be like that. Like yeah. So I don't know. But yeah, I'm shamelessly using. The darkest dungeon brush. That's the other thing is I feel like if I ever do if I on my next big project, I should just do totally my own art style. Or not. I just love I just love this style. I mean, yeah. you know, this doesn't this one's not looking too darkest dungeon yet, but no. It's it looks sweet. a little it looks a little more kind of like Swordfish Island stuff. Not that not that good, but um Michael asks, uh, who'd be in your ideal pirate board game session? Oh man. Uh, I'm going to captain put... Jack Sparrow. <laughs> Wait, what is going on here? Chris Parasa. No, I don't. Yeah. I don't. I don't know if Chris would be a good role player or not. He does talk See about D&D. I think. Oh, that's a good question. Like, do you pick good D and D people, or do you pick good? I mean, I, I'm going to say Matt Mercer just because I want to know him. I feel like, yeah, I feel like him and I would have a lot, a lot to talk about. Maybe, although I think probably most people think that he just, I don't know, Matt Mercer. Um, not okay. not out of some sense of like. Get critical role to talk about Pyroborg. I don't care about that at all. I want. Yeah. I just want to. I just want him to like. I mean, you know, respect him as a GM. That's. I, I, yeah, as a, a GM and a, and as a public person, I feel like he does a pretty good job of like being a cool dude. He um, just released a, a like very personal video about like, oh, yeah. dealing with with all that De it's, depression. It's very, and, yeah, it's very common seems, right now. He seems pretty upset about the the Gaza stuff. Yeah. I'll be honest, I have intentionally not engaged with the media, so I really don't know what's going on, which yeah. is probably not very good of me as a person, but I am protective but, of my mental health. So, Yeah, back to who's at your table, though. Back to lighter topics. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, yeah. No, that was a smart move before we start saying things that nobody wants to talk about. All right, Matt's there. What about um, Oh, Matt, Matthew oh, Lillard? Uh, I've met Matt. Yeah. Did, did we give him Pyroborg? Yeah, yeah, I did. We gave him, we gave him Pyroborg at yeah, Game Con. Um, I, that's my I mean, on. like, I think that he, the nice thing about Matt is that he really is into the hobby. He seems yeah. to be pretty 5e focused. I mean, obviously we're talking about, uh, Matt. Oh, dude, no. Brendan Lee Mulligan. I just want to sit at the table with the greats. Brendan Lee Mulligan, yeah. Matt Mercer. Uh, yeah, I don't know, man. I'd want to play with uh, Deborah Ann Wall. Oh yeah, Deborah Ann Wall. I mean, yeah, then put Joe Maganello there too. That'd be a good. That'd be a good group. Yeah, but also I feel like you could do. There could be a better pirate group, right? Like, would it be cool to have oh, what's definitely. his name who does Mister Crab's voice from uh, Treasure <laughs> Troopers? What's his name? Are you talking about Ironside? Um. People always say I sound like him in the Pirate Borg trailer. Uh, SpongeBob. Who are you talking about? Mr. Krabs' voice. 
Clancy. Oh, Clancy Brown. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You cannot fire your weapon. Your enemy cannot fire your weapon if you disable his hand. Man, I don't know. I had That's to build great. my dream. I, I guess it depends on like what is the point. Are we just having fun? Or oh, yeah, are you going for like best a, players? Is, like is it best, a live stream? Celebrities? Is it people or who I think I would a... just have fun with? Yeah, but also you could go with like all pirate actors, like actors who have all played major. Yeah, pirates. But that's the thing. Is like, like do I do I say like I Ian McShane players. and like Johnny Depp, but then those guys aren't any good at D and D? Yeah, yeah, sure. Or, or role playing games, like you don't want that, right? Well, clearly the question is, if you got to pick anyone in the world to be at your table, who would it be? Um, I know the answer, one hundred percent. Number one is Tyler Stratton. I was, just gonna say, I was gonna say, do I go for the like funny, obvious, cheesy Tyler answer? Because <laughs> you're on the stream with me. Ding. <laughs> yeah, of course. Yeah, Tyler, my bro my brother, Tyler. That's, <laughs> that's the only person I ever want to play with ever. It's my brother. Oh God, please no. Uh, yeah, I don't know. All right, good question. Kingdom of the Planet of the Apes in theaters May 10th. We just oh, we're down to twenty. We're losing them. Up, oh, we're losing them. <laughs> we're not talking about pirate board anymore. Honestly, yeah, That's we, a good we, we we were doing pretty good until I think we decided that we should start losing. <laughs> we people. had nothing left to talk about. <laughs> people are like, okay, this is they're no longer being serious. We are being serious, but also like I've been talking a long time, man, and I'm still yeah. trying to draw this freaking lich thing. Man, you know what this music reminds me of? Stranger Things. Sure. Kind of synth wave uh, Dude, man. Stranger Things is shooting for like 14 months straight. That's crazy. Oh god, this thing is going. It's going. It's it's happening. Oh wait, yeah. Okay, so we're gonna in 10 minutes, we're gonna make a bunch of announcements now that we've got half as many people as we did. Yeah. Nah. It's only 10, nine less. No, we had like, yeah, maybe you're, maybe you're right. And then should we stop or should I just keep drawing calmly? Like, what do you think is, okay. So you'll get off and I'll just keep drawing? I'll just, yeah, I'll pop off and you can check the chat every 10 minutes or something. Just draw it. And then if people want to bounce out, they can. I mean, <laughs> And t they can't leave until I tell them they can leave, just to be clear. But you don't think that that will be, like, what about algorithm-wise? Is that good for the algorithm or not? I know they don't want to hear about this. I don't so. know. Who cares? <laughs> That's a good point. Yeah, just do whatever we want, right? Brandon says, I'm still here lurking while I am working. Lurking Several while I work. Working. We're up to 22 now. Look, we're getting new people. people okay, we're getting okay. off work Look, on the East welcome. Coast. That's true. Welcome back to the stream. I'm your host, Limithron. We're drawing the undead tree lich known as Ponce de Leon. He has all In case you... Of... Oh, yeah, sorry, keep going. You don't know. Go ahead. In case you uh, aren't already a member, uh, we have a Patreon over at Limithron, or patreon.com slash Limithron, where you can get hundreds, if not thousands, of battle maps and uh, about 80 foundry modules. I wonder if we should do like a like a drive, you know, like a pledge like a drive, but it's drive. join the Patreon drive. Like we don't, we're, we're going to stream until we reach thousand people, you know, sleep yeah. on stream. You just never stop. We're at, yeah, we're at 936. That would be, that would take a lot. People would be like, stop. Just people start quitting. Just, just to would make you... it keep yeah, what you do do is you do an invite contest. You said do do. <laughs> oh, we just lost two more people. That's, oh, we get yeah. a good one. You were saying about do do? Uh, you just do it. You do a invite pledge, right? That's like you you say you you'll give away a free book to anybody who joins to the top one person. I have to. I don't know what I'm saying. A contest. Person who invites the most people gets a free book. Mm, interesting. No, we're not going to do that. No, I know we're not. That's why I like stop talking. All right. 
Guys, in nine minutes, we're going to announce some new stuff from uh, Limithrod. So, as I touched on briefly. Nine minutes. I'm almost done with the major outlines of the vines. Major outlines. <laughs> major outlines. Okay, let's. Okay, what not? What uh, do you remember of the list? What what music do you want now? The second one. I'm trying to think back. The, um, sorry, the the darkest dungeon guys did streams like this. They weren't only an hour long, really, but they would talk about like what people wanted in the game and like how those features were coming. We're not making a video game, so I don't. Yeah, Brandon, the upcoming Kickstarter will be on um, in eight minutes from now. We'll talk about it. We're talking about that Kickstarter? We're talking about the jam. Jam. You we already talked up? about the Kickstarter. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it'll be... I was like, oh, just wait. No, it, uh, it'll be on Talk Like a Pirate Day, um, September 19th. We'll do something big every year on Talk Like a Pirate Day, so... Yeah, and we're going to have... We're going to do in-store stuff again this year. Oh, yeah. Okay, I'm almost done with my outlines of trees, which is a big step. I need some caffeine. Dude, I would go for some. Do I have old coffee in here? Oh, I do. Oh, it's old. It's good. Oh, it's uh, it's old, but it's so good when it touches the lips. We have the best coffee, man. We, we, we drink Are Danger using, Monkey. Danger Monkey. Yeah. It's so good. It's kind of like Danger other coffees monkey. just like not as good, you know. Danger like monkey. It. Okay, now let's take a look. How's it looking? I think I can almost turn off the sketch. Almost. Oh yeah. Okay. Wait. You said dance pop. Sure. That's what you want? Okay. No, the first one. Oh, I'll just pick. There's got to be something to talk about. We're at 20 people. 19 now. Oh, no. Mine says 20, but... Refresh. It's the dance pop. It's going to bring people in. All right, people, let's go. Welcome. Uh... Welcome to the Dark Caribbean. I'm your host, <clears throat> Captain Limithron. <clears throat> let's get saucy. Do you want to learn some new dance moves? How to draw your cutlass in two flicks of a lamb's tail? Or how to shoot both your pistols at once? Stay tuned for flipping, flopping, walking the planks, dance stop. Learn Teardrop. how to seduce the governor's daughter. Take over Tortuga without firing a shot. Sail the seven seas and drink all the rum. It's pirate pork time. It's pirate. Yeah, Tell us about your point. first con, says Brian My Butler. first invention was Origins back in 2000 and... Wait, wait, does he mean our first con that we ever went to? Our first con is Limithron. I think he means our... ever. Oh, Brandon, you're coming to Gen Con for the first time ever? You're in for a wild ride. Uh, make sure you sign up for events early. The day they drop because they sell out oh, immediately. At Gen Con, yeah, you need to. You, this is a really big deal, actually. You need to make sure that you have read how it works, and you need to be in line for the queue like as early as you can. And then it's yeah. going to dump everybody into like a random queue where you get to like when your number comes up, it'll fulfill your wish list. So in you're going to want to put everything that you want to get into on your wish list beforehand. And then when your turn comes up, you can check out. Yeah. Uh, he wants to know about our first ever con. Uh, I mean, also, the first, yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, I mean, I feel like we both went to Origins a yeah. long time ago, and yeah, I probably definitely. only like popped in. Yeah, Not I went to a bunch. Uh, I went to a bunch of events because I was into 40k then, Warhammer 40k. I mean, I am now, but that's when I was starting to play. So. We, I like played in Warhammer fantasy tournaments and stuff, and then card games came after that, and then then I, then we started driving to Gen Con to go to that. At least I did. Like I think that I I remember going to Origins, maybe to like see you and check it out, 
and then I, but then we went back we re, our first real convention that we went like the whole time was when we were into playing the star wars tradable card game from wizards of the coast tcg the, we played the decipher one but not at cons the tcg we played too young um and we had a lot of fun playing it and i actually in that origins uh tc star wars tcg tournament i actually took second place and qualified for worlds well actually no you didn't have to qualify but i got second place and i won like an xbox and like a and a lightsaber a lightsaber and a lego death star and a bunch of games it was like back when they did good prize support for games yeah that's when we met our our good friend darth ted lives in chicago shout out to him i'm certain he's not watching this but uh it's actually really cool because we became lifelong friends with him at that he was like oh you guys need some cards here take four of everything you need that you're missing we're like what um yeah he had like the, he has the hugest collection yeah but the a new star wars the card game just came out um this last this month star wars unlimited and so Ted and I, like, we're actually going to hang out on uh, Discord tonight and talk about trades and trade from California to Chicago and stuff. And so it's been, yeah. it's been fun. And then I think that year we had so much fun. Yeah, that was Maybe definitely. Maybe it was the next year. Because I feel like I remember going when I was. I then like we I went remember... to Gen Con. That, after that, the, that when we went to Gen year? Con. I think so. Because we had that picture of, like, you, me, and, and Ted and Lisa and we're really young, like standing in Hall C. Yeah, I mean, I think it. Yeah, I think that's probably right. Sleep uh, four dudes in one one hotel room together. Yep. Yep. Good old days. Yeah. That's um, do it. Brandon at the at Gen Con, there are um, seventy pirate Borg events being run. We talked about this earlier in the stream. If anyone was still here, but so we're running lots of stuff. Um, and we expected to sell out, but we intentionally made it a seven people cap instead of eight people cap so that we could add walk ups later. So, you know, hit us up at the booth. Oh my gosh, Kyle Kahal. I've been coming oh, back throughout the day to see buddy. the progress on the sketch. Looks sick. Cousin Kyle, AKA Swabby. What's up, dude? It's the Swabby. What's up, my dude? Speaking of, uh, of Gen Con events, he'll be running our events, he'll be the ticket master. It'd be great. It's almost like he he knew we were talking about Origins. Yeah, Gen Con. We're gonna have fun at Origins without you, Luke. Dude, I'm not happy that I'm not gonna be there. Yeah. Dude, I just picked up the Star Wars Unlimited Starter Pack. That's a really good box, actually. It comes with like a bunch of rares and a bunch of promos that are gonna get in it, and the decks are actually decent. Kyle says, "Sup." Kyle, we're going to make announcements in one minute. Stay tuned. We're announcing some new stuff in 60 seconds from now. So, Luke, finish up your hard lines. and I'm not going to finish up anything. I'm going to keep yeah, drawing until uh, it's done. Batten down the hatches. Reef the top sails. <laughs> make fast the schooner studers. We really, you know what we should do is we should do a, a GM's guide to sailing. Just so you, they, people can know all the basic terms. Yes, actually, I really, I need that. <laughs> I want that. Yeah, it could just be a single page or a spread. I mean, this could be like a comic book cover, maybe. If I keep going. Yeah. Okay. Uh, stretch. Uh, God. Yeah. Uh, okay. All right. It's two thirty. It, okay, what are we talking party. about? You wanted to announce some things. Jam? Okay, let's go to let's go to into space. Let's change this music too. But that's what I meant. Now we're gonna oh. go to rock because we're jamming now. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the news announcements from the Limithron team. <laughs> and now there here's your host, the pirate wizard himself. La 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 Limithron. There you go. <laughs> What's up, YouTube? Welcome to YouTube. Welcome to the Fireboard channel, bro. Let's go. What up? Fire the cannon. Okay. So. We've been uh, streaming for too long, officially. Dude, how long have we been streaming? Four hours. Okay. Wow. Okay, here we go. 
So we are, uh, I don't like this music. And turn it down. I'm gonna go to Into Space. Okay, we are announcing, am I just gonna, I should put a, a graphic up. I don't have a graphic for this yet though. Whatever. I told Here. people earlier that tr real information would be out next week. Yeah, we are gonna do a real graphic. So let's just do, uh, how about web, boom. This way people can see it if they skip forward. Okay, so we are gonna say, uh, sorry, I'm not, I'm, I know this is really not exciting. Hey, we're entertaining Brandon. Kyle's just barely putting up with us. And the other but, I mean, 16 but Kyle people is in this chat are barely all working. putting up with us. <laughs> so here, let's go with I am fell English. It's a good font. I am falling, but can't spell falling, so I am fell. Okay. How many more this times is, is Kyle going to touch his face on the stream? We are announcing the Pirate Borg no, uh, Known Conspirator. Looks making the graphic live, everyone. <laughs> hey, why not, right? Game. Brandon, I want to know what you what are you going to make jam. for this jam? What are you excited to make? Tell us when while we're talking. Boom. Focus. <laughs> okay, here we go. There we go. Oh, I'm, oh wait, I'm not even on the right. I'm not I don't even, right even know what you're doing. Yeah. Oh, okay. That's why Sorry. I was dancing. I'm trying to be somewhat entertaining. Sorry. Sorry about Luke, guys. Oh, I think my, did my Photoshop just crash? Oh my God, please don't let me lose. F, F. Okay, hold on. This is not good. <laughs> what is happening? My computer is freaking out. Oh no. I, I hate my life right now. There we go. Pirate Borg save. known. Let me save this. Okay. Okay. So I thought that was really terrible. Uh, we are announcing the Pirate Borg. This isn't the actual title. The name of the people who are involved are going to be known pirate conspirators, but we are making a Pirate Borg jam. It's going to have a cool name. I don't know what it is, but basically everybody can create content for Pirate Borg and there are $3,000 in cash prizes. Yeah. Should... Three grand. in cash prizes there we go eat that uh. um so that's really exciting um what else do we need to talk about about it what are the categories okay yeah so basically you can make something for pirate borg uh the categories are adventures pc classes monsters or npcs uh gm tools generators and random tables and uh rules supplement supplements are miscellaneous so basically you can make whatever you want and we have a panel of seven judges and the seven judges are going to vote on everything and there is a winner and two runner-ups for each category as well as awards for best writing and content best original art best layout and graphic design and a grand prize worth one thousand dollars boom um, Everybody who wins a prize will be uh, compiled into a print-on-demand hardcover Lulu book with all of the winners. So it'll be like a Pirate Borg supplemental um, thing. And um, everybody who submits, submits something that meets all the requirements we'll get an enamel pin i think we're going to do enamel pins that say known pirate conspirator and then a die cut sticker that's the name of the project whatever we name the book i don't know what we're going to name it yet pirate plunder jam but I, but like i'm imagining that we'll do more of these hopefully and that they'll have different names and everyone will be known pirate they'll all be like known pirate conspirator that's like the sub label or whatever yeah um 
you can totally you could totally make flying ship rules but this is this is for content that's for use in pirate borg and the dark caribbean so not to gatekeep what you're making but this is not a make anything you want it's make it for this setting so make I, it for pirate pork setting yeah yeah, yeah i should say that. Should jam and scallywags it. jam and sea dogs you are welcome to make your own flying fire ship hack yeah treasure planet borg yeah you should totally do that but i mean i don't know how we're gonna guard that kind of, it just probably won't win because it does not yeah. on theme it needs to, that's just that will be clearly stated in the rules jam packed plunder a pirate Borg itch.io itch.io it's, it's not it's jam. it's actually pronounced itch.io which I thought it was itch.io I mean it's that's how you type it is itch.io but itch.io is how I guess the oh people really itch.io itch.io yeah yeah so that's that's that that's really exciting did you talk about the 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 campaign at all the West March's campaign sure did cool mm. Okay, what else? There's a bunch of rules and guidelines, but I mean, there's only 19 people here. Like, these people don't care about this. Known conspirators. <laughs> That's yeah. not the worst, the worst idea, but it's a little punny. We yeah, don't like punny around here. But yeah, $3,000 in cash prizes. Basically, every category mostly gets like... Uh, let me see if I can look up the... Can I share this? Yeah. What are the categories? Can you can you type them? Here, I think I can just show this. I don't. I really. I don't want. I don't really want to like. Here, I'm going to screenshot it because I don't. I don't want to share the URL just in case. I don't know. I for you. security reasons, I guess. Adventure. Here, this is this is uh this is the um this is the categories and all the cash prizes here. Oh man, yeah. And this is the page count minimum and maximum. So if you are submitting an adventure, it shouldn't be longer than 16 pages, but it should be at least two. Random Cash. table and nice. best rules supplement. Money, money. Yeah. I thought about giving all the best ones copies of the book, but I think it's going to be expensive as it is. So, yeah, we're already going to spend a lot of money to yeah, support the community. The, um, like, if we get like uh, two hundred submissions, we're we're going to have to spend so many enamel pins. But that's it's okay. We're willing to do it. We're doing it. Like, support doing the community it. yeah uh okay so yeah like i said let's just maybe shrink this down a bit oh you weren't gonna be able to see it we'll yeah, yeah bring... we put it back here i'm taking a screen grab here i'll just make this smaller and i'll make it black bow, bow, there you go bow. and uh we'll delete this bow. Kyle, I expect to see your sun and moon temple submitted to this jam. You better get it done, son. Pirate Borg, known conspirator, or maybe I, I think it's known pirate conspirator is the name. We're going to call it known pirate conspirator game jam. Yeah. All right. Any questions? Anyone? Anyone think anything? Sweet. Kyle says I love this idea. Uh, Brandon says he'll be contributing for sure. Um. Yeah. The other fifteen people are working. <laughs> Where? Yeah. So I'm excited about this. Oh. Uh, also, in addition to the known pirate conspirator jam i have a new document which is almost done called the pirate borg design primer yes i, I talked about this earlier yeah show us there is um this is a document there one of these exists for for mork borg and for Vascrim. um but basically i lay out the design you know like the parameters for making something in pirate borg here are all the main fonts it's not every single font but it's almost every single font used in pirate borg how i use them um 
guidelines like when to use them in all caps are on that if you want it to look like pirate borg also which ones are free and which ones are paid um and here is a spread on how to write adventures in the pirate borg style which if you read mark borg of pirate borg stuff you'll probably know instinctively but it's nice to read this stuff like my buddy my good buddy here in colorado andy he wrote an adventure and it was filled with like basically perception checks for things and traps that are solved by rolling dice and i'm like dude get rid of all that what if they fail then the then they can't move any further in the adventure yeah and also like let them use their problem solving you know so i actually even have here this is an example of on the left here how not to write a pirate borg adventure and i tried to make it kind of funny and that i tried to make it kind of bad and then this is the same room in pirate borg so as you like you know they say things like don't use read aloud text bullet points you know like, yeah so you'll be able to see this document it also has some visuals style guides and i'm still working on this resources page but we're gonna have like places to get public domain art i'm gonna have a dropbox with all the free fonts and all my paper textures so that people can basically my goal is to let is to give people the tools to make it as look as much like pirate borg as they want now of course you're welcome to view your own visual style like i did with mork borg but i found that if you're running a pirate borg game and you want the pirate borg community to use your stuff it's kind of cool to be able to make it look the same so yeah um, and yeah, people don't so. know that you know it was like it took me a long time to figure this stuff out and i'm your brother yeah some of it is not especially if you don't have a, a career in graphic design like i do it's not as instinctive now i've tried to lay it out like you know use parchment paper but make it light enough that you can still read the text or and overlay it with wet textures and that kind of stuff so um yeah oh in a time frame yeah so it is it, going we're going to try to launch it we're actually trying to announce it really soon the official submission window is going to be all of may but i don't really I, I guess there's not really any reason to not announce it as soon as it's ready right or to turn yeah. it on as soon as it's ready sure yeah or should we have it so that no i think we're going to no. wait till may 1st so yeah then, wait till may 1st because then no one has to be like oh, i should get it in so it's considered or whatever just yeah but you have all of may but it'd be also cool if like people work on it for a few weeks and then jump there's it'd be cool if day one there's a bunch of submissions you know yeah yeah um that's cool so that yeah we're really excited about this like we're not going to make i i'm like the more i think about this like we talked about is there a way to make it where we where i do a bunch of art and then release it on the patreon but we don't want to delay any of our other projects yeah. so like literally this is like 100 percent a community building thing it's probably going to cost us three and a half grand four grand with the prizes and the pins that's just out of our pockets just to yeah, make we just want to go make it yeah to support the people yeah i mean yeah obviously it is a marketing thing we're trying to grow our community but i feel like if we make a book that anybody can buy the the on-demand lulu print will be hardcover and it'll be uh for cost like we're not going to put a profit on top of it or anything and i'm just going to lay it out and draw a cover for this thing um so yeah 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 that's sweet um, let's jam bros oh you think okay he thinks he thinks we should open it up right away so people can join it early yeah okay maybe i can maybe okay. i can launch it and then turn maybe you can turn it on and then have the submission date start may 1st so you can do both you can join it and then submit because nobody's going to submit day one you know yeah or maybe they will my hope is that this could people go nuts and make a bunch of cool things even if they aren't you know the best that make it in that they're still like oh man i need a class for this oh yeah go check it out people yeah. made that oh so. that, hey that exists like we're not gonna make it because there's a great one that's already out there yeah and you know i'm not promising that you know like i saw someone was working on a ponce de leon fountain of youth thing guess what that's going to the dark caribbean no matter what you do so uh yeah but that's okay like i wonder also, actually if, should i exist. not be a judge so that so that maybe no. i can be a tiebreaker i because i thought about that earlier i unless the chat has a strong opinion i think it's totally fine for you to be a judge well no one knows what's like, better for pirate borg than you but maybe i should not be a judge so that i don't read a bunch of people's stuff and then put that like put or not put it into dark caribbean you know you want to do this whole jam and then not read what people make no i do want to read it so yeah you're right I, yeah yeah 
Unless there's like, I guess if there's like 400 entries, but that would be crazy. That'd be like way bigger than any of the Borgborg ones. But then again, they didn't offer any cash prizes. So. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. So I guess cool. Tell your friends. Yeah. Uh, let's go back to this page. Yeah. Sorry I didn't have a cool slide deck ready. We're just making it up as we go over here. This should be red, though. Come on. Let's get, let's get some pirate board colors here going, huh? Cash prize. Wee Cash prize. Cash prize. Woo, 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 woo. Um, yeah, okay. Okay, I don't know. Should I end the stream? Wait. Let's get... Can we get a vote? How can we get... We can't do a poll, can we? No. I mean, Harley's driving home. People are working, doing stuff, but do you guys want Luke to keep drawing and just leave it up or should he close it and you'll see the final product now that he, he finished the line art, basically? I mean, I guess I'm just going to keep drawing. I, I guess I got to kind of maybe take a, maybe I'll take a break to get some food. Put yeah, the, I, I like, I need to take the dog for a walk and shit. Yeah, yeah, no, you can go. I mean, I'm just trying to think. The music is driving me nuts. Hey, turn it off. <laughs> is it bad though if we just go so long that it that people everybody leaves? Is the question. You just outlast them. There's still 18 people here. I mean, minus the two of us that are watching our own stream. 17 people. 15 people here total. I'm not watching. I'm just in YouTube Studio. Oh, oh cool. That makes sense. All right. Well, oh, my dog's running around. He's a puppy. So. Pippin, you want to go outside? All right, very good. Well, ladies and gentlemen, this has been your quartermaster, Tyler, hanging out with his brother and Limithron and captain, the pirate wizard, Limithron. He's going to continue drawing until he feels like doing something else. Uh, I'm just going to uh, keep drawing, man. I got to keep. I got to get this done. Do it. Do it. The, the last day. Enjoy it. If you have any He'd questions say, out there. Nah, dude, yeah. I'd say just end it. Well, since Brand is the only one talking to us, yeah if you like the there one guy talking to the us, one guy who wants to, to be going. here is like nah that's no, enough. you should stop maybe uh you did yeah, like maybe, the line art like oh, also no, here's release release your pictures afterwards that shows your stages you know and this will be cool no here's what i'm gonna do here's what i'm gonna do if you're listening and you really care what's going on i'm gonna end the stream and i'm gonna go get a some food upstairs and then i'm gonna go live in discord Smart. and you guys can join and chat with me if you want yeah, um, because that way it'll be a little bit more interactive, and, and I don't have to be like fucking performing like we are. <laughs> yeah. All right. Uh, all right. Capitano. Hold on. Let me let me switch back to the real music. Do you want Pirate King or Ship of the Dead? Pirate King. Boom. Here we go. All right, everybody. This is where I've got. Oh. Uh, all day drawing today. Ponce de Leon. Thank you for listening. Um, I'm Limithron uh, Luke Stratton. We're going to move over to the Discord now. Thank you so much for everybody who's been paying attention. I'm really, really, really excited about this book and this community, and I'm really excited about the known pirate conspirator jam. Um, yeah, come over to the Discord, say hi, and um, yeah, we'll, we'll see you guys later. Hi, right, Captain. Um, bye. Bye. Oh, here, here, I'll, I'll do a sign off. Our remember, mateys, if you can't raise the black, raise the dead. Ah.